Uh, you see the thing, right? Okay, we're on. We're on? I think we're on. We're on? We're live? Okay. Welcome, everybody. We're, we're, I had some technological issues, which never, ever happens. It's just the first time. And as you can see, I'm Phil Simborg, sitting here next to my good buddy, Bill Riles, and we are going to do the stream together. I'll be streaming throughout the entire uh, UBC here from Istanbul. Bill's going to join me from time to time. And uh, it should be a very, very exciting event. I want to give you a little background on what this is and what we're doing here with the UBC. Boy, if I were Justin, I would be watching Mochi's computer to see what he's going to do. <laughs> What's well, good? Uh, uh, just side. <coughs> you have facing each other. Side. You can see the other guy's screen. Make sure he's not going to XG. Also, well, it, it, it can't happen in that room. You know, it can't happen. One wouldn't. One wouldn't think. Okay, your sound is back on. Sound is back on. All right, try again. I, I've been told try again. Let's start from the beginning again. This is, uh, we're here in Istanbul at the uh, UBC Contender event uh, put on by Galaxy, uh, Mark Olson's group. Uh, and I am joined by Bill Riles and uh, with a lot of assistance from his lovely wife, uh, Tara Mendocino. And um, we are going to be streaming a lot. <laughs> There's going to be a tremendous number of matches, and we will end up with one winner on Friday. So let me tell you what the UBC is about, and then we'll tell you about how this event is going to work. Uh, the uh, You have to be a master or grandmaster or very, very highly ranked technical player in order to even compete, and that's why I'm doing commentary instead of playing. And uh, we, we had a contender last year, and it was won by Sander Lyloff, and he got the right to play the UBC champion by a fellow by the name of Mochi, and Sander won. So Sander is the reigning champion, and the winner of this contender event will get to play Sander again for the championship. Um, okay, so how does this work? UBC events are based on two things, who wins the match and who has a lower PR, who played better. You get one point for each, and that's going to determine who moves forward and how they move forward. So right now we're starting with 24 players, and you get one point if you win the match, and you get one point if you have the lowest PR. And the top, uh, we're going to end up with eight players. We're going to knock out everybody but eight players to get down to eight, and I think that's going to take two or three days, two to, days. Two days to do that. And how they select the top eight, the six of the players are going to be based on total points. Again, one point for a win and one point for beating your opponent in PR. So those six who have the most will be the, into the final eight. And if there is a tie, uh, the, the PR will be the tiebreaker. The other two seats that go into the final eight will be the two players that are not amongst those top six 
that have the two best PRs. So we end up with eight players, and then we seed the, ne the next round uh, by the one with the most points plays the one with the least points. One plays eight, two plays seven, and so on, until we get down to four players. Now, they're playing on computers, sitting next to each other. The first round that we're going to stream is uh, a fellow named Mochi and a fellow named Justin Knoll. Uh, and it's so funny because, you know, we got here a couple of days early and the last couple of days, Mochi was practicing against me and Justin. He played Justin five matches. <laughs> and uh, so they, they played each other. They know each other's game very well and they're good friends. Uh, I think everybody knows about Mochi. He's the number one giant. It has been for many, many years. And uh, Justin, I think many people know him because he does a lot of commentary and streaming. He's a professional backgammon player and teacher. And uh, he lives in New York, but he just recently got married to a lady doctor in um, uh, in London, and he's moved to London. Uh, and I play, I've played uh, quite a bit in shuets and, and matches and so on with Justin. And he's a very, very sharp young man. Uh, uh, and certainly uh, very, he, he deserves to be here. We were looking at his, his matches the other days, and it's not unusual for him to play under three PR at all. Unfortunately, Mochi was playing under two PR most of the time. Uh, so he, he's really taken his game seriously and, 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 and is, is tough about it. So we are going to, uh, uh, while we're doing the stream, we are watching, this is what they're seeing. They're not seeing us, right? Yeah, they're... They're showing the, They're working the room. On it. Okay. They're working on it. Okay. But can they, thing, they can still hear us, though, right? Yeah, they can hear us. Okay. One thing to maybe just clarify a little bit. Sure. That all these preliminary rounds that get to allow us to find the final eight, the preliminary rounds, eight today, eight tomorrow, will be played on the computer. Okay. Once we go to the knockout rounds, uh -huh. it'll be on live for you. All right. So they're playing on Backgammon Galaxy on, a, on the new platform of Backgammon Galaxy. Uh, and we will be streaming the matches, and you'll actually see them playing. And you, as you can see on your screen, Justin and Mochi are sitting next to each other, and they'll both be playing on their computers. And uh, and again, when we get down to four, is it, or eight? Eight. When we eight. get down to eight, they're going to be playing on backgammon boards in the traditional manner with cameras and so on. And we'll continue to stream throughout. Uh, but there's going to be matches like every hour with a four-hour break for uh, lunch at 1 p.m. Uh, Istanbul time. And uh, of course, we're all adjusting to the time change, but almost everybody got here uh, pretty early. Um, okay, questions. And now we are watching. Bill has a has a, a screen open so we can see comments and questions. We welcome them. Uh, we don't promise we'll see everyone and be able to answer everyone. And there is a little bit of a delay. But if you want to make a comment on the stream, uh, or if you had, we're not doing an XG uh, feed, by the way. Uh, at the end of the match, immediately you will see a three ply evaluation uh, that's done on Galaxy that will show you what the PRs are. That will not be the official PR. It's going to be run on a very fast computer uh, that was supplied by, by Bill and Tara. Uh, and we're going to run every match in a much more detailed setting uh, that will give you a much more accurate PR. And it, it'll take uh, about an hour or two to get everything set up. Now, you if you want to follow uh, how we're doing, how the players are doing, how many points they have, what their PRs are and their re records. You got to go to the UBC uh, dot backgammon galaxy uh, site dot com. I'm, I'm sure it is. And and you will see you can get updates and see exactly where we are uh, uh, on points and and settings and so on. There may be another site. I think there is another site where the postings are going to be. Let me bring that up real quick. But I'll, I think we should be able well, to You're looking that for that. Let me say, again, yeah. these preliminary rounds are, what, seven-point matches. Oh, yeah, they're all seven, aren't they? All seven. Yeah. And then once we go to the knockout round, which will be the final eight, the quarterfinals, each pairing will play four matches. And, again, you have to get five points to win. Um, semifinal is four matches. Final is six matches, so there they would have to have seven points to win. Okay, so two players play each other four matches. Correct. But if somebody gets to to five points, then it's over. Yeah, they could they could end in three matches. They could end in three matches. Okay, I gave you the wrong place to find the standings. Uh, HTTP colon slash slash tiny dot cc slash ubc underline standings. Wow, that's a mouthful. Uh, <laughs> But I'll bring. I'll give you that from time to time. We'll find a way to post it. Maybe can you do it in the chat? 
Can you post that in the chat as well? Ah, that's interesting. Can you you're showing it? Can okay. See that? From time to time, we'll we'll let you know, and and we'll we'll also check the standings and let you know from time to time what they are. So there's going to be a lot of back end. By the way, we're also here in Istanbul for Fuat's big big uh, Istiver event, and uh, a lot of the UBC players, except for the final four, I think will will be uh, playing in that event as well. So we're here for two great great uh, events. And uh, I I played in the Istiver. I've been to Turkey several times. This is one of my favorite places to play, uh, and uh, and just sometimes I come just to play Shuet and be with friends here. It, it's uh, we ate to dinner last night at a fabulous restaurant. Nesvat took us to what he considers to be the best restaurant in Istanbul, and we ate way too much. So it's just a great place to be aside from backgammon. Um, last time I was here, I came with my good friend Dennis Culpepper and and Blake Fleetwood and uh, and Dirk. The, and the four of us, uh, I don't think we got any sleep. We were up all night playing Chouettes, and uh, there was a, a couple of tournaments, and they ran a special tournament in our honor. I mean, the, it's just an amazing place to be. Now, you know, Phil, one person asked who the tournament director is for this event, and that is Mate Fair. Uh, Mark, yeah. Mark Olson's actually playing in the event. Yeah, Mark would normally be in charge, but he wants to play, and I guess we didn't want him to be in charge and play. Too big an advantage. So he he's he brought on Mate, uh, and Mate from Hungary is a highly skilled uh, tournament director and uh, just a great guy. Good, very good friend of mine. In fact, we we play tennis together in L.A. We play tennis together in my in Florida, and we brought our tennis rackets to Istanbul. We and the two of us will challenge anybody. We'll beat anybody at tennis too. But Mate's a a great guy. As soon as the stream starts, we uh, the match starts, we'll start put, putting that up. And uh, hopefully we'll be on schedule for every hour with a whole with a new match. I can tell you some of the uh, streaming uh, in case you want to watch. Um, let's see here. Everything's on my little phone, but we're streaming Mochi and Justice. Uh, after this, we're going to uh, stream Oliver Squire from England and uh, Ido Levi from Israel. And the third match is going to be very exciting. It'll be Mark Olson and Michi. Uh, and then we have Z uh, Zednik, uh, Ziska, and Tim Cross. We've got some great... Oh, Mochi and Dirk are playing later on on the stream. We're trying to stream as many people as possible. And, of course, we want to feature the top, uh, the, the top most likely candidates to win. And we all know that Mochi is the big favorite here. But Michi, uh, Zednik, Dirk Scheman, uh, and, of course, uh, Mark Olson uh, are probably uh your favorite favorites but yeah. you know as we get into tomorrow probably we'll see how the standings are developing and so forth we can yeah. select matches based on those who are actually in contention yeah uh so uh i'm surprised they were afraid to let me play i i think that they just did that because they want to give mochi a chance uh <laughs> so i guess that i think that's fair so yeah, well, it's I, very difficult to play yeah. high PR players anyway. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to. Well, I I have a I have a positive record against Mochi in in matches, and of course I've never ever outplayed him. But uh, uh, and my luck factor is through the roof, <laughs> and I gamble like crazy. I mean, I just played well. I put him in positions he's never seen before. That's my goal. <laughs> of course, I put everybody in those positions. All right, we're waiting for the stream to match to start. Uh, let me um, go back to yeah, and to reiterate, uh, a couple of people have joined us late. Perhaps all of the preliminary rounds, sixteen rounds today and tomorrow, will be played online on the computers. As you'll see, Justin and Mochi playing here momentarily. Once we go to the final eight, the knockout phase, those will be played on live boards. So it'll be much more of a traditional streaming perspective that you'll have mm -hmm. and and those matches uh, at least select of those matches will be streamed yeah uh, with commentary i think it's i think it's more fun to watch people on a live board there's no question about it personally i have no there's no difference in my game it's lousy whether i'm playing on a board or on the computer but i know many many people that there are many people not many there's several that were eligible to play in this tournament that didn't come because they didn't want to play on a computer they, mm -hmm. they only want to play on the live board and i'm sure there's others that that uh, actually prefer to play on the computer well and and they get the pip count is one of the big things yeah they're using the pip count 
but you know one of the the difficulties is it's just so labor intensive to play them all on a live board because you have to transcribe have live trans transcription in effect of all of those matches yeah and um you know it just becomes uh and you have to have cameras at every board you have to stream every you know it's, it's tough it, so every every match this way is automatically recorded by playing on galaxy on the galaxy website and uh that makes it a lot easier uh plus you can go back and review the matches it's great uh, and, you know and, and just the numbers of uh, people here here they're playing what 24 people and had anticipated it may be more than that so they ended up with this concept of playing on the computers in the first two rounds uh conversely i mean there's like in um, as an example in texas we played we streamed every match so then the live transcriptions could be done from the from the live streams and uh so we were able to play all the matches on boards mm -hmm. so it's you know you just have to balance the the various uh requirements of doing it both ways well i must tell you something um to me uh two things that i hate doing are counting pips and <laughs> and doing transcriptions so i record a lot of matches and do a lot of work with students with matches and i just i send him all the mate and he transcribes it for me i just pay him to do it for me because i can't stand it and he's also very good at it well he has a whole squad that does it and that's what how we do it at texas in the ubc uh -huh. usa uh they watch all the live streams and we almost immediately have the results uh -huh. yeah but uh, again you know a lot of coordination a lot of uh, it's labor intensive let me put the code in five nine four one two Hit enter. Okay. Ah, we see the board. So they are a shot by Justin is going to play. Uh, looks like Mochi is waiting. He's waiting. Yeah, he's got to log in. Yeah. Justin's made the uh, made the table in effect. Made the board. All right. And what is that uh, for the viewers here? The viewers they have to watch it on us. They don't watch this. Right. right they're watching the yeah. stream they're watching watching the stream although they could do it either way so but. we're watching the match it's going to be a little bit delayed but as soon as mochi logs in maybe mochi's afraid to play who is top and who is bottom uh justin is top we're actually due to the uh Remember, they can hear you. Yeah, yeah. Due to the layout of the playing room and and so forth, um, it was unable to to do the commentary in an adjoining room because of the the noise. Because playing on the laptops and so forth, that's an extremely quiet room. And even though we were in another room, separated by an air wall, they could hear the commentary. So Phil and I are up on the fourteenth floor here in a little conference room and. They're yeah. they're playing down on the ground floor in a in a in another room. Yeah, I must tell you, we're at the Wow Hotel. I've been here before. There's a convention center next to it, big enough to house the major tournament. I, I think they're expecting around 800 players, and it's amazing. They will have boards supplied by FM boards and and the Galaxy for every player. You don't have to bring a board. The whole sit room is set up beautifully, and they use an electronic system. So um, we're the stream is on. They they should start playing. Well, we're waiting for Mochi to log in to to the match. Well, Mochi's logged in here. What's his problem over here? Okay. Yeah, we don't. Uh, have they started playing? Or no, no, they've not started playing. But on the stream, Mochi's on. But on. Okay. I, oh, he says he has an issue. Okay. Yeah, this isn't the same as this. Yeah, yeah it's okay. not supposed to be. Yeah. Okay. This isn't the actual We're screen. Only framing, only okay, framing I got you. Board. I got you. Yeah. Nice so, as usual, there's plenty of technical issues when you first get started. Hopefully, it'll be a lot smoother later. In the meantime, I can tell jokes if you'd like. Uh, We'll, we'll pass. <laughs> <laughs> you just saved my life because I've heard them all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, you have. The viewers have heard them all. Oh, everybody's heard. <laughs> I'll find some new material. 
Well, I can show everybody that my beautiful hat. I, I don't know oh, if they'll be able to read it. What is this? It says I beat mochi. Uh, and then underneath it, it says at ping pong. But I wanted to have an I beat mochi hat for the tournament. But uh, I did beat him in Cyprus at ping pong. And uh, I have the, I have given away a lot of I beat mochi hats. We had some challenge events in New York and elsewhere where we invited people to try and play mochi. And if they did, they made a little money and won a hat. But it all started with my I.B. Carter hats. My good friend Carter Maddox, uh, one day uh, I beat him and I went out and bought a hat that said I.B. Carter and everybody loved it. So I bought a dozen for every time Carter lost, I would get out a hat. I think I'm up to six dozen now uh, uh, hats that I've passed out that I.B. Carter. And then I, uh, um, uh, then I came up with another idea. I had made a hat that said I lost to Phil, but nobody would wear it. Uh, I did beat Victor Ashkenazi in a match and made him wear it. And, oh, oh, yeah, Mike Svobodny, we played a, a game called uh, uh, Pine of Bluff Gammon. Ah, looks like they're getting started. Okay, here we go. Maybe. Maybe. You said this will come up a few seconds later. Shot by Justin. Okay, they've started. Okay. Yeah, but are these, I, I, we're not seeing the match actually starting there. Yeah, let's go. Okay. All right. So we have a match starting. I, I don't know if, if the, our audience is seeing the match, though, because they're just seeing us. Here we there go. Is. There we go. Play, we play. got it. On top is Justin, as you can see, and Mochi on the bottom. They're playing a seven-point match. And again, one point for winning the match and one point for whoever gets the best PR. And um, we can see that uh, uh, Justin has already made uh, the 18 point, which is the bar point for Mochi, and that gives him, I think, a pretty strong position to get going, but uh, it's too soon to tell who's who's favorite here. Mochi is well up in the race. You can see the race is shown. That's one of the advantages of playing online, and that's one of the reasons it's different and why some people don't like it, um, but you can see that pip count is 136 to 159, and uh, Mochi's got a strong advantage there. I would say he's favored for that reason. 5-2 here. Um, I don't see it. What, what is, why, why there's a delay here. The clock is running. Justin's trying to think about how to play the 5-2. Well, you make the four point and you either slot the three. I slot guess. the three or come down. But if you come down, you're stripping your midpoint. I guess you slot the three. But, you know, it's interesting, again, to this concept, though, because you're playing not only for this to win the match, but you're playing to minimize your PR as well. Well, so I think it's synonymous. I think if you play to minimize your PR, that should help you win the match more. That's the whole I, point. I don't disagree. But they, uh, but those are two considerations that, uh, and you'll see that come into play occasionally. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. He split the, the he, he broke. He broke the 18, and he's, well, he's, now the race is even. Oh, and he hit. He hit, and yeah, the race is even. And uh, this is a big play. Hitting when you're outboarded is a little bit of a difficult concept because Mochi uh, does have one more innerboard point, and that's why hitting might be the wrong idea. Except he's he was down. He was he was down so much in the race that that's another reason to hit. So he's got competing concepts here. It's tough. Okay, he made the play, and it's now Mochi's turn. Is and, Mochi and thinking Mochi's about doubling? contemplating doubling here. Well, his fours are duped, and the, uh, his fours are duped. He hit, get hit with a four, but the six wasn't. It might have been close to a cube. Mochi has a habit of letting his clock run down. You can see the time, too. He almost always finishes the match with no time. Okay, uh, he hit and got a good dance here from Justin. That's a big thing. If it was close to a cube before, it's certainly a double now. He hits with sixes and fours in the outside. So and he has a second blot in play. I always teach, and he did not double. I guess he didn't feel it was strong enough to double yet, because even if he hits the second checker, looks like Justin might anchor. He's going to make I, the three I, point here. I might have doubled there. I might have doubled there. So obviously it's wrong if Mochi didn't. You can you don't make money betting against Mochi. Okay, he hit that second checker. Oh, this is big. This is big. He danced, uh, and he's too good to double. That's why he's not doubling now. Too good to double. And 
four one. He's going to just bring builders down. I would think he plays six to five to get an extra builder. He's got to come in, yeah, and then. All right, he's making the, the four. Yeah. This is e this is easy. Maybe. Do you split twenty one? I split twenty one. He's got two in the air. Yeah, but he didn't. He was he was he worried about the the joker's the only way to get hurt. I bring a builder in maybe. Thirteen to six, so you can start attacking. There he did. There you yeah. You want to attack here in blitz mode? Ah, do you switch? Here's the question. Do you switch from three to one? You're going to go all out blitz. I think you do. He did. Yes. Very good. Maybe you could, can you hear me from the 14th floor? <laughs> I can't take credit right, now. You the keep, keep the blitz going. So. Yeah. Going to hit again. You don't want him to anchor as all you care about. Now. Oh, he's got to come. Oh, that's he right. He's on the bar. Him. He got the block hit. Yeah. That was big for Justin to hit. May only delay the inevitable, but it does. Oh no! Give him a chance. No, just if he anchors, that's a huge thing. If he anchors, he might just get doubled out and lose a point. Winning an undoubled gamut at this score is not huge. Okay, four three. Can't cover. Do you hit again? You keep two up and leave two. Oh no, you could cover. That's right. Okay. Do you bring, bring the bring the ammo on. Huh? I think so. You don't. I don't think you touch the back go, checker. Go to the four. So this is a play that I would make very quickly. And look, he did split. He didn't. He did that. That surprised me, but it turned out to be a great play because. Oh no, he didn't anchor. He still danced. I would have we would have had another builder in there. All right. He felt he had enough ammunition. Justin got the hit. Justin keeps coming in. Yep. I'm still hitting. <laughs> Even with no covers, <laughs> I'm still hitting. Well, you gotta think he's hopefully gonna dance sometime, right? He danced a lot early, but he now he keeps rolling the yeah, rolling this, the one entry number. This is tricky to hit with absolutely no covers, but you do. You still you'd rather get hit than see him make the point. That's the point. So now you've got to bring the you gotta bring it into play. So Mochi's got two worries. He's he's worried about getting builders and he's also worried about crashing. And he successfully completed the prime. Now he's gonna just make sure he doesn't have any anti-jokers like double fours or double threes or anything that makes them crack. And uh, by the way, this should help uh, Justin's PR quite a bit. <laughs> no decision. As long as he played everything right up to this point, and I think he did, his PR is going to be zero. So <laughs> that's the problem with closing him out, but you don't care about that. You just play your game and win. Well, as Phil said earlier, we're watching the uh, the chat line and so forth. So if any of y'all have comments or suggestions or critiques or whatever, I mean, some of you on occasion may be putting in some critical positions and we'll, uh, we'll enjoy looking at those. Yeah, I have one big question about this game. Did Mochi miss a cue uh, earlier? He was thinking about it a couple of times. And one, the last time he was thinking about it, I have to admit that I would have doubled. But I'm maybe too aggressive with the cube. And I think Justin had a take and he could be winning four points now instead of two on a gammon. So we'll see. That's what beauty of, of XG. And uh, But again, I'm not going to bet against Mochi. If he didn't double, it probably wasn't a double. And for Sebastian and others, they're 24 in the contender tournament uh, this week. Uh -huh. Double sixes is not, I don't think it's going to help that much here. <laughs> but I love playing with somebody too, too big, too late. Yeah, <laughs> but I love I love people with that. that the, the guy rolls double sixes here, where it almost doesn't matter, and he starts screaming that the guy's so lucky. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I recently saw an interview with Art Benjamin. He reminded us of of a a bunch of general rules of thumb that were really good. One of them is if you are bearing off without contact and you have a checker on the one point and you roll a one, it's never, ever uh, right 
not to bear off. So anytime you got a checker on the ace point and you roll a one, if there's no contact, you always take it off no matter what the roll is. I, I, I sort of intuitively knew that. I think McGrill covered that, but it's nice to be reminded. Okay. okay. Two zero. Two zero for Mochi. We have no idea what the TRs are, but I'm willing to bet you they're both under one or very close to it. Yes, Jorgen Grand said they do see the PRs in the preliminary rounds online. Yeah, but the PRs that they'll see are. are I said, did I say PR? They do see the pip count. The pip I'm count. Sorry. Yeah. They do not see PR. I'm yeah. Sorry. At the end of the match, you'll see the three ply PR, but again, until it's analyzed and more thoroughly on. on on uh, Bill's and Tyra's uh, great computer, we won't know the actuals. That'll be posted later. Okay, what's happening here is Mochi is starting out in great shape again, making inner board points. And uh, again, this position before this roll, I would have thought about the cube. Maybe Mochi rolled pretty quickly. I guess it wasn't, but I, the score might be a factor when you're winning two to you nothing. Got the lead, so. Yeah. Maybe if you were losing two to nothing, this might have been a double. So how do you play a 5-4 here? I guess you up and around. That, that would be my guess. I, I come up from the 24 to 20 and 16-11. I don't know. But it's surprising that Mochi's taking this long on plays like this. But well, again... You you said earlier. I mean, this is his. Uh, he brought two down. Okay, he uh, didn't come up. His uh, I get uh, typical look, style. Yeah, look how smart it was for him not to come up. Uh, I'd like to save time on my clock for the last two games because they're the most important. But again, the PR, whether you make a mistake on the last game or the first tank game, it's going to it's going to affect your PR just as much. And PR is a very big thing. Mochi's got an ego about that. He wants to play. I think his average PA, he's averaging around 2.3. He wants to play that much or that well or better. For those of you who may not know, PR is a term that I coined when we helped, I helped develop Extreme Gammon, and we had ER, error rating, with Snowy, and we wanted something different that was more accurate, and it's your performance rating. PR stands for performance rating, and, I, and when I coined the term, we thought uh, it would take a while for people to adjust. So what basically that means is if you play perfect, opinion if you make every play the computer makes you're playing at zero so every time you make an error it, it raises the number uh so mochi is one of the best in the world there's a few players that are playing under three pr which is pretty amazing there's a few in this mat in this tournament that, are, that can play at that level but most of us are uh who are open players who play in the championship division are more likely to play at six or seven or five pr something like that so that'll give you an idea that they're about twice as good as the average uh, championship level player. Casual player might play at 14 or 15 or 16 PR. I've been teaching now for 25 years and I've been able to take my students from 12 to 14 PR very quickly. <laughs> and get paid for it. Yeah, yeah, and then I play them for money. Okay, 3-1. This is not a good roll. You had to break his nine point and builders. It it. So Justin uh, came up with the, um, oh, I think it was Wilcox Snellings in one of my postings on Facebook. Uh, we had a difficult play on a priming play. He said the best way to counter a prime is to counter prime. And uh, of course, this prime is countering a blitz, really. So we've got Mochi in, in the blitzing mode. When you make your one and two points, you're really thinking about hitting and blitzing. And Justin is playing a priming game. So one of the things we always consider, and I know players at this level always do too, is what is your game plan? And Mochi's game plan was the blitz, and it didn't really succeed and very well. doubles from here. Yeah. And Justin's got a good priming game, and he's also uh, way, way down in the race when he doubled here. This so guy. this is an easy take. In fact, I'm not sure it was a double. I, I would not have doubled that. But if Justin's a great player, he must see something. He sees a very bad position for Mochi. After you've made the one and two points, if, you're, if your blitz is not successful, you've got an ugly game. And Justin's got a beautiful priming game. But I don't, I, that double was very aggressive, I think. When you're down that much, the race is always a factor. You always have to think about the pip count. 
And this is going to, this is extremely volatile now. Yeah. And, and I like Mochi's position. He's going to come out with the six. The question is, is he going to split from the eight to, to attack? I think he I keeps think the eight point. I think uh, yeah, he did split. And that gives you the, the splitting shot at the third checker. Oh, well, oh, that but, was big. Justin anchored. If Justin hadn't anchored there, it was curtains. It was double pass. But that anchor saved Justin. I, I really didn't like that double. I have to take a longer look at it. Maybe because he was losing two to nothing. Maybe it's because he's playing Mochi. I know I, I'm much more aggressive when I play Mochi. How else can you beat this guy? But if you're thinking about PR, I think you, I think you forget about who you're playing. I really think you just got to play the what you think is the best play. Mary Hickey came up with a great saying that I like, when in doubt, make the right play. <laughs> I love that. Well, you know, and it's interesting in this format, in the one point for the PR win, one point for the score win, I mean, Mochi has to feel he's, he's, he's quite the high favorite to almost capture every PR point. So then he's... Uh, well, I wouldn't say every. I wouldn't be surprised. A majority. If, a yeah, bad, I a, mean, a good majority. There's but, there's four or five players that, that if Mochi makes one real blunder, uh, you know, I played Mochi a seven-point practice match. In the first game, he made a point two five blunder against me on a cube. Uh, he dropped a cube that was a take. So even he is going to make some of those errors. He ended. He still ended up playing at under 2 PR. He played at 1.6 PR with a huge blunder in a seven-point match. So... You're probably right. He's he's certainly going to be favored to win the PR every match, but winning the PR doesn't gain doesn't guarantee you the uh, the win at all. At this level of play, because the, the difference in PR between Mochi and Justin is just not that great, and certainly not that great when you're looking at Michi and Dirk and, Dirk and ZZ. And ZZ, and, yeah. In particular, those are those are my picks for the, the ones that are going to have the chance to come the closest. Okay, uh, I'm starting to like, uh, like I said, Justin made a great cube here. I would have, I would have doubled and uh, uh, he's got him crushed. I think, I think this is very unlucky. At one point, Mochi was about to, uh, about to turn the game around and give the cube and, and Justin came, came right in. Mochi almost, almost stole this game back. This is a this, big, this could be four the other way. Yeah, this is a uh, big managed, swing game. Managed the anchor. Yeah. So. So when you anchor on the two point, uh, my estimation is about 8% gammons or 12%. Anchoring on the ace point is closer to 15%. So there's a big difference. That's why you want to take that two point instead of the ace point. These are simply from reference positions that I put into XG and run enough times to, to be able to make those estimates. And of course, certainly Mochi knows that too. That's why he wanted the two point instead of the ace point. At this point, you don't even think about winning if you're Mochi. You just want to not get gammoned. Nor the other chance. Yeah, I do. you know this is not uncommon in that. You know Justin's got the great position and so forth, but as you can see, he's still down thirteen pips in the race, so he has to be uh, careful in how he brings this home. Yeah, you have want to cut. You have two goals. One is to bring your checkers in safely, and the other one is not to let them out too soon. You let them out too soon. This is kind soon. of a quasi trap play. It's been set up for him by by the rolls. Now, does he keep the checker back on the, the five in case Mochi rolls a six? Yeah, no, there's the trap there play. It is. There's wow. the trap play. Bill, you're smarter than you looked and even think about the trap play. <laughs> and Mochi falls for it and hits. And, and rolls with a great number back. Oh, my goodness. Mochi. Oh, wow. look at this. What a, what a swing. Mochi's out. That trap play, you only basically do a trap play against the two-point board with a blot. That's the ideal time. And he had that situation. So I don't think Justin was wrong to trap there. No, I think it was absolutely the right play. Yeah. Just got uh, it's backfiring so far. Just got some great, yeah, series I would, of rolls. By I Mochi. would love somebody to tell me what they think the winning percentages are for the odds for both teams right now. Who's favored? Uh, and I'm really not sure. Holding the cube, I like I like Mochi's position, but well, he has to come in with a six. The question is, do you split? No, he didn't split. Mochi's going to make the point. Pair him up. Yeah, he's going to pair him up and hope to get lucky. Five, three. He's certainly going to make the, the two. Make the two. Make the two. He could make. You got to split those. You yeah. got to have as much 
coverage out to the 10 because you want to completely split them okay so now he's got all kinds of shots well that he didn't hit uh mochi, we got to be wondering when mochi has a redouble at this score it's tough to redouble until you're more close to gin but it's scary now a double ones is a good roll again he can anchor up. he's got to yeah. pair him up but i don't know justin's still got what pretty good odds of winning this thing yeah, this uh, I just play the deuce personally, but me too. Leave them all spread, but he might play. It might be an argument to roll go six to. From the, he could step up to the what is that twenty one, yeah. and then if uh, then he's got all three shooting at a block that might be left on the ten up to the sixteen point from to there. Be the that'd be the. Well, I'm thinking even leave to play the the three to to his three point and step up with the back and then all six all three back checkers i don't are, i don't step up with the bearing back. on the I, I don't step up with the back it gives you sixes to pick and pass i don't want to do that i, I wouldn't i wouldn't a, want him to have a six a, a six two or a six three to pick and pass this is a an interesting uh it's a tough decision play. by uh by justin right here yeah i i i'm with you though i would play to the two point You don't want to pair any of them up. I don't think. I think you uh, you want to maximize the potential yeah. number of shots. I'd, I'd rather get hit than than pair them up. But he's looking yeah. at double hits too. You want you don't want to if you get hit twice, then you're and you don't hit back immediately. It's going to be double pass for Mochi. So this is a very important play. He's right to take this kind of time on it. And these are the kind of plays you don't. You know, we don't have, you won't read a section of a book. See, that was the play that I, I liked. Yeah. Oh, that's a double that's hit. A double hit. That's, that's the disaster if he doesn't roll a three. There's no question about the double hit here. He rolled, he a, rolled three. a three. Oh, my God. That was big. Yeah, it's G the other wow. way. Oh, that was. That hits and covers. Wow. He, he didn't I, roll a I, three there. Wow. Poor. I, I almost feel for Mochi, but you got to be happy for Justin. You know. I mean, the, this big swing. throughout this game, two or three different stages, the volatility was just off the charts. Off the charts. Absolutely. This is why backgammon, this is why I gave up bridge, gin rummy, uh, a whole bunch of other games that I play. I won't get it, even poker for backgammon. There's nothing as much fun or as exciting as when you see the dice roll. And, and yeah, people say there's luck. Uh, I like what Michi wrote uh, to me in a, in a note. He doesn't believe there's any luck in backgammon. It's it's all all odds, and uh, it's and I think all these players are odd. We we are all odd. But you know, we were so close. <laughs> Had Justin not rolled the three, oh, that's then it. he's down six zero in all likelihood. Oh yeah, it's going to be and, double and pass. Now it's going to be four two. Yeah, Justin, monster so it's swing. A eight point swing. Well, the odds of rolling a three are around thirty percent, and he got it. Chris Mochi had a great roll to roll the six one. Uh, yeah. That was that was a. His best chance almost other than other than big double sets. sixes yeah. yeah yeah okay the, now the question is is he going to get gammon when you have a closed board and two on the bar your gammons are somewhere around 40 percent and uh, it's starting to it gets higher every single roll uh, however there's a shot here unless he rolls a one and he did this is a you'll see the the nice this thing is the free bg occasionally here no, no i'm sorry nah there's uh, no, there's, uh, no, there's uh, no. Uh, that, that can't happen. That can't happen. There's no chance of a BG. Oh, my God. How, you, you know what? You said it and made it happen. Is that right? Yeah. Well, I'll, I'll be in Mochi's yeah. doghouse. But... You know, one problem I have with this match, I really like both of these guys. They're both good friends of mine, and I really rooting for both of them. So I I, I feel for Mochi, uh, but uh, it's hard to feel sorry for the number one player in the world but and who's won so much. <laughs> And uh, you know, but so uh, you always like to root for the underdog a little that bit. That wasn't an eight point swing; it was a ten point swing. Wow! Yeah, so, so. Wow! That three turned out to be a ten point swing. Yeah. Wow! One move, one one, one roll. That was really something. And BGs don't happen that often. Um, even in that situation, with a closed board, you're going to get gammed about forty percent. I think the BG is like three percent, something like that. It's just very, very rare. Yeah, Justin rolled. You know, two, emoji, or three, two or three sets in the barrel. And Mochi, Mochi kept, dancing. kept dancing. Kept dancing. Wow. So now Mochi's uh, 
in a deep hole. Um, okay, here's what you have to think about. It's Crawford. The, the rules say that when somebody gets one point short of winning the match, there can be no cue. So the only thing you think about is whether gammons matter or not, or how much they matter. In this case, of course, if Mochi wins a gammon, it means nothing because he only, I'm sorry, if Justin means, wins a gammon, it means nothing because he only needs one point to win the match. Does it matter if Mochi wins a gammon? And the answer is no, not, not much. much. It's only it takes away whether or not there's a free drop. So this game should be played like DMP, double match point. You only care about how do I win? Maybe at the end, a little bit, if you have a chance for a gammon, you might do something because a free drop's only worth about two and a half percent. So this game is a DMP game. You play to win the game and not care about winning or losing a gammon. Now, if the score was different, if Mochi had three, it would be a, a big increase in Mochi's odds to, to get to five because when you're an even number away, uh, that's that's when you the opponent doesn't have a free drop and winning two or four points gets you evenly to win the match instead of giving you points that are wasted. Now, you know, it's going to be interesting here because Mochi's in all likelihood probably looking at a minimum of three games to win this match. And he's only got a minute and 36. Justin's only 2.06. But <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. it's going to be an interesting uh, – uh, I've Timing watched, perspective. I've watched well. Mochi finish matches with three seconds oh, yeah. and two seconds. He does that a lot. And I've asked him several times, I said, Mochi, why don't you save a little more time for the end? I've never gotten a good answer. I I, I think I, I, he knows he's doing it. He knows he, he has to play speed gammon at the end. Uh, and the end is really critical. And he does it. And I, I think he believes it hurts his opponent more than it hurts him. I I, I really believe that's the reason. Because when Mochi has three seconds on the clock, the other guy might make some foolish plays thinking he'll make it tough for Mochi to play the game out. And you're not going to make it tough for Mochi. He's just too good. So I think that's the theory, but I still don't like it. I think I think you know, don't want to play with two or three seconds left on that <laughs> at, at double match point in the final little, game. Little margin for yeah. error. But who am I to say Mochi's wrong? You know, I can't. There must be something going on in his mind that he knows more than I do. I, there's a lot of things, but that's one of them where he and I don't agree. We also don't agree on on uh, ketchup. He, he puts ketchup on stuff I don't like. <laughs> okay. Let's get to this game. Uh, double fives is a is a tough role to play here. I guess you have to leave him. You have to leave him a shot. The question is, do you make the eight point? Well, in looking at the race, the race is critical. Mochi, after this roll, uh, is slightly ahead in the race, and at DMP, you're supposed to race. But the eight point would have been kind of impotent. It doesn't really hurt. The midpoint's kind of kind of valuable there. So I agree with this idea of keeping the midpoint and keeping contact. Plus, the other thing is, what is Mochi's game plan here? And Mochi would like to get a shot and hit it. Not not be a racing game because he's got a huge advantage in a hitting game having a strong inner board like this. Okay, six one. Um, what's he thinking? Pick and pass or coming around and leaving the shot? I don't think he's getting hit is deadly. Shot. Getting hit is deadly. Exactly. And the only other way to play a six one without a shot is to pick and pass, and that's still an indirect shot. There. Hitting two is out of the question. That's 20 numbers. And against Mochi's board, that's death. I think you give him the six shot. Oh, he did pick and pass. Okay. And it worked. Oh, and look it didn't this. work. Look at this. Wow. That pick and pass worked great. I might, can just, I might have given the six shot. I can bring him around. Okay. I still leave a six shot here. I do too. Bring it. Come off the 18. Yep, he did. Oh, geez, came, comes in with a one. It's clear. Oh, he doesn't. Oh, he doesn't clear it. wow. I think he ought to play. Just play with one checker. Yeah. I think, he, think. I think he's got to play with the eight point. But I don't know. Leaving a six shot is that 17 numbers. But he did. And he got away with it. Keep, Justin's keep luck has been mid. pretty strong. Keep the mid. There you go. At the end of the match, XG will tell you who is luckier and how, by how much. I'll bet you the luck factor here was pretty strong for Justin, especially winning that backhand. That's. That takes the luck through the through the roof. Interesting how he left him a five shot and when he could have left a three shot. 
And um, it's about the same number of shots, 14 versus 15 numbers. Okay, he but, clears. There it goes. Oh, there it is. Now, Justin, ideally, he'll be able to clear this and bring it home. But uh, yep. strange things happen in backgammon. Well, I'm starting to look at our next match, Ito and, and Oliver Squire. I, Ito, most people don't know. He doesn't make it to very many tournaments. He's one of my co-teachers at the Backgammon Learning Center. I uh, met him about six years ago. And they, everybody, he was playing online and everybody thought he was a cheater because he was playing at three PR and under. Nobody ever heard of him. He'd never been to a tournament. And uh, uh, I was even worried about bringing him on as a teacher. <laughs> <laughs> so he, I set up a live session with David Presser in Israel and he played under three PR. So, he, and he's been doing it consistently. He played under 2.4 in the last UBC that he was in in Israel. So this guy has proven to be one of the best players in the world. He just has a full-time job and a, and a wife and who's expecting and uh, uh, about to have a baby. And so he just doesn't make it to tournaments too much. So this guy is really a great player. And Oliver Squire, we all know a young man from uh, England is great. So that'll be our next match. So stay tuned. That's supposed to start 10 minutes ago, and I'm sure we'll be late. <laughs> How's that for prediction? <laughs> so this match is uh, its not over. Mochi could get like, it's oh, over It's now. over now. It's over now. Can't wait to see the PRs and the luck factor. Let us see. I usually ignore the luck factor, but it was so big in this match. Okay. Justin and a boy. Who played, who played better? better? You get to see that right away, according to... Uh, Okay. Oh my God. Mochi played at 1.8. Oh, that's not unusual for Mochi. Well, and didn't show Justin played at 6.01. No, it doesn't yeah. show the luck, but you guys are going to analyze this match what, yeah. tonight. No, he's going to be sending them. We're going to start analyzing yeah, start right, right away. So we'll have this. We'll have this soon. So this analysis is not as accurate as uh, as when you put it in. For example, I uh, I had dinner with Victor Ashkenazi last week, and we we always play. Uh, the loser of a one-point match buys dinner. I beat him, and I beat the hell out of him in PR as well, according to my iPhone. And then we put it into, uh, he played at four PR, and I played at two. Then we put it into uh, the full XG, and he played at 0. .06 PR, and I played at four. So <laughs> there's going to be a big swing between. So you have to hmm? change who paid for the meal? No, no, we didn't. We weren't betting on PR. I don't bet on PR with Victor. <laughs> Victor Ashkenazi, are you kidding? We play just for the match, but he's got it. He still has an edge anytime we play, but I end up buying dinner most of the time, but I don't mind it just to have a company of great friends like, like Victor and Mochi and these people I play all the time. Now, ideally, as each of these matches are finished, uh, they're going to be sending, sending us the match files, Tara and myself, and uh -huh. we, we have one of our gaming laptops. So we'll be, uh, we can run these matches and this match will even be shorter, but a typical seven-point match, uh, we can run it in about mm -hmm. four minutes. Uh. So let me review where we are. They each made one point here. It was a tie. Uh, and that's one of the unique things about the UBC. If in a standard tournament, Justin would be the winner, and Mochi is going to go home or go into the uh, you know the second round as, as a loser or whatever, depending on the tournament format. So this tournament format rewards you for skill, and that's why you see 24 players in this tournament. Instead of 100, instead of 800 players in this tournament, uh, I love the fact that uh, in backgammon anybody could win. Lots of people don't like that. They're chess players, the better player wins every time. And I've even got a chart that shows uh, uh, what are the odds of winning at any given uh, skill level difference. And uh, man, man. they answer Brendan's question here. I think they they each play 16 preliminary rounds against different opponents right so it's not a swiss of any sort all of those pairings have been drawn in advance uh -huh. so all 16 rounds are now defined yeah there was a raw there's a random draw last night and it just so happened that justin and mochi met we we select who gets the stream mate and i sat down last night and we decided we want to give as many people on the stream as possible so that and we've done that but we also want to make sure we get Mochi and Michi and, and Yedik and, and Dirk uh, and and Mark are, are our favorites. We want to make sure they're streamed, and they all will be. Uh, Mochi will be streamed again in a match in round six against Dirk Schiemann from uh, Germany, who was the number two giant in the world many years ago. He gave up the game for poker for a while, 
and he came back in 2016 to dedicate himself to playing backgammon. And now he's also one of our BLC, Backgammon Learning Center teachers, as is Mochi. And, uh, and that'll be ideally, and again, our schedule is going to be off a, a little bit, but round six ideally would be at 5 p.m. local time. Um, so in that neighborhood uh, will be uh, Dirk and Mochi. But next up is... Uh, well, well, we already in, uh, we're already starting. We're already an hour behind our schedule, so we don't we don't. You know, well, we're only because we started an hour. Depending on when those they, other matches finish, yeah, um, it's hard to say. Um, any questions? Go ahead and put them in on the stream. We have time to cover them now. Yeah, um, Ed Sawyer is asking about why only a, a minute per point. Well, it's just it's faster to play online than it is to play live so yeah. the normal settings online are uh one minute and 10 seconds as opposed to the traditional two and 12 yeah on a live board again online you've got the pip count so you never have to stop to count pips that's going to save you don't time. have to pick up the dice and by the way the dice i think that dice. should be the settings anyway i think backgammon is too slow i think i think two minutes is too much uh at the, especially for the championship level of course i love speed gammon but there should be something in between and, and I, I think one minute should be the should be the settings for all live matches instead of two minutes per match. So in a seven point match, uh, you have 14 minutes now uh, in your bank, but you have a 12 second delay where none of your time clicks off until the 12 seconds is gone. They've kept the 12 second delay, but they changed it from having 14 minutes in the bank to seven minutes in the bank. And as you can see, both these players used a lot of their time. Now, the six. PR that Justin had is much worse than he normally plays and much worse than he's been playing the last couple of days. I've been seeing his PRs and watching him and Mochi practice, and he's often was playing at three and four PR. So this was a bad game PR wise for Justin. And I frankly don't know exactly where the big error was. Now, remember when I said, I thought that Mochi may have missed a cube. Apparently he didn't. Apparently he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> and if he did, it was, it was small, but the game where he won a gammon, uh, and won those two points that first game. That's I really want to see that because this is how you learn. This is why XG is such a great learning tool. And I got to thank Xavier. Well, he apparently gauged himself to be too good much earlier than what you or I would have thought on the, in the first game. He played on. No, I think we thought he should have cashed. No, I think he. I think he thought he was not good enough, and then became too good. Okay, that's my guess. If I remember the game properly. I don't think it was he thought he was too good to say. It could be. Maybe you're right. But I thought he was not good enough and then suddenly became too good. But when he thought, when I thought he was not good enough, or maybe he thought he was too good, that's where I thought the double should have been. That's what I want to look at. So that's the beauty of being able to look at XG. Uh, there's a saying I love. You don't learn from experience. You learn from your mistakes. So find out where the mistake is and uh, uh, and really study that and find out what the reason is behind it. Uh, anybody who's going to get good at backgammon should not be trying to learn what's right. You should be trying to learn why it's right. It, and it, it's only when you learn the logic and the reasoning behind it. And that's what makes this game so fascinating to me. It's it's really an intellectual, uh, like solving a puzzle, every single move and every single cube decision to try and figure out the logic of it. And again, that's another reason why you've got to have extreme gammon. You put in a, a position and you say, okay, this wasn't a double because the behind in the race. Oh, that may be the big mistake that Justin made. I thought he made a bad double when he was way down in the race there when Mochi had one on the bar and he was holding the four point. And I thought he didn't wasn't up enough in the race to give the, he was down mm -hmm. too much in the race. So I think that was a cue bear. And that may be the, if I'm right, that's where the PR ding is for, for Justin. But let's say you come up with the conclusion that the reason, let's say I'm right. Let's say he shouldn't have doubled because of the race. You take that position and you do you you change the race. You put another checker back, or you move you move up a little bit and find out if that if it becomes a double, and then you'll see that's the reason why. So generally, when my opponent's holding my four point, even though he has that checker on the bar, uh, the checker on the bar is a big thing, of course, having a third checker back and on the bar. But he only had a two point board, as I recall, and I would not have doubled there. So let's find out. But there's another factor. Justin might think I got to be more aggressive against against Mochi, maybe I'm not going to win the PR anyway, so what the hell, I'm going to go for the, to take a shot at winning the game more by doubling. You know, and it, and we talked about this earlier, but our 
audience has increased greatly since we first went on the air. Uh -huh. But again, we're playing the eight rounds today, eight rounds tomorrow. The eight rounds today, well, all 16 rounds have been defined. The eight rounds today, who we're going to stream has pretty much been decided. Probably what we'll do looking at tomorrow is uh, look at standings and see who's in contention, who's not in contention. What are the most critical and crucial mm -hmm. matches in that regard as to who advances yeah. and makes some decisions as, as well, to who to stream? Our tournament, our tournament director is Mate. And last night, late at night, Mate and I looked through the matches and decided who to stream. But we're going to be flexible about it. That's why we're not announcing exactly all the matches. It might change. But our goal on the first eight matches is to get the top players in and get as many other players as possible because some of those guys might not be around for the next round. So, <laughs> and they come all the way to Istanbul and they're good players. Everybody in this tournament is a very fine player and they deserve to be seen if we can do it. So we're going to get as many streams as possible. But when we get down to the seventh and eighth round there, we may change it. Uh, you know, it's, Yeah, and then it's, certainly tomorrow, you and, get down to yeah. 13, 14, 15, 16 oh. rounds, then... Yeah, you know we're going to know what are the critical matches as to right someone making it or or getting eliminated. And it's, and it's ultimately Mate's decision, but Mate and I are close friends, and 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 he'll 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 ask us our opinion. We'll we'll give our input, but uh, <clears throat> we certainly uh, certainly we streamed a good match this time. This was exciting and fun. There were a couple of very very big swings. The backgammon uh, was a monster swing. That three that Justin rolled was a monster swing, and. Uh, uh, which immediately a, a very preceded the back heaven. Right? <laughs> yeah, I mean that was all that that made it very very exciting. That was that was a great match to watch from the standpoint of viewer excitement. That's what makes backgammon so great. And everybody talks about how are we going to grow the game. First of all, the game is growing on its own because it's a great game. But how do we make the streams more exciting? How do we make the games more exciting? I have some theories about that, and I'm not going to go into it now. But the game itself is so exciting. There's not a lot of things we need to do to change this game. It is just, a, it's to me, much more fun to watch than just about any other game. Uh, that, well, I mean, uh, you know, once someone understands the game a little bit, I mean, the subtleties and the intricacies that you see in backgammon are just incredible. Yeah. And uh, I played this game for 20 years at my, my real estate office without knowing very much about it. And it was fun. And the more I started learning, the more fun it was. Every day I'm still learning. I'm still studying the game all the time. Uh, of course, I have to study because I'm giving lessons every day and lectures. But to do that, I need to learn more about what's going on. And the more you learn, the more fascinating it is. Simple things aren't so simple anymore. Uh, like a couple of those plays that you and I would have made quickly. We're sitting there watching Mochi or, and Justin think a long time Agonize about it. Agonize over Yeah, and because and you know what? They're thinking if we could if we could read their minds, they're looking. They're thinking about things that you and I maybe haven't even considered. Uh, there's well, other uh, things going I mean, on. Score, I, and they're actually, you know, looking two or three rolls down the down the line here. You know, uh -huh. as to what not only what's the best immediate role, but what's going to play out better over the next two or three rolls, right? Depending on the probabilities of what my opponent rolls. So and yesterday, I, when I was playing Mochi, it was the day before yesterday. I had a cube decision from the bar where if I hit him, I've lost my market. He was winning two to one in a match to seven. And if I hit him, I lose my market. Uh, and I can hit him with 11 numbers, uh, uh, 13 numbers. And I can come in with 20 numbers. And even if I just come in, I, I might lose my market. Uh, but if I hit him, I lose my market for sure. And I chose not to double, which was wrong. And I danced and Mochi doubled me out on the next play because I danced. Now, if I had doubled him and danced, he couldn't double me back mm -hmm. because the score giving me, he couldn't afford to give me a four cube winning two to one, but he could afford to give me a two cube. That never entered my mind. I didn't think that he can't recube. I, I, all I thought about is if I, if I dance here, he's going to double me out. So why, how can I cube? But if I cube, he can't double me out. So this is a thought that, that by the way, Mochi pointed that out after the match. He, he was, he, he teaches me all the time. And I posted this online, and one other player made that same comment. Guess who it was on my Facebook page that made the same comment that Mochi made? You told me already. Uh, but Will, we'll let that... Wilcox Snelling, <laughs> yeah. who is easily exactly. one of the top players in the world, who can't be here because it's basketball season. <coughs> well, somebody asked me, what's <laughs> UK players? That's, that's a facet of the game that never occurred to me in that yeah. situation. And you played for 40 or 50 years, right? 70 years. 
70 years. I'm 78 years old. I've been playing for 70 years. And I, okay. Now, but I won't say that never occurred to me. It's occurred to me in other situations. It didn't occur to me at that situation at that score. <clears throat> that Someone's true. asking which UK players are in. I think what Tim Krause and Ollie Squires. Is that the only, I think, the only two UK players? That I can think of, yeah. They come to mind. Sebastian Wilkinson couldn't make it. Uh, he was He's another top player that was going to come, and something happened there. He canceled. But um, I think the full, you'll see the full list of players at ubc.backgammongalaxy.com, and you can see the list of players. But we have a little time here. Let's see. I've got some. Uh, sure, here's the list of players. I'll just, uh, round one. Uh, Mochi played Justin. Tim Cross played. Uh, I'm going to have problems with these. Dag fan scenario. Dag, Dag Fansenar. Uh Ernst Kuman played uh, Ali Hadar Bayar. Uh, Thomas Murr played Ibrahim uh, Karaksa. Uh, a guy named Michi something. Michi Kajime. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> played uh, Roberto uh, Terizium. Uh Thomas Kazema played Amirali Tevokoli. <clears throat> Giorgio Castellano played Mark Olson. Uh, Ruhola Amiri Andy played uh, Thies Masmussen. Uh, Arash Afrozinian played Peter Van Rouge. Uh, Mehmet Kasiki played Oliver Squire. Dirk Scheman played Ido Levi. Uh, Yannick Ziska played Iskak Solsky. So those are all the players. That's all 24 names. But again, you'll that's on the site. Um, and in round two, we are going to stream. Uh, who did I say we're going to? Oh, Edo. We're going to stream Edo Levi and Oliver Squire. Uh, who does Mochi play in round two? Michi plays Ernst Kuman. Mochi plays Ali. Ali Hadar Bayar. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Dirk is going to play Yitzchak Solsky. And by the way, before the tournament, I sent out a questionnaire and I got most of them back. A few people didn't answer and got background on all the players. And as they come up, I'll tell you some interesting things. I asked them some fun questions about what they do besides backgammon, what their favorite tips are and uh, uh, backgammon tips and who their heroes are. Some fun stuff. So I'll be, as we get to each match, I'll be bringing that up and, and give you a little background information on these guys. Okay, so we have a little lag time here, and I want to rest my voice because we're going to be—I'm going to be talking kind of nonstop between now and Friday. We do have a day, a day or two break, right? Where we're going to—I'm going to play in the Istanbul tournament, <clears throat> but there's a problem because we're going to be streaming the finals on Friday, and they need me for commentary. And they said, "Well, what if I'm still in the Istanbul tournament?" I said, "Don't worry about it. It, it ain't going to happen. <laughs> I'll be knocked out by then." But it, this is about, it, it's triple elimination tournament, which I love. Uh, it's a modified Swiss uh, in the Istanbul tournament. And uh, if they do have 800 players with a triple elimination, uh, there's a chance I still could be alive on Friday. It's, it's going to be fun. Yeah. It's well, be... if I'm alive, I'm going to forfeit because I, I made a commitment to come here to do the to do the streaming. And that's, that's my, I, I promised I would do it and I'm going to do it. Well, this is one that, Tara and I are throwing a little assistance uh, as we can. A lot of assistance. They, a lot of it. You're, you're very, very invaluable to any yeah. tournament. But uh, we came here for vacation and R&R, &R, and we're both playing in the tournament. So uh -huh. We rarely get a chance to. You stayed at an amazing uh, hotel the other night? We stayed at uh, the Para Palace in downtown uh, Istanbul, which is a extremely famous uh, hotel. It was originally built the Orient Express train line that went from Europe to the Far East passed through Istanbul. Uh -huh. and uh, Everybody the, got killed on that train, didn't they? Uh, the, the <laughs> and uh, uh -huh. they built this hotel, the Para Palace, and that is where the people who were on the train stayed when the train went through Istanbul. Oh. And it's a very famous, historic, beautiful hotel. You that, told me that tourists must stop there and... People oh, go in to see the lobby. They tour guides take tour groups into the first floor of it just to see it. Uh -huh. And uh, it's only 115 rooms. It's a small hotel, wow. but uh, it's gorgeous. And 
beautifully located. It was only a couple of blocks from where we yeah. ate last night, and you saw that area. Yeah. It was just amazing. So it was. <laughs> so last night we went to dinner, uh, uh, and our, our good friend uh, Nesvet uh, Dogan took us to uh, an incredible Greek restaurant where we ate way too much food, which is right around the corner. And we walked through the main area there. It, I thought I was in Japan. The number of people walking down the street and the crowds, and, and it was so and the narrow amazing. streets, oh, the old yeah. city. And yeah, it was amazing. It was absolutely fantastic. Well, this is about to start, so you need to see if we can find another uh, a link match ID or whatever. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna tell Wilson need match ID for Oliver. But for uh, all of the viewers, not only is this a great uh, tournament experience, uh, if you've never been to Istanbul, it's an incredible city, beautiful city, huge city, many, many things to is see. Is it 18 do. million people? 18 million people or something like that. Nature. Yeah. It's, uh, it's an experience. Okay. What I care about is, is that they have a huge backgammon community. Arda has a group and Fuad has a group and the, they, they they cross over some, but they, they both of their groups have over five or six hundred players and <coughs> pardon me or more. And I think it's growing like crazy and there and there is just so much backgammon activity here. When I come here, all I do is play Chouette night and day, which I love. I see what's my favorite well, play throughout the country. <clears throat> everyone plays what they call tabla, which is a, a or nardi of, nardi they call it too. Yeah, a form of. Of backgammon, they they typically don't use the cube. Yeah, but uh, you know, a number of those players have uh, transformed or grown into the international game and are, are making quite a name for themselves in the international game as well. <clears throat> okay, we're waiting for the next match to start, and again, we're going to be streaming. Uh, uh, Edo Levi. Well, I might. Uh, I'll sit and stay if you want and help you as you wish. I'm going to start. Uh, Mate should be sending us the, the round one file. Well, I always want your help. Uh, uh, Edo. Oh, you're doing it? Okay, Tara's sitting over next to us. She's running the the early round one matches. So we need. Uh, you can hear the computer right. whirring over here. It's, it's a, a gaming laptop in these. Uh, It'll be spitting out these matches at very high analysis settings in three or four minutes. Now, I know I played in some online tournaments, uh, particularly during the part of the pandemic, I guess, that Edo. Is it how does he pronounce it? Levy or Levi? Levi, Edo Levi. Edo Levi played in, and he is, uh, like you say, not terribly well known necessarily, but an extremely strong player. Yeah, and uh, that's why he's here. Yeah, <laughs> but he did. I think he won the Israeli qualifier. Quali qualifier, and he played it under two point four PR. I mean, and that's... there was, and I forget the <clears throat> name, uh, and I'm not sure this one of the the Iranian qualifier is here as well. The Iranian Iranian qualifier Amir, champion. Amir Shreki? No, it wasn't him. It wasn't Amir? No. Oh. In fact, he was he was commenting your way, but he's not here. Yeah. He was going to be here. He was now, on the list. Ryan Rebello won the UBC USA, <clears throat> but uh, his university studies uh, yeah, it's, precluded it, him from coming. It's really to sad to see our top players wasting their time going to college and having families and, <laughs> uh, and working. Uh, it really... They're not spending enough. I people. I mean, nice saying is I never let any of my wives interfere with my backgammon, you know, or my that's, job. That's why it's plural. Yeah, that's why I don't have a job or wife. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a great trip. I've never had more fun in my life doing anything but what we're doing now. I I live in South Florida. I lecture at seven different private clubs there, and. I also lecture at several clubs in New York, Chicago, Boston, but I'm basically going back and forth between Chicago and New York for lectures and private lessons and uh, tournaments and chouettes. And uh, in addition to backgammon, I play tennis every morning and have a gin game 
uh, two or three afternoons a week. I mean, what a fun life, and I'm making a living at it. It's really couldn't couldn't dream of a more fun You're life. You're playing gin. I I'm playing gin. No, I, I who, who can drink the most gin? No, no, no. I'm I'm playing gin rummy, and uh, I'm a better gin rummy player than I am a backgammon player. And I also teach gin rummy. I've got a couple of gin rummy students, and I've taught some backgammon players along the way to play gin rummy. And uh, Alan Tish has gotten pretty good. Yeah. One of my students. One gentleman, uh, he missed the first match. He said, "Who?" Well, that was uh, Mochi against uh, Justin Noel. Justin uh, won the match seven to two. Mochi outplayed him one point eight two to six point zero one on the preliminary analyses, uh, and we'll confirm that. But there was a, a very exciting swing game where Mochi was about to win. Justin hit a shot from the roof uh, that saved him, and then he ends up winning a backgammon. So yeah, and it was a two cube. So Mochi was about to win a gammon for four points, and ended up. <laughs> losing a back Evan for six points so 10 10 point swing game it was really uh quite an exciting game so tara's doing the evaluation now okay she's running we're running it well we'll have eight matches to run so that you have to you have to manually put it in you don't no you don't no it, we get a match file that's so right it's just running oh good i want to see I, i'm really most interested in Mochi's non cube and in Justin's cube. That's running right now. Okay. Uh, it's running that, right now. Uh, Mochi. We can run Justin over to Tyler's computer and running right now. Yeah. And will the matches be publicized too if anybody wants to see the match? That's a Mate question. I, I don't know. The XG file? I don't think so. I, I, I don't know. Okay, we can see in the background there, you can see the room. Yeah, the, everybody's there, uh, pretty much finishing up their matches. Yeah, uh, we have a set for one hour for match and for a seven point match today. with that time setting it should be easily be done. Yeah, particularly a seven line online. Yeah, uh, seven point online. Yeah, match. and a, a live seven point match could easily take an hour and a half or two, even with with the normal clock settings. Right. So you can see in the screen. Uh, that is Ido with, with the gray hair. He's premature gray. He's a young man. And he's going to be playing Oliver Squire, another young man. Without premature gray hair. Yeah. <laughs> now, did you see it was pretty interesting? It's been a lot in the backgammon community news in the last couple of weeks. Uh, there was an unfortunate event, kind of a, a rolling cheating event in uh, the tournament in Greece three or four weeks ago, and Oliver Squire was the opponent, and he visually and by sound caught the guy with a holdout roll, right? He put one of the die under his finger and only uh, mm -hmm. only rolled one, sh shook and rolled one die and set the other die on the board. By the way, I can do that. I've learned how to cheat so I can catch cheaters. <laughs> yeah, I, I do that. Yeah. But, by the way, I have never been caught cheating. I want to. I want to make that very clear. Okay. So, have you played Oliver Squire? Uh, no, I don't think I have. But be, uh, I'll be, be careful. I'll be careful. Yeah, I've never been caught. You know, one of my favorite anecdotes. We're talking about Oliver Squire's catching the sky, in part by sound and part by vision. You know, shaking one die is different than shaking two. The funniest thing I've seen. You know who uh, Yan Kit Chung is? The, 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 Yan was one of my students for quite a while. Yeah, he's, he's the blind player. Blind from, player from England. A great from player. England. Yeah. He played uh, Michelle Steinberg in Chicago one time, and he called out a misplay by Michelle just by the sound of her moving the check. Yeah, he's an now amazing said, guy. That, that's pretty good when you get he's an you get guy. called for making an illegal play <laughs> by a blind guy. <laughs> yeah, he he was one of the reasons I helped I developed a, a system of counting called colorless counting, where it doesn't matter what the colors of the checkers are. So what Yankee does is he feels the checkers by hand, and he sort of remembers which is he remembers which which yeah, is he which. He doesn't have to have the distinction like a yeah. braille distinction on right. the checkers. He he just remembers where they're at. Remembers where they're at. Well, I have another blind student that was a student at LSU University, and he ordered a special set of checkers which had a plus and a zero mm -hmm. engraved on the checkers, and there was one real problem with the checkers. 
they were both all white, both sides. <laughs> <laughs> so tough on the other guys. <laughs> so, 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 so in the order of special, they got white checkered. So if you look at the table, unless you look at it, unless you feel it, you really couldn't tell. Well, that, maybe that balances out the, the <laughs> yeah, yeah. vision uh, advantage and yeah. disadvantage. So the players. answer. The answer, yeah, there is cheating in every anywhere where there's money. Yeah, I don't care whether it's business or games or whatever. There's cheating, and by the way, people have been caught cheating online when there's no money, just for the glory of winning. People cheat. There are dishonest people out there, and uh, uh, fortunately, I and I can guarantee you that in backgammon there was a lot more cheating twenty and thirty years ago than there is now. Uh, cheaters have been exposed. It's too embarrassing to get caught. People were finally penalizing them well by banning. Well, and them. there's there's national and international federations right. now. That's right. Uh, which I mean, so we have a means to 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 ban people, and it's it's happened. So there's a lot less cheating. But yeah, we've got to watch for it. There was another cheating incident where a guy moved his opponent's checkers a little bit so he couldn't get hit uh, very quickly. There's things like that happen. Um, I I think it's important to know that you could be. That's why you got to watch. You got to watch when your opponent's moving. And something else I, I teach, you must watch your opponent bearing off and moving closely because even if you're playing your best friend and you know he's honest and he never cheats, I would say that 80% of mistakes are in your own favor. When somebody makes a mistake, they they they, yeah, and, and they move mean, a 5-4 when they roll a 4-3. They don't seem to make mistakes against themselves. It's just a matter of human nature. They're not really because they're cheaters. They're just... Yeah, we we see all they want we to misread see. dice, or we yeah we move, uh, you know, five mm -hmm. pips instead of four, or That's right. whatever it happens. Well, the game has changed. When I was started playing this game, we didn't play legal moves. So if you if your opponent made an illegal play, he could keep his mouth shut and get away with it. And if you made an illegal play that hurt him, you can keep your mouth shut. Now we play what's called legal moves. You have a responsibility to call out the right play if a wrong play has been made whether you're the one that made it or your opponent did, but you can still miss it. Uh, it. It can happen. It's an honest mistake. But that's one thing that doesn't happen when you play on the computer. You're not going to yeah. ever make no, an illegal no move. Illegal moves. There's no illegal moves. In these preliminary rounds. And I love well. playing on the computer. I mean, I have some people, Ed O'Loughlin has trouble seeing the dice. When Ed and I play, uh, we take out a computer if the tournament director will let us, and we'll play on the, we can take off the pip count if they think that's an advantage. But I'd rather play on a computer than play on a board or play on a, a, a well, and, iPad. And it, it's it's like anything else in life. I mean, people have their own preferences, you know. I'd much prefer to play on a live board, but that's just my own preference. And mm -hmm. okay, there's the Ollie Squared. So uh, looks like we're getting yeah have to wait close to another mm -hmm. match. So I sent you a copy of the analyzed files for. Uh, she sent you a copy. Did it change the PRs any? Uh, um, Dustin came down right. I think it was five point nine eight. Uh, Mochi was like one point eight. So Mochi stayed about the same, and Justin came down a little bit. Yeah. I want to look at those cube action things. Okay, we got coming up. We've got Oliver Squire. You can see him on your screen right now. 23 years old from Lytham St. Anne's, Lancashire, England. He studied math at Durham University, and he's still a student. He's in a break year right now. He won the Blackpool Imperial Cup in 2022 and the West Yorkshire Open. He's G3 at BMAB, and he's also a poker player. His hobby is running. He looks like he's in shape. His hero is Mochi. I like his analytic style, and he's very inspiring. He had some lessons with Grant Hoffman. Grant Hoffman used to be my student, and Grant is now one of our teachers from New Zealand. He's the top player in New Zealand. He also won the Australian Open a couple of times. But he took some lessons from Grant and helped him get going. Tim Cross has been very generous with his time and a great mentor who I talk to about anything. Quote, let your blunders excite you. They are great learning opportunities. Now, that is the That's right the attitude. attitude. That's the attitude you need. This kid is 23 years old, still in school. He's already a, a master. Uh, this guy, I mean, he's he's going to be somebody we're going to see in the future. Now, sitting down next to him um, is Ido Levi. Again, I know Ido because he is one of our BLC teachers. I did a video with him the other day of six problems. He got five out of six right. Uh, they were tough ones. Um, and 
just a terrific guy. He's from Israel. Uh, he lives in Kirat Motzkin, Israel. He has a degree in economics and accounting. He's a controller for a large company. Um, he got married a couple of years ago. His wife is pregnant. He climbed uh, with his wife to the top of Kilimanjaro and, and played backgammon at the top. <laughs> <laughs> um, he loves traveling the world. And um, hang tight to people who make you laugh. That's what his uh, most important thing in life is to laugh. And um, he believes that the way you learn this game is by playing money games, not matches. Matches are too complicated. Master money games, then master DMP, like Stick uh, Preaches, uh, quoting Oliver now, and then start to play matches and learn how to adjust after you've got the basics. But you get the basics from playing uh, money games. That's his advice. So that's my my insights that I have from these uh, questionnaires on these two guys, both young men, very interesting. Did I mention Ito's age? Let's see. Ito's 38. Boy, he looks a lot younger than that, except he's got gray hair. My hair turned gray one night a few years ago, but I have a different reason that it turned gray. Okay, so I'm waiting for the link to the match. Um So we can see the match. Hussein, where's Hussein? I don't have a set. Oh, I know he he can talk to me on on this. Ah, here it is. There you go. Okay, so I gotta take this and back it up. Back it up to match, and then put the number in. And um, five nine four two two six. Five nine four two two six in the we don't need Galaxy app. Okay, then I hit enter. Wow, I see it. Okay, Oliver is going to be at the top of the screen, and Ido will be at the bottom. Hussein, you can see in the picture, is setting it up. He's one of our tech assistants. Um, okay, so let's go. Okay. You should see our match starting very soon. <clears throat> and Oliver is at the top of your screen. Butsky is really Ido Levi at the bottom. And you can see we had a very, very fine start of a double, a double three very early for Oliver, which gives him a really big advantage in the game to start with. I think with double ones, you come up to the two point. Unless I missed some of the moves. But I, I don't want to be on the one point here. I want to be on my opponent's two point with double ones. Or would you split them and play for the five, perhaps? I don't want to split. I think you get attacked. Um, he, that's his problem, though. The other two ones, yeah, he made my okay, play. He made, he made my play. So he must not be that good. Uh, <laughs> well, okay. Did you say he was one of your students at one time? Uh, no, he wasn't. No, he wasn't. He wasn't. He's... <laughs> He still hadn't worked all no, the lessons out of his system. No, no. <laughs> I've had quite a few students in London and all over the world. That's one of the things I love about traveling. I get to meet the people that I've been teaching for years. We've had over 400 students, so everywhere I go, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see somebody. Okay, so Ido had to leave a shot somewhere. Yeah. I, uh, I, I'm, I'm thinking about doubling here. A six, well, a six won't lose your market. I don't think it's a double yet, and he didn't either, so he rolled. He's going to hit. Gonna hit and, and yep. Six, five. Yep. Well, I know he could have continued to dupe fours, fours to come in and fours to hit. And had he done that, he would have been hit <laughs> with the one four. But I, I might have thought about that a little longer as opposed to six five. That one idiom is uh, duplication is a way to maximize the uh, benefits joke. of your opponent's jokers. Yeah, that's a Neil Kazaroff's quote. The duplication <laughs> is a strategy that gives your opponent great jokers. <laughs> and I was. Uh, doing a match analysis with Matt cohen Geyer uh, a couple of weeks ago. We had a position. I said, why would you do here to duplicate? He says, is that a thing? I, I, that's not even a thing I think about. It's, you know, I count the total number of shots and the total problems. Uh, duplication sometimes is going to be wrong okay, completely. Now this is an interesting 6-3 for Mr. Squire. Yep, you can hit. You can come out and come down and leave him a six shot. I wouldn't do that. Uh, I think the hit might be the thing uh -huh. here. Or you could go across and come up. Wow, there's a lot of plays here. This is not an easy play. I don't blame him for taking time. I'm not. I'm not sure what's right. 
come up and uh, come up and come across from the 16. What else is there? Is there this, this is this, a, this a hit. and he's he's burning a minute on this one right here. And I would too. Match. I would, this is I, a tough fight. I don't know how to play it. He hits. The hit. Well, the good news about the hit is I think you got a double, double pass. Yeah, Ito you know, danced and now it's is uh, it double pass or yeah, it's double pass. It's not too good, I don't think, but I would I would double and I would pass. I think he's got to let it go. Yeah, I'm a firm believer in Wolsey's law. Kit is a genius. He's one of my people I took lessons from many years ago. Wolsey's law says you ask yourself if you were your opponent, what would you do? And if I was white here, I would ask myself if I were blue, what would I do? And if I, if the answer is you would pass, then it's clearly a double. And he did pass, clearly a double, unless you're too good to double. Okay, one zero for Oliver. Oliver. Okay, I didn't see any issues with any plays there or the cube action. Now, this is an interesting play. This is right to hit off the ace point with a 5-4 or a 5-2. It's usually wrong, but in this particular position, that's the play. I've spent a lot of time learning the, the opening roles and the responses because it, it just comes up so often that you really need to master that part of the game to be good. Okay, this is this a very is bad brutal, role. Brutal yeah, brutal role. role. Now, he may, he may be, he'll certainly ponder sending it. A lot of blots in play. Well, he put the checker where he well, wanted it to be. But I like that, it. That's yeah. the perfect roll, too. Yeah. Paul McGrill said, I listen to the checkers. They tell me where they want to be. But he really didn't hear him talking. <laughs> I miss Paul. We all miss Paul. He was, we miss Paul. We miss Falafel. Quite a few other people over the years. But those, those two in particular. And recently, my good friend Bob Glass passed away. You know, just recently. I want to reach out to all of my friends in L.A. and elsewhere that love Bob, too. Yeah. I guess that's what happens as you get older. You start losing friends. Okay. On the bar with two checkers. Are you too good? I mean, if if Ito doubles, he he, yeah. he could get into a back end, but you don't want to do that. It, at this score, I think it's right to double and pass. Uh, yeah. Winning an undoubled gammon at 0-0 zero, zero to 7 or 7 away, 7 away, the gammon's just not worth that much to have two points instead of one. So I, I like cashing there. There are some scores there where you might play on. Okay, I'm going to adjourn to the analyses. All right. Take a look at those two cube actions, please. <laughs> yeah, we got work to do. Okay. All right, Bill, thank you. You've been yeah, Come back you. anytime. Love having your, love having your help. Your chat line if you yeah. have it. Need. I need somebody intelligent to help me here. Okay, double twos. Oh, hit and cover. Love that. That's a joker. A joker is defined as anything that's really a super good roll, but there's probably more technical term for it and how much equity it gains you. Ah, Mete. Just a person. Okay. So what's going on here? I don't think there's any cube action here. Yeah. Oh, Oliver's on roll. Yeah. He's he's got a. I wasn't sure who was on roll because I missed it. I was talking to Mate. <clears throat> he's got both five points. You can never lose if you have both five points. Yeah, I wasn't sure about the cube. Uh, I invented it with the kid's permission to use the name. Reverse Woolsey's Law. And reverse Woolsey's Law is if you're not sure it's a double, then for sure it's a take. So that's how I would have known to take this because I wasn't positive that this was a double. So that's why I'm taking. I don't have to do any kind of fancy analysis. Now, how do you play double threes here? You make the bar or do you make the, do you make the uh, three point? If you make the bar, you leave a blot. I like making the bar here. I'm not sure. This is a tough one for me. Uh, you could bring three down and one in. That's another play. Three down and one in is certainly safer. He's got no inner board. <clears throat> yeah, I like the bar and he did too. So evidently, this is a this is a another play. I think you have to split here because you're being primed. Making the four point 
is nice, but it's a little impotent when the checkers, uh, your opponent has already escaped. I think there's got to be a split. He did. Okay, good. Oh, wow, there's a big roll. Double fives. Oh, my God. That's the dream roll. Uh, clearly, he was right to double here. <laughs> there's no question about that. <laughs> it's an all-out blitz, baby. 5-4 does not cover, but you want another builder. So I think you just bring it in. Well, you got to worry about double threes crashing if you don't split the back checkers, though. It's only one out of 36 is double threes, but it happens every time online, doesn't it? Don't we all believe that the, the, the online punishes you for whatever you do wrong? Okay. So that's the question. Do you come out or not? I don't know that I would have played my one that way, but I guess he's guarding against jokers like double twos. You're certainly going to hit, and and the end is the question. Do you bring a builder in to get covers? Do you come out to, again, protect against double threes? Double threes is your only disaster roll, and sometimes you really got to watch for that. Oh, my God. Oh. I've got some help here. Episcopate, Justin. You know? Justin, congratulations on, on winning their match against Mochi. That was great. Justin Noel is going to be joining me here in the stream. And uh, oh, I, Oliver's playing. I questioned your uh, your double uh, when you were down in the race that much when he was holding the four point. Was it right? No, of course it wasn't right. Oh, okay. <laughs> of course it was. But no. I said to myself, if I were Justin, I might gamble here too. You're playing Mochi, you might say, well, I'm probably not going to win the that PR was, anyway. That was my thought. And I go, I'm, I'm, I'm in a PR competition with Moji. With Moji. <laughs> I've been playing him all weekend, warming up for this. Uh -huh. There's no way I'm going to win this PR point. I need to win this match. I need to win this match. We looked over the match afterwards, and I had this trapping play with the 5 1 where I broke the seven point when he had a two point board. Uh -huh. And, uh, that I like the trapping play. Yeah, that was the best play. I liked it. We yeah. loved it. And that you got killed with this. But when you roll that three off the bar, that Ooh. was that was the Ooh. best. Okay. Ooh. So all right. Hey, that's one for me. I thought he was wrong to double there. But by the way, I've been wrong about Mochi. I thought he did have a double the game of Gam and you. So the big mistake I I made the was the uh the hit with the five two initiating contact when you're outboard. It is never really a good idea. And we might I mentioned that also it yeah. was just very unlucky to have some of those containment plays. In the very end, when I'm trying to figure out after I did get hit, how to control those last those two are, guys. Nobody in the world knows how to make those plays. Even I had Mochi; he found the best play. Well, <laughs> he, all right, let's watch this. Uh, yeah. Let's watch this match. But okay, but that's a great, great uh, summary. Thank you. In, in a short match, you know, if you make one or two big yeah. mistakes, you're going to have. Uh, well, why are you here? What happened in your second match? Oh, it ended in like two games. I, I won the win? PR, but I, I ended up losing the match. I see. Okay. Oh, okay. So this is this is a pretty simple situation here. Uh, I I was not sure about uh, you didn't see it, but I was not sure about Oliver's double here. Uh, I thought it was an easy take. So we'll find it. And it certainly turned out good. So we'll see what happens. So you're spending all of your time playing and teaching backgammon. That's it. Backgammon University. I love that name. I was the Backgammon Learning Center. I wish I had taken the university too, so you couldn't do it. Yeah, then I would have had to have been like Backgammon uh, School. <laughs> right. I would have, Phil would have had to have owned all of the uh, the names. Yeah, I wasn't selfish selfish enough to do it at the time, but I am now. Yeah. In hindsight, okay, let's get let's watch this match. The score is two away, six away. Now, lots of people get these things wrong. When your opponent is two away. Uh, you, people are afraid to double because if you win the game, they win the match. But what happens if they you don't double and they just win one point, and now it's one away, six away? You don't have much of a chance to win the match anyway. So there's two reasons you should double faster when your opponent is two away. One is that it doesn't hurt that much if you were wrong. Two, uh, you gain a lot by if you're right. But there's a third reason that I that you double faster when your opponent's two away. You're giving them a dead cube. Most of the time when you double, you have to worry about they're giving him power of the cube to redouble you, and there is no power when you're two away. So 
I, before every single game starts, I think about the score and the implications with both the cube and checker play. Now, I learned before this extreme gammon, uh, when Sly, Joe Sylvester was living with me, he taught me right away, when you're down in the score like this, you play gammon go. And he, he coined the term, he claims gammon go and gammon save. You play gammon go when you're way down. You try and play every game to try and win gammons when you're losing and you play gammon save if you're winning. So that's changed. That's why match play is so good here. Oliver should be playing this game completely as game and save. And, uh, and well, I think he's going to hit it all around. Yeah, <laughs> no, he's, gonna, he, he's certainly going to hit. He's, he's considering hit. making the anchor, but you can't let the guy hop out. And just no, make it why, right why would you not hit? You hit? Plus, you're hitting outside. You're blitzing. He could win the game without the cube by winning two points here. So, Oliver, the things have switched out. Now, now Oliver should be playing game and go. Yeah, as long as the cube isn't turned, he can still win a gammon. Right. And you haven't got much to lose. Now I switch. No, you just make it, yeah. Oh, make it. That's yeah. right. Well, that's a switch. That switches. At first I switch, then I make the other one. Switch from the seven to the, the, the four. <laughs> no, I switch from the five to the three and, and the seven to the five. Okay. So unless Ito gets very, very lucky and anchors very soon, this is going to be the match. Uh, probably. Don't you just bring a builder down? He did. Oh, there's the anchor. Now we got a game now. We got a game. Anchor. Now, when should when should Oliver double? When he's got gin. You don't double here. When you're two away and you give somebody a two cube, they're going to give you back the four cube in two seconds. So there's no way Oliver's going to double, plus the fact he might win the match without doubling by winning a game. Well, you bring two down. Yeah. Well, I don't, I don't know. There's nothing you can do. You have to yeah. play your numbers. You got to play two down. Well, you can, I'm not going to stack the eight more. What else can you no, do? You have to play two down. Yeah, he did. He played it. Double six. That's a bad roll. That could be some crashing situation. This is, uh, looks like a two point. What else can you do besides make the two point? Is there an alternative? He made the two point. Five one's good. He doesn't crash. I think he's got to, he's got to come out. I think you come out. You want to be hit outside, not inside. What do you do, Justin? Yeah, I had a situation like this yesterday. Or that was my play. Yeah, that was my play. Uh oh. And uh, uh oh. Ouch. Do you make? I think I make the four point. Four. Why? You just hit and make the five. Well, that makes a lot more sense. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, acted too quickly. There's no question. If you're gonna hit. You'd rather have two back than one back, and you'd rather have the five point than the four point. However, you you're leaving a body about the yeah. shots. No, but I mean, it's about the same number of shots, isn't it? To make the four point, it's all twos, oh, yeah, which are not get, duplicated. Those as well, yeah. Yeah, this this is pretty much a. Well, I I move ten nine okay. six five two and then decide on the last one. But the funny thing is, you could like lift as well if we wanted. That's to. right. That's, That's why I looked at the like, last uh, one. Only get the five six. Yeah. yeah. So it's a good lesson. When you're making a checker play, make the part you know you're going to do. You know you're playing 10-9 here. You know you're making the five-point, I think. So I don't know. A second ago, you were making the four-point, though. But that was my first gut reaction before I saw the hit outside. Okay. Oh, okay, good. He, he did it. Okay. And, uh, yikes, do we have anything here? Well, you lose your market if you hit any dances. But that... And I'm not even sure you lose your market. I guess you hit, yeah, if he hits and dances, is it, that's not that many market losers, though, because he comes in 27 times if you hit outside. 27 out of 36, 75% 70 of the time. So I don't think you have enough market losers here. Um, by market loser, we mean that on the next roll, the opponent would pass. So if the opponent's probably taking on the next roll, why would you give them the cube? But you get pretty desperate at the score of five to one. That's what he's thinking. He's right to think about it. Use the time on the clock. I would not double here. He didn't. Okay. Five, three. Ah. I don't see what else. And how many return shots are there if you hit off the bar? One, six. Three, four. Three, four. One, one, three. One, three. It. Double three. Double three's got you. Yeah. I still think you got to do it. He did. And here's 
a non-hitting roll, but a decent number. Oh, that's a that's that's not that good. <laughs> it makes the three and goes to the one point. It's not terrible. Yeah. And you run. He has to run. And yeah. Praying for double sixes. Well, here again, I move the six out and think. Oh, that's the thing. When you're playing on uh, on on Galaxy, you don't get to see anything that happens until they're both done. So well, you don't want to get five six. So maybe you just play five to three as well. Yeah. Yeah, and you're right. That's what he did. I see the logic of that. You don't leave him an outside shot. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, you just make the four and then make the seven. Yeah. I don't know. I might have made it one point, five to one. <laughs> Here you can get trapped. Yeah. Might not even be right to hit. Ah, what a thought. It's not always right to hit. I thought it was always right to hit. I thought so too. That's why I had that 200 <laughs> blunder last game. You know? <laughs> I was like, well. <laughs> so yeah, you could just not hit and play six to five. Yeah, the, the, the negative of hitting is that you could get trapped and crash. And you're also. Timing blue, your timing uh, uh, Oliver to. I'm sorry, your timing Ito to hold the, his points longer. I yeah, I think you're right. Maybe you're right not to hit here. This is interesting. I mean, the flip side is that if he does hit, obviously the gamins go up. Maybe some of his numbers crash as well when he enters. I don't hit. I think you you cash two, three, two, four. Like he ends up you know. ends up breaking his eight, but he, he could end up getting trapped as well. This is an interesting play. I'm not sure what's right. I wouldn't hit, but I'm not. I wouldn't bet on it. If I was in a chouette, I wait until Mochi makes the play, and I say, "Me too." My two favorite words in chouette play. He does. He hit. does hit. Interesting. Okay. Right, you win a gamut for the match that way. He needs a four. If he doesn't roll a four suit, he's going to be very sorry he made that play. Yeah, what's interesting is some of the numbers like crack the eight and stuff, but he, he definitely needs a four soon. I would not have hit. I'm sorry. That's that's what I would. I, in fact, I might bet on it. I, I'll bet you a dollar. Yeah, but I, I might have made your play, which is always a bad side to be on. <laughs> <laughs> So happy to have you here. <laughs> I love this guy. He, I, his commentary is great. I, we, we, when we play Shuad, he's fun. That's what backgammon is about. We got a lot of really fun people. Justin is one of my favorites. And I'm sure you're a brilliant teacher too. You got a lot of students and they people swear by you. I've heard very good things about you. Thank you. Uh, okay. One of them One of them messaged me and they said, remember when you said don't initiate contact uh, when you're outboarded? And uh -huh. I go, I go, shut up. <laughs> Oh, I love it when my, my, it my, students, <laughs> my students throw back at me what they teach. Okay, cube action. Cube action. Cube action. Ah, well, crashing. This, this, this. This is this was the threat of, yeah, of, uh, of, of it, hitting. But yeah. I'm, I, I mean, what are you? Oh wait, he, at this score, I'm doubling. I'm, I'm doubling. Oh yeah. yeah I don't okay. think you're, there's that many gammas, but I'd rather win. Already cube, no. Uh, didn't he? Oh, he's offered the cube, and you're, he's yeah. thinking about whether to take or not. The yeah. cube, he did a cube. You're right. He already offered. I missed cube. that. So I would have cube here too. Do you take? The gamins are very small. Yeah. It's the the by taking, if you win, you win the match. You don't really lose any gamins. May, well, no, your threes don't play well. You know what? I'm passing. I'll tell you why. Giving your opponent one point here is very little cost. You're. I think you lose seven percent equity in the match. Mm -hmm. And he took. So I would have passed. Oh, here's a reason to take. You got a slot. You, yeah, you yeah. you have a slot. And if the guy's gonna roll a four. It hurts you anyway. Two five. Ah, come out and keep and come out and keep coming out. Well, you you have to play the five. You have to hit out. Play out. You make the point. You make the point. And hope he doesn't roll a six. Yeah, that's the question. Whether or not you you keep the seven or you just make the five right now. Ah. It's not easy. I like that play. And of course, you roll the six. Didn't dance, which is a big help. Oh, two ones a bad roll. He's gonna have to stay back, not leave him a direct shot. It's only six ways to roll a seven. There's 17 ways to roll a six. Wow, it goes a miss. 
Okay. You can't check the uh, analysis on this thing after the match, right? We don't get the file from here. Uh, Tara is going to get it right there. Oh. And you can look at Tara's computer and you'll see everything. Looks like the Death Star, that thing. Dun, 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 dun. That computer is the biggest laptop I've ever seen. It's also the most powerful laptop you've ever seen. That's why Tara and, is, uh, and one of the reasons why they're so valuable to have in a tournament. Okay. Close the board. Split. Finish the game. That's it. Oh, double twos. That's it. It's Oliver. Is that a pun? It's Oliver? It's Oliver and it's Oliver. It's Oliver for Oliver. Very quick match again. That's two in a row. Our next streaming match. Let's talk about the next match. Who do we got coming up? Yeah, I got to go play it. You got to go play it. We're going to stream. Oh, Olsen and Mark Michi. Olson and Michi. That's oh, going to be exciting. That's two of the better players by far in this match. Let's see how they played. I did not like. Oh, okay. Ito played at seven, and Oliver played at two point four. What was the score when he hit? Five to five to two. Yeah. So where did the hit looks like? It where did Ito go long, go wrong in this match? Well, well, we'll see. You're going to get the match, and we'll we'll see. Are, was, are there thinking, any comments here that are I interesting? Think, I was thinking about the hit because because. He does have gammons with the hit, all right? So maybe his cube was wrong. You can press analysis right there, Phil. I didn't know I could do that. You didn't see that big giant button? No, I didn't. <laughs> so where are the blunders? This is 6-3. Um, was a, a blunder. Huh. I mean, 24, 18, 24, 21 seems like, uh, oh, it dupes the sixes. Okay. Well, they're not watching what we're talking about. So, the six, three. Okay. It's supposed to come out and down. I would have hit. I would have made the same error here. Let's go to the, let's go to the last game, though. That was the one where the cube action was interesting. And yeah, it was, it was uh, not a double, but not horrible. Um, let's see about the hit, though. The hit was right. Oh, it was? Yeah, the 5 1. Wait, what was the best double ones play here? 6 Where? to 5, 10 to 9. Oh, that was the best one. Okay, cool. But the cube was a little early. A smidge, but you're not really giving up much. Yeah, I like the cube. It wasn't yeah. bad. Only 3% error on that last match. But coming in on the ace was right, huh? Where is that play? The five uh, one, right there. Yeah. You click on checker. Where's this checker right here? And you'll see that any other play was like a, a, a pretty big mistake. So he was right to hit. Yeah, it's tough. Right. It almost a blunder not to. Yeah. And we weren't sure. I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure. I think yeah. it just five ninety nine. Get gamins over here. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's around that. It worked out. <laughs> In the long run, it worked if out. He, if he doesn't, what's the other for the wins? Okay. This other play wins a lot more, right? But because he can still get a gamut at the score with uh -huh. the cube in the center, it was right to hit. I see. If the cube had been turned and he was holding it already, it would have been incorrect to, to hit on the 24. That's a good insight. So gammons, the gammon is, is pretty big. You win the match without turning the cube. That's of course, at this score, I don't know the gammon value is still probably only about 0.5 or 6 because you're so far ahead in the match. I don't know, but if you win a gammon, you win the whole match. So, yeah. I mean, with the cube on one, it's got to be elevated, right? I don't think it's no, not, not if you're ahead by that much. But I mean, it, the efficiency from one to two, then it'll just get yeah. you, yeah. get you 100% there. So, I don't know. Uh, must have looked at the cheese there. That's good. I'm glad you you showed me this. I this I I thought I had to wait for Tara to do the final analysis. Yeah. So yeah. Oliver won two points there. He won the match and he won the uh, PR. 
gain an extra 7% gamma wounds. That's pretty good. Well played. All right. Back to my match. Good Thanks. luck. I'll see you later. Good luck. You're doing well. Your points wise is yeah. looking good. Yeah. See how it goes. I'll see you later. I, they restocked the I fridge full of water. I gotta, I gotta get one of these on the way down. Take two. They're free. All right. I'll see you guys later. Okay. Bye. Thanks for helping out. Yeah. Hey, come anytime. We're always welcome. Thanks. All right, we're waiting for the next match, which should start pretty soon. Mark Olson and Michi. I think everybody knows pretty much who these guys are. Michi, of course, has uh, been the number two giant, I think, since 2013. I think he just dropped to number three because uh, Sander took the on the giant list at uh, that spot. But everybody knows that Michi is still easily one of the top few players in the world. And, um, and he's from Osaka. And um, when I go to Japan, and I've been there several times, the first time I went with my son, Dan, he was kind enough to take us on a tour. We took the high-speed train and, and went to Kyoto and had some incredible sightseeing and meals there. And then we went to Hiroshima and uh, saw a lot of the country. And he was our tour guide, he's just a wonderful guy. And he's done that for several people. And when he comes to the United States, he and I often stay together in Vegas and other places where we become very good friends. And in recent years, he's written some great books. There's not only is the content great, but he's developed some terms and concepts and ideas like the double tiger is the most famous, I think, and the, the come off the mountain and the things like that. They, they're just really fun ways to remember um, how to make the right place. His books are excellent. And he's just a nice guy. Uh, as I, in fact, I haven't met anybody from Japan that wasn't. I mean, every one of them, I, every Kazuki, Hidaki, uh, I mean, the list goes on and on. They're just all real gentlemen and all really um, intense over the board. They're all tough competitors. So that's Michi Olsen. Mark Olsen was a professional soccer player. He's still a hell of an athlete and in great shape. Uh, he uh, is the head of Backgammon Galaxy, uh, which is sponsoring this event and playing on back gammon galaxy and his server has really taken home uh, uh, we licensed extreme gammon to back gammon galaxy so that people could see their analysis and when you play on back gammon galaxy it's just like the ubc you don't get any points or advance unless you win the match and win the pr so it's really rewarding people and having people think more about how they're playing not just goof around and see if you can just take a big chance and have some fun which is fine to do if you want to play that way, but you're going to lose the PR and you're not going to get any points on your rating system to advance. And uh, so there's also a money game section there. And there's also an app you can play on your iPhone, uh, which works very, very well. In fact, in some ways, I like the app on the iPhone is superior to playing on the computer because you can double click on a point to make the point. You can click on the bear off tray to move the checkers off. Uh, it has some features that are like XG has that the software doesn't have. But I want to tell you, Mark is a perfectionist and they're working on Galaxy to improve it. It's getting better and better. They've got new uh, platforms uh, uh, that they're working on and coming up with. And uh, they've really done a lot to promote the game. And if you're watching the stream, you are aware of the Backgammon Galaxy YouTube channel. And Mark has some excellent teaching videos. Mark's a great teacher. He's also written some fabulous books. Um, uh, what was that first one from Badass to, to Master or Badass to something or other? I loved it. It was just a great book and I've recommended it many times. So he's a great author, great player. And uh, I can't wait for this to watch that match. These matches have gone very, very quickly, which is fun because they're going to play a heck of a lot of matches. So stay tuned for Mark Olson and Michi. Uh, after that, we're going to be, oh, Zednik, Zednik Ziska and Tim Cross are going to be after that. That's another two great, great players that I can't wait to watch play. So we've got some great streaming coming up, and I'm going to take a little break and uh, rest my voice a little bit. Let's see. From, from badass to basics. Okay, thank you, Dimitri, for helping me. I'm looking at the comments now. Um,
Okay, somebody posted, such a shame to see a game like this. I don't think it's a shame at all. I think every game is interesting in its own way. And uh, I'm pretty famous for never, ever complaining about a role or a situation. Everybody gets jokered. Uh, and it, it, that's a luck factor. It just happens. Uh, it's happened to Mochi is it, as much as anybody else. Um, and uh, I guess maybe the shame, you're, you're sorry if somebody plays poorly. For Ito, I'm sure he's he's really unhappy with his PR. Here's a guy that often plays under three PR, and he played at six. So if that's what you're referring to, I agree. Uh, you want to see the players play well and play their best and not make Ido did make a few here, but here's what I like. The guy who played better won. I like to see that more often. <laughs> I mean, I feel I feel bad for the player who played better and lost. So that means the luck factor uh, is hurting. So <clears throat> round three coming up shortly, and we'll get that going. I have to check my phone from time to time to get the links for so I can watch the match. And to stream it properly. I had dinner last night with Michi. We did a little sightseeing of uh, walked around the city uh, some. And I've been here several times, of course. And then I can't say I know the city. It's too big. But I really, uh, the downtown area, the busy areas are really fun. I just love it. And everybody knows about the, the Grand Bazaar here. It's just unbelievable. You can spend two days and not see everything inside that shopping mall. It's more like a huge flea market. I've always been required to bring home some purses for my boyfriends. Oh, I mean, the ladies in my family. Do we know uh, what the records are for Michi and and, uh, and Mark Olson so far? Can we? Catching up. Uh, if we knew their records and points, that would help. But I got to figure out a way to get that information while we're playing. But at this point, it doesn't matter. They want as many points as they as they can. I see Ryan Robello is on the screen. Ryan, we miss you. You won the U.S. Uh, and you're one of the top players in the world. We wanted you here. I'm sorry you can't make it. I made a suggestion earlier. I don't know if you missed it, but I think you should drop out of school and uh, play just play backgammon. Because uh, that's you're so good, and I really enjoy your company. I love uh, doing commentary with you. I wish you were here in Istanbul right now. See other people who are watching. That Dimitri could certainly uh, be a real contender in, in this event if he would just not waste his time working and uh, just play more backgammon. Looking for other names I recognize on the. Uh, on the commentary. Okay, we should be starting shortly. I think we're starting to catch up at time wise too, and these these uh, matches are going quickly. We're doing good. We will take a four hour break after round six. Is that right, or is it after round five? After round four. After round four, we'll have a couple hour break for people to go and eat. It's a couple of fun restaurants right down the street. We've been there. It's a huge restaurant right near the wow hotel of course there's restaurants in the hotel too that where they stream all these soccer matches or I, I guess they call them football here and the other night we were watching uh mate and i went and had uh we had dinner and watched two local teams play you would have thought it was the world cup the way the people were so excited i mean they go back back and forth and back and forth and they don't even score and everybody loves it so i guess i have to learn more about soccer to enjoy it more but Jasper Waterer, my old buddy, is online watching. Nice. Hi, Jasper. How are you? Good to see you.
All right, we're waiting for the link to the next match so we can watch that and get it going. So why am I seeing uh, Sednik and Cross? I don't think they're the next match. It's going to be Olsen. Yeah, Mark Olson and Michi are next, and then we're going to have Zednik, uh, Ziska, and uh, Tim Cross after that. That's another fantastic matchup. Okay, round three and four, et cetera. Okay. <clears throat> uh, Steve Holman asked, is there a results sheet somewhere? The answer is yes. And I'm getting that information uh, and I'll give you the, uh, I'll give you that information when I get it. Can I type on the stream? Yeah. Would, would one of you do that for me and I'll give you what I want you to type in there? I have the, where they can get the standards. So let's see if I can figure out how to do this. Yeah, I want, to, I want people to see where to go for the standings. And that's what I want to put in there. Okay, the only thing is it may not allow you to type a link in, but it is for standing. Mm C C slash U D C standards. Okay, we posted where the standings are. We had to write in the words slash and uh, dot. and dot because they won't accept a link, right. an actual link. So use your imagination. You can get the standings there. I don't know if it's been updated yet. We've already put that on. They're working on it though. So do we have a PR adjustment from the last match? Is it very different from what was posted? I don't know. We oh. try. Okay. Catch up. We're working on round one. Oh, you're still working on round one. Oh, because you got a, you got all the other matches, not just the streaming matches. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but all I care about is me. I know. I know that. Yeah. Okay, we're working on updating the standard standings for everybody so you can go online and see it. Um, but right now I'm not standing at all, I'm sitting. <laughs> How's that for? There are three kinds of people in this world, those who like puns and those who don't. I love puns and play as on words and myself. Which reminds me, we were at the uh, Chicago, we're playing uh, uh, Shuette, Phyllis Malinsky, who's passed away, dear friend of ours, was in the Shuette. And we're doing the pip count. And we're, so we got, everybody was coming up with three or four different pip counts. And I said, well, 
there's three kinds of people in this world, those who can count and those who can't. And Phyllis said, yeah, and I'm one of them. <laughs> I thought that was a classic comment. <clears throat> So we'll have a link to the standings. Uh, if you look up, you'll see that um, uh, where it says Ace Point Backgammon. Uh, that was uh, that's us, <clears throat> and um, you'll see the link there. Uh, Tiny dot cc slash ubc underline standings. But it hasn't really been updated yet because we're working on it. And we're waiting for the next match, which will be a good one, Mark Olson. And Nietzsche. Boy, that's a good picture of both of them. Was that photoshopped? I don't think either of them are that good looking in person. I should be starting the next match soon, Nietzsche and Mark. I have one problem with Michi. When we room together, he likes to sleep at 80 degrees. I like to sleep at 65 degrees. Yeah. So when we stay someplace, we have to have separate rooms with separate air conditioning and heating. He really does like it 80 degrees. I just think it's intolerable. I can't stand that. You know, I commute to New York a lot. I'm there often. <clears throat> and quite often, Michi and, and or Mochi will meet me there. And of course, Victor lives there. Uh, Victor's also in Greece. Uh, and I get to spend time with Chris Trencher and uh, Alan Grunwald, a lot of great friends in New York, Antoinette. And we have all kinds of shoeette and all kinds of action there. It's really fun. Uh, <laughs> Frank DiMaggio joined us for a shoe at last week. Uh, and after Istanbul, on May 1st, I go back to New York for about eight, nine, 10 days. I've got some lessons and some lectures, but I'm really proud of one lecture. I, I lecture at a lot of private clubs. I'm not allowed to post anything on social media or talk about specifically the clubs. They want to keep it private. <laughs> but one club I have coming up, I'm doing a lecture with 32 kids, ages six through 16. Uh, and it, it's exciting that they're getting their kids into the game because I don't think there's a better game for kids than backgammon. And it teaches them about math and statistics and odds. I can't wait to do that lecture. And I'm trying to figure out how to handle this 32 kids. I'm going to get some help and split them up by age. I think I'm going to basically, to begin with, unless they're already knowledgeable about backgammon, a few of them are, I'm going to teach them how to play hypergammon. That's my favorite way to teach kids about how you move the checkers, how you can make points, how you can hit how you bear off. It's uh, hypergammons. You start with three checkers on your opponent's uh, one point. So on your 24 point, you have three checkers and he has three checkers. And then you play normal backgammon. I think that's one of my favorite ways to start with kids. With young kids, I play just bearing off. I just start them with all 15 checkers uh, close to the inner board, not all born in. And you just have a race and teach them how to move the checkers, how doubles work and so on. But eventually, uh, you teach them the real backgammon game to get into that so they can play with their family and their friends. And I'm very proud to say I have several students right now. I'd say four students that are under 16 years old and two or three of them are playing pretty close to six PR uh, and they're really strong open players. So um, I'm very happy to work with kids. It's really my favorite thing. And I even give them a discount. I charge them about a dollar less than I would charge adults. I'm a nice guy. Dimitri, how do you prime in hypergamma? Well, you can block with, with a point, but priming is a little tough. But I challenge really good players to play hypergamma. I wonder if you could, I guess you could put hypergamma into XG 
and get a rating on your PR. I XG, I wonder how well XG plays hypergammon. I really don't know. One of the reasons I like variations is they're so different and you can't rely on XG. That's why I play Pasco Gammon and Bazooki. Those are actually my two favorite variations. My very favorite variation, which I play consistently with Akiko when we get together, is Pineapple Bluff Gammon with three dice and it's a way you can bluff on the cube. And uh, I'm playing with, Akiko happens to be a great poker player. She won the Japan championship and uh, she beats the pants off of me, but it's fun and it's worth it just to spend time with, with her. Okay, should be starting soon. It is a beautiful day in Istanbul. It's tennis weather. It's in the mid 60s, very sunny, very low humidity. I'm used to very high humidity where I live in Florida near Palm Beach. You can see the playing room, everybody's pretty much between matches. <clears throat> I did see an odd sheet on this, and Mochi, of course, is the big, big favorite to win. Uh, and he is dying to win. He really wants to win back his title from Sander. But not that far behind him are Zenik and Michi and Mark Olson in particular. And oh Dirk and Dirk, they're they're not they're not uh, I wouldn't call them long shots at all. Everyone else would be a long shot. And uh I don't know. It'll be fun to see after the first after the first day, what the standings are and how close it is. Just because you're better at PR though, even if you win every PR match and you get some bad luck in the match, as you saw in the first match with Mochi. You can certainly lose. <coughs> I'm going to relax a little, save my voice a little. <clears throat> Mute the mic when you're not on. Let's see how I do that. Tar, how do I mute my mic? Oh, here. I found it.
Okay, we're getting ready to get started. I see Mark Olson and Michi have sat down at their respective computers. Um, Looks like Michi's going to be at the top and uh, Mark at the bottom. They've started, but I can't see the match except the lathe. So I got to get that link. All right, we're underway. Michi is at the top, Mark's at the bottom, and uh, I missed the beginning, but uh, certainly you like Michi's position here. He's blitzing, uh, and very strong blitz it is. 2-1 is not a particularly good role. He would like to stop Mark from anchoring, and he did. Mark stopped himself from anchoring. Obviously, he wants to just stop him from, oh, there's the anchor, the ace point anchor. You're still too good to double, though. And uh, he's got nothing to lose by playing on and hoping he gets a gammon. There's a lot of gammons here. So, oh my gosh, this is one of the double ones. Is that the only cracking number? What else could possibly crack here? Oh my goodness. That's, that's funny how that happens. That only happens online, by the way. That never happens live, right, guys? Comes in, hits. That's not going to help. But all that uh, all that Mark cares about is how do I save a gammon here? And, and how do I keep playing well? See, you want you worry about your PR all the time. How do you play a 5-3 here? I guess you just don't leave shots. Getting hit is not fun here. You can with three checkers back, you can still get off this gammon by running. Close board, three checkers back, and all your checkers inside, that's about 35% gammons. 15% with two checkers on the ace and 35% with three checkers. If he doesn't get hit again. Oh, he goes for the play. He knows there's some cracking numbers here. You make the five point come down. Yep. And here's a cracking number. He's right. He went for the cracking numbers and it paid off. He's going he's gonna to point on him. And now if he can make the bar, and if Michi doesn't roll a six, he's got to play in this game. Well, he's got to make the three. <clears throat> Mark did not give up fighting. Hearing you a little too much. That was the message I got. Okay. Mark's really fought back in this game. That looked like a sure game, and he may he has some play here. Oh, do you come out? I do. Sixes aren't don't grow on trees, as they say. It's risky though. Wow, this is a good one. Do you come out or do you? Come around. <clears throat> are you going for the win or are you going to not get gammon? Gammon's value of the score is about 0.5. If it was higher, then you wouldn't take the chance of coming out at all. But at this score, you might. I think you come out. I don't know. 
if Mark's not sure, I shouldn't be. I, I am not sure. <clears throat> Come out and bring the three around. Hope he doesn't roll a one or a two. And now you're right in this game. Might be Recube City. I didn't see where the cube happened. That was before I got on. It happened before me. Hmm. Well, I'm maybe too much of a gambler, but I would come out and around and hope he doesn't roll a one or a two. But almost every one or two is going to hit. One six, the two five hit, and then the small combinations that hit the checker on the 24 becomes out the 24. So he did make the safer play. Ed got a crack anyway. Is this a recube? I think so. I asked myself, is, is Michi taking this cube? Can you think he might be too good? If, if you think the guy's going to pass, <clears throat> fives hit a second checker with all kinds of pointing numbers. He redoubles. I think he's cashing here. I don't think Michi could take this cube. I wouldn't. But I was wrong once before. I'm hearing that you want me to be louder. Most people tell me to shut up. And now you're saying I should be louder. I'll, I'll move the computer a little closer because I'm using the computer's microphone. How's that? Any better on the sound? Look like a double pass to me. If Michi's thinking about it, maybe it's not so clear. This guy doesn't uh, make too many mistakes. I think he's... His PR is almost always second to Mochi, and it's very close. Although we've got people like Hideaki and Kazuki and Wilcox and Victor fighting for that PR prize. Oh, Sam, I can't forget Sander. He's right there. <clears throat> so many really great players now. I think it's a real feather in Mochi's hat be able to stay the number one giant all these years is he he's demonstrated his by his skill by his wins and the giant voting as you know is not strictly how you play all mochi look all mochi has done for the game to promote the game and set an incredible example for ethics he took wow he took I got to look at that one. That's going to be exciting. He has to hit loose. Oh, that's a great roll. A great roll for Michi. I would take if I knew I was going to roll double ones here, but he's still not home free by a long shot. Coming in is good. Very, very good. Come in and hit. Come in with a one and hit with a six. He's thinking about coming in with a six, and yep, he made my play. They can't hear me. I'm on the 14th floor. <clears throat> They're down in the playing room on the lobby level. So I know I can't take credit for when they make my plays. Not that they would listen to me anyway. Great roll for Michi. Then a dance. Now a six. This is monstrous. Nope, he didn't roll it. He didn't crack, though. Dance. Now a six. This is big for Michi. Nope, he cracks more. I would have passed that cube. Going to hit loose. It's automatic to make this play. Going to cover with a five. He rolls it. No. Comes in again. This is pretty much forced. More cracking. That's not good for Michi. <clears throat> Mark would love an 11 here to hit loose and keep his prime. <clears throat> He's not happy about a 2-1, <clears throat> but you flood the outfield in case he comes out. And he did, and that was a good play. Now he's got a double shot, which he missed. Wow, this is big. This is very big. Do you come out with a 6 and make the 13? What do you do here? Wow. And then how do you take the recue? If Michi, no matter what he plays, does Michi have a recube to eight? Wow, this is exciting. 
Michi doesn't have very many rolls to bring it home free. If he rolls a seven and he hits, if he rolls less than seven, he leaves it direct. And if he rolls higher than seven, unless he rolls an 11 or 12, so Mark's going to get another shot. What? Wow, this is a great cube question here. I. This is over my pay scale. What are your thoughts? Put it in the chat. Do you do you double? Do you take or pass? What's the cube action here, guys? Wow. I wish I knew this one. You're cubing to eight for the match. All Michi is thinking about, and I can promise you, is what PR play here. Because this could be a huge blunder if <laughs> one way or the other. This might not be small. This could be a monster blunder to double or not double. And then Mark. I know what I'm doing over the board. I off, I would double this <clears throat> because there's that saying that there's no chance for your opponent to make a mistake unless you give him the cube. So I would double and hope Mark makes a mistake. He did not double. He left the shot and got hit. Okay. I would have doubled for money there too in a money game. Ryan Rebella said, easy take. I agree with that. That's why I wasn't sure about the double. I agree with the take. I wasn't sure about the cube. <clears throat> Slot the back of the prime is thematic. Even though you might get hit with a 2-6, when you don't, the reward is huge. You make a 6 prime and you can really bring it home. Now, the whole goal for Mark is to try and get a second checker. And there was his chance. He missed it, but he, he may have more chances. He's going to hit loose if he can. And it does for the back. There he goes. That's what he wanted. He wants to roll a one. No. Michi wants to cover. He does. That's big for Michi. That tremendously reduced. Now I just closed the board. Your chances of getting another shot here are very, very poor. He just nothing wrong with winning four points and winning three away, seven away. <clears throat> I would not bet against the take, but I would not have taken that cube if I was Michi. I can't wait to see that next G. Did anybody run that with Michi? Anybody tell me what the, if it was a take on the initial, on the, on the four cube? Casper Magic Tech. I would have rolled like Michi, right? We all think we would have rolled like Michi. He had a he had a monster chance to win that game. Big swing, big, big swing when you got a four point, when you got a four cube. <clears throat> Somebody said that uh, Mark's rig cube was too good and a take. Wow. I don't see how that's possible. I thought it had to be either a pass. Usually that too good take that happens when the scores are not even. Or if you wipe out gammons a lot, I guess that's that could happen. Yeah. It's possible to be too good at a take. I'm shocked that it was a take. Well, I'm through being shocked. <laughs> Okay, Mark's got a comfortable lead. Three away, seven away. And in backgammon, we care about the away score, not how many points you scored. It's how many points you need that really matters. And again, taking Joe Sylvester's advice, if I'm Mark, I'm playing gammon save. Right from the beginning, I'm playing not to get gammon, try to make a And if I am Michi down four nothing, I play more like gammon go. And at the time I learned this, we didn't have extreme gammon. They had Snowy, and Snowy disagreed with Joe Sylvester and that uh, playing gammon, go and gammon, save at these scores. And then when extreme gammon came out, extreme gammon agreed, proving Joe was way ahead of his time. <clears throat> There's a hit on the outfield. I'm sure he sees it. I don't think that's a problem. And he did make the hit. Anchor and down. <clears throat> ha. Do you come out and make the uh, 14? I mean, the 
the 11. I think that's my play. I like, I don't see another good six. So you come out and make the 11. Is there another play that I'm missing? I, mean, I guess there was. He didn't make it. He just continued to minimize shots. Okay. The problem with getting hit off the bar, you get a lot of return shots, but when you don't, your opponent can make the bar. That's the point he wants. Double hit. <clears throat> hmm. There's an interesting one. I think part of this play is play 14 to 13. Making your opponent's five point is very big. Making the bar wasn't that valuable here. A lot of people would play eight seven, but when your opponent split the eight points, almost as good as the seven point anyway. This may be a double hit. I may hit loose off the ace and make the three point and double hit. In the old days, we would never make the ace point. Everybody laughed at you when you made the ace point. And he didn't make the ace point. Okay. I would have hit loose or made the ace point, but I'm sure this looks better as I see it now. <clears throat> Sorry if I don't see your comments. I can't watch the game and the comments. I usually, if I had somebody else sitting with me, I could keep up with the comments better. Okay, double five. Huh. Make the three point. Come out. Hmm. This is not an easy play for me either. Make the three point and hit. I think I make the three point and hit. I think I played, and he did. He made my play. Must have been wrong if he made my play. Now, is there a cube action? A little too, with the four checkers back <clears throat> and winning four nothing, you're going to be more conservative with the score. I think if the score was reversed, that might have been a cube. And now he's going for the blitz and the win, two up. It'd be too good to double. If you did double, Nietzsche would probably pass here. I don't know. Four checkers back, he might, no, he would take. He would take and, uh, have a huge efficient recube. So that's why you didn't double. At this score, you want to be closer to gin before you double. Or closer to vodka if you do double. Cover and uh, are you splitting eight seven or are you splitting twenty four twenty three? I think I split eight seven. I'm in full blitz mode. <clears throat> if he comes in on the two or four, I want maximum coverage. What are you worried about? Double fives? No, I I I think you play eight to one here. He did okay. He agreed. Now you got to hit him. With ones, threes, and fours, it's 27 numbers. About six pointing numbers, <clears throat> plus some sh the shifting. You hit them loose. <clears throat> and now I split 20 to 18. First hit them loose, and then. I, you see, they they don't show on back M and Galaxy your partial moves. They show only after you've made it all. All right, getting hit back was a that was big for Michi, and not getting hit here. Michi can roll, can come in. That's great. He's going to come in and come out, minimize sh shots. Mark's going to make the four. He could make the twenty one, but you should be on offense here. I would think make the four point. He's thinking about it. Do you make the 21 or the four? What, what do you do? I make the four. <clears throat> I'd love to have a five-point board here. 
he made the 21. That was on my list, but it was second on my list. So I'm interested in seeing that. What do you guys think on the chat? Would you make the 21 or the four point there? I'd love to see whatever other opinions. Huh. Okay. Ah, self-correcting. If he made the wrong play, he got the chance again. I would have made the four. Okay. This is a big turn of events for Michi. He got uh, he was getting slaughtered, probably gammoned, and uh, got lucky and hit and came in. You're just going to run here. That's all you can do. Double fours. Is that hit? No. No. He has to come out with three and then leave a shot. He comes out with two. You don't want to leave that 05 point open for him to give you nine pointy numbers on the five point. I think you come out with three and leave a double shot. That's the problem, too. Is you're either coming out with two or you're coming out with three. I would come out with three, but that's another question I'd like to see the answer. That's That was my play, come out with three. He does get punished for making my play. He can either hit or make the five point. I think you have to hit. You can't leave those blots. You have to hit. And he did. Coming in is good. You just come in and out. Hope he doesn't roll a three. There's no cube action. It shouldn't be any cube action yet. Six, four, you just bring home safely. So the problem for Mark is he's way down in the race now. The problem for Michi is he had to be careful not to leave a shot. So one is racing and one's playing for a, playing what we call an anchor game. He's anchored on his opponent's four point, 21 point anchor game. Um, and Michi doubles. I think that's largely because of the score. Uh, easy take. I wasn't quite sure of the double. Double fives, 20 pips, gets him close. It's interesting. Takes, he's down by six pips, but when you're when you're holding the cube, of course the cube, three cube big isn't huge here when you're holding a two cube at three away. He chose not to run down six pips. He still has has him out board and playing for the shot. Casper says you must double for the PR. Hmm, I wasn't sure about the double. <clears throat> See, people get mad when your opponents roll doubles. This is not necessarily a good roll for Mark. He gives up his, a lot of chances of hitting shots. He's still down in the race. So double threes, if you look at dice distribution, which is a really great tool in extreme gaming, you'll see that was not a great roll. I think he breaks the five point now and just covers the two. And he does. Uh, Michi's up enough in the race where he might have played them all to the Eight point. Uh, I would have taken a little more time on that and thought about all f moving all of it to the eight point. Mark's only got one play here. Run with both. I can't see how you leave one. Give him twenty numbers to hit. You're way you're up in the match. You don't want to get gammon. He's got to go with both. Oh, it's White's roll. I'm sorry. I got I had Mark six four. So what's the problem here? Uh oh. That's not what he wanted. He didn't want to roll a 5-1 or 6-1, but he didn't get hit. Okay, simple win. Simple game for Michi. He's going to win two points. <clears throat> One thing about when you're playing with PR, you never give up on any play. You always are looking for what is going to be the right play. Even if it increases your winning chances from 1% to 1.5%, you want to make the right play. But that's the way these guys play anyway. 
you're not a great player. They didn't get to be great players by being sloppy. <clears throat> All right. Five away, three away, we got a match. Again, I still play game and go and game and save at the winning and losing scores here. Makes a point. Makes a point. Can I hit? Can I make a point? Can I play strategically? And that order is... Some people make the five point in situations like that and hope your opponent doesn't roll a six. That's the big play. And uh, it's often right. And he did it. Because then nothing else is really strongly productive, even though it's risky. Here there were only 11 sixes plus, uh, plus five, one, and two, four. That's 15 numbers. Wow. Not sure I would have done that, but it's probably right. By the way, I want to mention Mark's also, I mentioned earlier, Mark wrote some great books, but these are two two of the better authors, modern authors of, uh, of our time playing each other. Huh. Well, you can't hit, you certainly make the bar and come up. And you run like a bunny. Run, run like a bunny rabbit, get out of there. You continue or do you hit? I think when you're outboarded, you don't hit. And that's the case. That's a great roll to hit. And now Mark is in the catbird seat in this game. Winning four to two makes it a little bit harder to cube. But he does anyway. And uh, I think it's good cube because if I'm Michi, I ask myself, am I sure whether I take or not? And I don't think you can be too sure here. And it's a pass, and that was a great double. Now, two away, five away. <clears throat> this is an anomaly. Most people don't realize Mark's take point is actually very low here. It's 17% as his live take point. It's lower than any other two away score because he really doesn't hurt him that much to lose two points as opposed to losing one point. The equity for the trailer is not that much different. I think it's 7%. So you'd think when you're losing two away, five away, you double pretty fast because most of the time you double faster when you're down, but not at this particular score unless there's gamins. So Michi should not be as fast on the cube as you would think. And Mark would take deeper unless there's gamins. In a race, he would take it 17%. So knowing these, that's why match play is more interesting and complicated than money games or DMP. I slot, and he did. Listen to the checkers. They tell you where they want to be. They wanted to be on the five point. They didn't want to just keep stacking. And then, of course, you cover with a 4-2. You don't cover, though. But there's two blots sitting there. How do you play this? How do you play this role? I'm not sure. I'm really not sure. Two down and eight to four. I, I don't throw a checker to the ace here. Not with those two. Oh, wow. Wow. Made the really big play and it worked. I was on my list, but I, was, I wasn't getting, I was getting there. The two is easy. The five isn't easy. Go to the ace. Okay. I guess they had to do that. <clears throat> Mark is going to be slow to double when you're two away. So your opponent takes, he flips it right back at four real quick. So Mark's not going to be doubling here very quickly. Oh, hit and cover. Great roll. I still not a double at this score. Bring a checker in. In is good. 
Ah, we got a game here. Kick and pass, come down. Those are the only two options. I guess you could come in without hitting, but I think it's pick and pass or come down. And I would tend to pick and pass here, I think. But great players like Mark don't like throwing checkers away, but he did. He made my play. Okay. In and out is automatic. You don't want to keep that in. And six is, you're not slotting your bar. You're not going to go to the two point. <clears throat> so it's not automatic because he's taking time to think about it. I'm missing something here. I would come in and out so fast. It would make your head spin. And he did. Okay. <clears throat> I think you keep your midpoint. Bring him in. He does. Makes a good point. 14 point. I'm mean, sorry, 11 point. Ah, not a great roll. He's just got to dump checkers because Michi's got to move. He's got, he's, he's, he's all stripped. You just clear safely. You clear your 11 point. You run. It's a close enough race where nobody's going to do anything right now. Three pips. <clears throat> I cover because he has to come out with a six. And he did. <clears throat> Been a little wastage and cracking here now for Mark. Make the ace. Make the ace and pray he has to come out. <clears throat> yep, you won the prayer. The prayer answered. Came out, but you didn't want him to come out that way. <laughs> <clears throat> that's the problem when you pray. Sometimes your prayers are answered. What's that saying? Be careful what you ask for. I was hoping you would come out if I was Michi, but came out the wrong way. And it's a double and a pass. Can't possibly win enough of games there in that race. One away, uh, five away, Crawford. Does it matter if there's a gammon? The answer here is yes. If Michi can win two points and get to three away, Oh, I'm sorry. It doesn't matter that much. It only loses the free drop. You get, uh, so really, gammas don't matter too much at the score either way. So you play DMP. <clears throat> I stop before the every game and think about that, especially Crawford and post Crawford. At any score, it's important to think about gammas. Do they matter? How much? Take points. What's for dinner? I think about all this thing between games. Hit and cover. My favorite words. Hmm. They make the four or the nine. I mean the eight. Make the eight. Make the 21. Why wouldn't you make the 21? Because you don't want to leave that shot out there. You know how to crack with double fours? Huh. No, he made the 21. That was my instinct right away. <clears throat> Gotta like Mark's chances here. Michi's dancing, dancing, dancing. Do you make the three or do you run? If you make the three, you're leaving a two six only. And if you had run, you could you could have switched and hit. So I like that play. Double fives. You're, you're certainly going to make the two point and come out. This is important for Michi to come in right away. That was a big roll. Gives him a chance to stay alive. I guess you just bring the three in. Oh, he slots with the three. Oh, what a roll. Making the prime. Two, one. That was the only roll that they bat and double ones were the only rolls that make the prime there. That was something. Looks like Mark's going to bring this game home. The only question is PR now. Who had the better PR? And I really didn't like one of that take of Michi's. I really, really didn't like it. And that means I'm really wrong if Michi did it. But that's what I, if I had a bet right now, I would bet on Mark on the PR because of that one cube. I didn't like it. We'll see. See if I'm right and very, very soon. Of course, I'm assuming Mark's going to win this game, and he's a big favorite to do it. But and he's six right here, the wrong six. 
Okay. I've never lost this game before. Yeah, yeah, right. A dozen times. At this score, he doesn't care about gamma, so he he he's just all he's is worried about clearing safely. If you cared about gammas, you wouldn't have not have made that play. So you play differently. That's why you have to be very aware of the score. Just come off the five and come off the four so they can keep it even, so that doubles don't hurt you. And that's what he did. So bearing off is just not an automatic thing here. Now it's going to be automatic. Now it's going to be the match. Mark and Michi are good friends. All the good players. I don't th I don't see any bad blood between all these top players. I, they're really all, we all go to dinner together. Several of them went out last night. And uh, that's what I love about the game. In the old days, there used to be some bad blood. And I think there's a reason for that. Some of the top players weren't, so, they weren't that nice. These guys are all really great guys. They're nice people. It's an honor to be here and be with these people and an honor to be doing the commentary. Hope you're enjoying watching these matches in spite of my commentary. Okay, I'm really dying to see the PR. I'm betting on Mark. Let's see if I'm right. We'll know in a couple of seconds. Who played better? And the tentative answer is Mark played 1.88. Michi played 2.88. Wow. This was a master match, and I must be wrong about Michi's stake. If it was wrong, it couldn't be wrong by much when you play it under three PR. But congratulations to two amazing authors, players, promoters of the game. I think my vote every every year they vote for who the major best promoter of the game is. I'm very proud that I won it one year from the UK BG Monte Carlo last year. I was there last year. And by the way, I'll be doing commentary. I'll be lead commentary with co-lead commentary at Monte Carlo this year. Uh, with my good buddy uh, Nick Blazier, my he was what he was my student for a few years, and then he moved on to take lessons from Mark, and he's become a great player and a great commentator. So we're going to be doing the commentary at Monte Carlo. I'll be there, not playing and just doing the commentary. But Mark Olson. Twice as good, like getting a free lesson. Thank you, Garth. My pleasure. I don't like giving free lessons, but uh, I'm having fun. It's actually not free. I'm getting paid for this. <laughs> okay, coming up next. Uh, let me look at my list. Our next match. Oh, yes. Zednik and uh, Tim Cross. Uh, <clears throat> I think they're both very, very well known. They're, they're certainly both contenders that could win this tournament. Zednik was a finalist in Monte Carlo. Uh, he had an incredible uh, match with uh, uh, Wilcox Snelling and uh, Sander. And the, oh, he's just really a, a terrific kid. He's a protege of Falafel. They were very, very good friends. Falafel really took him under his wing and, and really helped him become the, uh, the great player that he is. Um, really exciting uh, to see. See, he's written books. He's very proud of what he's doing with uh, back end and teaching. Um, <clears throat> I'm looking at my notes real quick about Zednik. Most people know mo a lot about him, but I wanted to make sure I got it from him. 24 years old <clears throat> from Prague, Czech Republic. He's got a bachelor's degree. He's finished college. He's a finest in Monte Carlo. He plays, he plays many sports. His favorite tip, don't describe the position, how it looks. Think about the future. This reminds me of a quote Wayne Gretzky used to say, I skate to where the puck's going to be. So think about the future is, is his old approach. And that, that's certainly something McGrill taught too in his MCV, Most Common Variation. What's likely to happen is how he made his decisions and Zednik has, has written a book, a very good book, and, and works on that same thing. Uh, quote, I would like to show the backgammon community the right and modern way of thinking through my project, Backgammon Coaching. I share a video course where any backgammon player can get knowledge to learn and understand all the ideas in order to become a world-class player. Uh, that's baloney. 
Uh, not anybody can become a world-class player. I'm living proof of that. I'm a pretty good player. But uh, well, my definition of world-class is I'm not there. And I've been working, studying the game for, for seriously for 30, 40 years. So I don't think anybody can do it. you got to be smarter than me. Maybe that's the, maybe that's the goal. Uh, maybe I spent too much time working on my teaching and other things instead of studying, and I know that's the case. So that's my excuse. Okay, Tim Cross from the United Kingdom, a real gentleman uh, of the game, highly respected. In fact, several of the people from England have told me that Tim is their hero and mentor. <clears throat> He's 63 years old from Lancaster, England. Lancashire, England, I'm sorry. He's won many, many tournaments, including... Uh, in UK in the Irish Open, the UK Open, the Irish Open. He's a BMA Grandmaster, UK backgammon captain, 2015 to 2019. He played football and squash at a high level and uh, was also a good tennis and golfer. He's married to Chrissy, two sons, incredibly proud of Daniel and James. Outside the backgammon world, I can be a bit more outgoing, he says. Um... An example of which he joined the Blues Brothers band on stage in the middle of the concert, and no one, including the band, noticed because he looked more like uh, Jake Blues in the Tribute Act. <laughs> Good for him. That's pretty outgoing. I love people like that. He's got a great personality, a real uh, great leader and ambassador in England and elsewhere, and uh, I'm rooting for both of them. I hope they both win. Um, it, it, it's exciting. Z is certainly, we call him Z, Zedek, is certainly one of the real bright young stars that's come along in the last few years. Uh, certainly Ryan Robello, Hideaki, Kazuki, uh, uh, they're all, you got some young people in their early 20s and teens, even uh, that uh, Oliver Squire the, is another, that, uh, that are up there. We're seeing a lot more youth become very, very good, very fast. It used to take 10 years to get good enough uh, because we didn't have the computers and we didn't have all the study aids that we have now and the great books that we have now. I mean, McGrill and Roberti wrote some great books years ago that were the Bibles of backgammon and uh, 501 uh, Positions by Roberti has been mentioned a few times by the people I've interviewed as a real help. Uh, but the many other new books and Extreme Gammon. You have to give Extreme Gammon before that snowy uh, we're darn good as far as bringing us all to a higher level. So the game is much tougher today than it was ever before. The differences in skill, as we're seeing, between the very best and the next 10, 20 players is not that great. It didn't used to be the case. The top, top players of years ago were, you know, the number one player might have been 10 times better than the number five player years ago. But now it's really, really close. I, and that's largely because of the computer. Um, and I'm happy to say that XG is going to be even better. It's going to take a while. Everybody's impatient. There haven't been any upgrades for a while. Uh, Xavier's been busy and doing other things. And I'm working with Xavier to see that we can change that. And hopefully XG will, uh, within the next few months, or at least within the next year, uh, not only improve in its analysis, which is already great, but it'll improve in the areas where it's a little bit weaker. We know it doesn't play back games and containment games quite as well as the very, very best human, but it, I would still bet on it against almost anybody. Uh, but it, it's going to improve that. And there's other things that can happen to the program that help it improve to be better on the apps. Uh, I understand it's not working on some Androids right now. Uh, we hope someday we can work play it on a Mac, use Extreme Gammon on a Mac computer, which you cannot do now unless you have a Windows simulator. Uh, in fact, I've had several people that I teach uh, that love Macs and they love Extreme Gammon and Backgammon. They went out and bought a used PC, an old PC, just to run Extreme Gammon. So uh, Extreme Gammon itself is very inexpensive, it's $60. But if you join your federation, almost all federations get a 20% discount. I know the USBGF does. Uh, and it's silly to just go out and buy Extreme Gammon without joining a federation first not just for the 20% discount. There's so many benefits in joining the federations. I am very proud that I helped start the U.S. Backgammon Federation. I was urged to by my good friend Chiva, uh, who really pushed uh, federations starting around the world. We owe him a big thanks for that. And we now have federations in every major country, and we really need that. 
the federations are run by the players. It's the players who control the sport now. It used to be the other way around. It used to be the tournament directors, and we were totally at their mercy. And by the way, they were good tournament directors. They had good hearts. They did a good job. But every tournament director had different rules, and they had different standards. And uh, so we got a lot of advantages. So the reasons you join the federation is, number one, uh, you get a lot out of it. I know the USBGF, we have a lot of members that aren't members, uh, aren't part of the United States. And there's some good reasons. It's an incredible magazine. There's over 250 free teaching videos that I've prepared when I was, I'm the, I'm official teaching pro and have been since the start of the USBGF. You can watch these videos free. And I have guest people with me like John O'Hagan and, and I, uh, Mochi and Stick and Perry Gartner. It's great minds that have worked with me on that. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of benefits of joining plus discounts, but you're also supporting the game. Uh, the Federation through the uh, Boards for Kids program, which I started at USBGF, we've given away hundreds of backgammon boards to kids all over the United States and in colleges. Uh, and that's all with money that's been donated or used by from the USBGF funds. Uh, a lot of other benefits. I can, I can go on and on. So join your federation, get Extreme Gammon. When you buy Extreme Gammon, there's a drop-down screen that says, where did you hear about it? From the internet, from a friend, or from Phil Simborg. You know what my preference is. So pick me, and I'll make a little money on it, too. That's how I that's how I get compensated for my help in starting Extreme Gammon and getting that going. Um, but you need that program if you're going to get good at backgammon. Now, people say, well, I've got Extreme Gammon on my iPad or on my iPhone. You don't have Extreme Gammon. You've got XG Mobile which is not as good, nowhere near as thorough, and doesn't have anywhere near the tools, but still pretty good. I recommend you you have that. And if you just play on your iPad and you look at your mistakes, you can get very, very good that way. Um, and it's a great way to learn. And it's a great way to find your weaknesses. By the way, I don't think it's necessarily a great way to learn. It's a great way to see where you need help. The great way to learn is with some good coaching. Uh, go to the Backgammon Learning Center or Mark Olson. Uh, or uh, Justin Knoll. There's a lot of really great teachers out there. The England, you've got Sebastian has a, and Julian have a great, great teaching program there. Uh, and that's the fastest and best way to learn. Uh, that's what I did. As soon as I started playing serious backgammon in my real estate office, we were playing for money. And then I started getting involved in tournaments. I immediately started taking lessons uh, from Kit Woolsey. I started with Kit and I went to McGrill and other great teachers. Perry Gardner was my mentor. I think he's the best, and uh, I'm very proud of him as my partner for the Backgammon Learning Center, and you'll find some great teachers there, including a guy named Mochi and Dirk and John O'Hagan and Marty Storer. And, uh, I mean, the list goes on and on. David Wells, David Presser. We've got incredible teachers in our group. Um, Frank Talbot. I mean, I, I'm sure I'm missing a bunch because we got about 25 teachers. Uh, we get help and advisory from Bob Wachtel and David Rockwell. Um, oh, Chris Trencher recently joined our teaching group also. So we teach online and live. That's the best way to improve your game, uh, along with a lot of study. Okay. Zednik is sitting down at the table versus Tim Cross. And I keep saying Zednik wrong. Help me, Bill Riles. Zednik? Yedik? Zenic, I say Zenic? the D, but uh, I didn't think that's right. No, the D is, Zenic. I think the D is quiet. There. I think it's down. Yeah. Why can't everybody talk right? I believe it is Zednik. Zednik? Well, yeah, you're pronouncing it correctly. Okay, maybe I'm getting it right. I, I'm with him all the time. I, you know, he never corrects me, so we'll see. Ah, here comes Tim Cross to the table. As soon as I get the uh, link, we'll get going. So, Unbelievable Priaris, Superhuman is what it's called, and Grandmaster. Superhuman is under two, and that's what Mark played. Got to be very, very proud. Now we see why Mark decided to play instead of run the tournament. Uh, he he is a real contender in this. He could win it. He would love to play Sander. By the way, uh, Mark hired me to be here to do this commentary and for Monte Carlo. And I really appreciate his faith in me and his friendship. And uh, even though I don't get to play uh, in Monte Carlo, uh, I can play in some side events. I'll play in the open tournament before the main event. Uh, just being at these events 
it's just such a thrill for me uh, to just watch these players and to be with them. And even if I don't get to play, but of course I want to play too. <laughs> if I was better, I'd be playing more. Those who can do and those who can't teach. So you know which one I am. Okay. Getting ready for the next one. <clears throat> Wow, look at Tim Cross. He looks so relaxed. You can see him on the stream. Looks like he's about to just relax and take a nap or have a nice little lunch. Z is sitting very straight, upright. He's in great physical shape. He's a good athlete. I'll tell you what I like most about Z. Everybody will tell you this. He is, happens to be one of the nicest people in the world. He's not full of himself. I've never seen anything that comes close to conceit. I think if I had his skill, I'd be probably the most unbearable person to be around in the world <laughs> because I'd be so conceited. This kid, he's just a sweet, nice guy in every way. I was just, I can't say enough about what a great guy he is. Ah, he's putting on headphones. I thought they weren't allowing headphones. They must have changed the rule. Well, maybe they're just noise blocking headphones. Maybe that's why. I want to find out about that. Are headphones legal? I was told headphones are not going to be legal here. So we'll see. My sound is very faint. So I'll bring the computer closer. Okay. Okay, got worse. So Tara's going to hook me up with a microphone and headphones. We'll see if that's any better. Oh, uh, maybe they can boost it downstairs. They're looking at that too. Yeah. You need to make sure that your All right. on your Zoom call is coming through this microphone. <laughs> So, people on the chat, can you tell me how uh, the sound is now with the headphones? Can you hear me okay? I'm sure there's some of you that would rather not hear me. Somebody says it's loud enough. We'll try this. But let us know in the chat if you, if you, if you can't hear me. The sound's too faint. Ah, thank you very much. They say it's fine. Okay, I'll keep the headphones on. I like it. it. Keeps my ears warm. We'll be starting shortly. Looks like the players are ready. They've started the match, but I can't see it yet. I haven't gotten the link. Uh, okay, looks like I got it now. Let's see if I can get on. There we go. All right. Uh, Z is on top and Tim Cross is on the bottom. And uh, we got a nice advanced anchor for Z. When you're holding your opponent's five point, that's called the golden point, your opponent's five point. And it's golden because you're almost never going to get gammon. You can take just about any cube. You're in the game for life. And uh, Often, if you have a choice between making your own five point and your opponent's five point, it's often right to make the opponent's five point. Depends on the situation, but more often than not, there's a reason it's called golden. 
This double five uh, plays itself. Six five, I think plays itself. You got to come down. You don't break your anchor. Oh, on my computer, it shows ZZ on the bottom. I got it reversed. It's ZZ who's bottom and top. That's interesting. On my computer, it shows ZZ is white. And on the stream, it shows Tim Cross is white. So I don't know why I've got it backwards. On my computer, watching it directly. So I really don't know who's who. So, <coughs> the, the stream shows that Tim Cross is on top. But he's not. The, the stream is wrong. So <coughs> Okay, it's been fixed. Zedek is on top. That's I, we had it right. They had the wrong names on the stream. Okay, so Z is on top, and uh, very interesting game here. By the way, we don't call it a back game when you're holding the four and five point. We call it a double holding game because it plays really differently. And the definition of everything you do with the cube and checker play is different from a back game. To have a back game, you got to have checkers on the one, two, or three, <clears throat> and even a three, five, or a three, four might be more of a double holding game than a back game. Okay, we have a very strong uh, situation for Tim. Uh, he doubled, I missed the double, and Z took, let's assume it was a proper double and take, but we missed it. Somebody says, it looked like a pass. So I have to look at that one. But I can tell you if if uh, Zedek took, it probably was a take. So we'll see. Could be wrong. It's certainly, certainly not happy he took now. Double ones. Oh, my goodness. <clears throat> That's a joker. And a six to get out. That's big. Come out in safety. That's what I would do. Yep, five one plays five is easy. Where's the one? Do you come off the four pointer? I don't think you do because you got him outboarded. You I can't. Oh, he did. I would have. I would have left the checker there. You're gonna hit here and come out. Oh, and another one for Z. That's big, and a dance. It needs a six or a four. Four hits. Six comes out. Either one's going to be kind of disaster. So the question is, Wolsey's Law, if you were Tim, would you take this cube? If you're not sure, then you double. Uh, hmm. What's the cube action here, guys? Now I wish I knew how to play backgammon. This is a tough one. I know I'm doubling for money because I'm a gambler. And I know if I, I lose, probably lose my market if I roll a six or a four, unless I, my opponent does something really cute and comes back in and hits. So, uh, although, oh, double six. He rolled the plate on. That's a very, very fine roll. 
So for those who thought maybe uh, I, I think I would have doubled there. So again, I'm learning by my mistakes. <clears throat> and it's probably a mistake of Z didn't double it, probably wasn't. I think it was an easy take. I agree. I would have taken it, but I would have doubled too. Okay. Well, it was a redouble. You've got to keep that in mind. Redoubles are not the same as doubles. For one thing, if things go really, really good here, Z could win a gammon. Double six. I'm not sure how to play this one either. I know the first one. <laughs> I know I'm coming 24 18 with one. Then I'm going to 13 with two. And then that's where the that's the limit of my intelligence. <laughs> I'm not sure what I do with the other two. <clears throat> oh, big, big joker roll coming in and hitting. Wow. Wow. This game was almost turned around, and it would have been a re double and a pass for Z if he had come in and hit. What hits there? He hit with a 4 3 or a 4 4 or a 5 3. So five numbers, and he rolled one of them. That's what we love about backgammon. He had five numbers out of 36, and he rolled one. One of the five. <clears throat> so beginners would come off the seven point here, and they don't leave the shop. And you want to make that point because the guy's never going to roll a one six. That doesn't happen. So you leave that checker on the seven point. Oops, he rolled the one six. Oh, my God. This game had two swings that were just so huge. Okay. Wow. <clears throat> and this is just huge for for Z here. What's he looking at? You hitting? Hit, keep going. Oh, comes in. <clears throat> I don't hit loose here. It's too dangerous to get hit back. <clears throat> Take a checker off. Hope you don't roll. You need a one, two, or a three. He's safe. <clears throat> comes in. Pretty much a gammon if you don't leave a shot here and get hit. No ace. He does. It. That's it. That's it for it. It's going to be four nothing. This game had two monstrous swings. He rolled the one six from the bar and the other, and then Tim hitting the shot from the bar. They both made great, great shots from the bar that were huge jokers. We have some questionable cube action though that we want to check on there. I don't, I don't know. I can't wait to look at these later when they're analyzed better. Okay, four nothing, three away, seven away. By the way, I love that they're playing a whole bunch of seven point matches instead of a twenty one point match. Some of these tournaments have these really long matches. I think they're kind of boring until you get towards the end. I mean, even if, unless you're really a, an expert player and looking at every single play and studying it, but for the general backgammon community watching a 21 point match, can you picture a tennis match where the first one to 100 wins? So, what they did was they broke it up into four point games and you have, you have add and induce games a lot. It's very, very exciting to do the scoring that way. So, seven point matches, you have more Crawford games, you have more double match points. You have more gammon go and gammon save games. Much more interesting to do this kind of a format. I my hats off to to the UBC for doing it this way. And we get a lot of matches and a lot of excitement in. Okay, we've got a clear advantage here, both in pip count and position for Z. But he's going to be a lot slower to double when you're winning three away, seven away. This is not a good roll. Uh, I don't. I don't think you leave a shot here. The board's too good, and I, he agreed. He cleared. <clears throat> now, this is an interesting situation. This this is pretty much forced. <clears throat> it's going to be pretty hard for Z to bring this home without leaving a shot, and that's why he's not doubling, even though he's uh, clearly way up in the race and in position. Position. Okay, you make the ace point and wait. You, you think you're going to get a shot on this roll with a lot of sixes or fives and some fours. <clears throat> so I think you just stay back. You come out to the bar is the question. 
Yeah, you stay back, you get more shots by staying back. And sure enough, here's the shot. Now you're losing four to nothing. You might get an itchy trick trigger finger here, but I think it's wrong. I don't think there's enough shots. I think you come off the 16, because if you don't get hit there, oh, you do get hit. It's and that's going to be the game unless he comes in, I think. I think oh, he came in right away. Now this gets exciting again. Mete, speak up, hey, Jonas. Glad to see you. Our tournament yeah. director doing a fantastic job, unbelievable the job that he's done up until late at night. In the basement, you heard in the basement, you're, yeah. You're up here at the <laughs> office, right? Yeah. Upper hotel. We're having a ball here. Yeah. But the whole team is uh, doing really great. That's run your 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 work has paid off. You're running a beautiful job here. It, it all it all starts with you. You're running the show. I love Mate. Okay. Thank you, Phil. So I will look for uh, uh, somebody to help you out. I could use help because I'd like to have somebody read the chat. Sure. And I'd like to have somebody intelligent tell me what's going on. Yeah, yeah. We, we have people. One. <clears throat> All right. Where are we here? Ah. Yeah. He's thinking he loses his market if he rolls a three. If he misses, he might probably gets gammoned anyway. This is one of those situations where you think about doubling, even though you're in really bad shape. Oh, looks like he. It's like he doubled. <clears throat> he doubled. Z. Oh, I see. Tim doubled. Okay, now I now I got what's happening. Tim's on roll, and he doubled. And uh, how could Z take this cue? He doesn't cover that often. <clears throat> he covers fourteen out of thirty six rolls. He doesn't win, lose any gammons. I I don't see how you take this cue though. This score, I think you just give up the one point. And I understand the double here. You don't win very many gammons, so you, you're not too good. <clears throat> I like the double. I I would pass. Um, I don't understand. I, I he's taking a long time to think about this, but I would I would say thank you for doubling. Uh, let's, let's get rid of this lousy game. <clears throat> let's say he doesn't roll a three. He, he he just lifts with a one or a two. What are your chances of winning this race? He did pass. Okay, Marty Storer came up with a really good formula for this, but it would take me, <clears throat> if I could understand it, it would take me about a half hour to explain it. Uh, with the checker on the bar, the odds of coming in, the, the odds of getting around, how much you add to the pip count. Uh, you know, it's way over my head. I just know I would have passed it. Okay. <clears throat> we got six away, three away. <clears throat> so we really still have a game here. Well, do you hit or make the golden point? I almost always right to hit. <clears throat> Hitting comes before making points usually. But when you're winning four to one, maybe you think more about anchoring. No, he did hit. I, I agree with the hit there. And, and there's going to certainly be a hit here. You don't let your opponent live on your five point. You whack him. And he did. And he hits back again. And... Pretty soon, Tim's going to have a, a lovely, lovely back game. Comes in and hits. Does. And we're in back game city. Very bad, very bad role for Z here. He doesn't make the point. He doesn't hit. He doesn't do anything with productive. Uh, and this is interesting. Almost always right to make the five. Maybe you make the five and the three. What else is there? What else is there besides making the five and the three? That's it. Okay. <clears throat> Hit two. Stop him from anchoring. If I'm in a chouette, I and I can't talk, I say, Hit two. Hit 
Okay, that was my play. Cover, play the blitz. <clears throat> what else is there? You do cover. Where's the five, I guess? You remake the eight point or do you come across from the 16? Huh. You remake the eight point. Okay, they answered my question. Makes me really mad that Z was a much better player than me five years ago when he was like, when he was 16 years old. 15 years old. Makes me mad these kids are so smart and so sharp. But not when a guy's as nice as Z. Okay, 2-1. Ha! Huh. I'm awfully afraid to split to the 21 point. Leave another shot and come down. You get blitzed. Oh, it's White's roll. I'm sorry. I had the wrong player on roll. Okay. Come on, Phil. Stop drinking. I got to stop drinking. Picked a bad day to give up drugs. Okay, so the Z double, no. He thought about it. And I have a saying, if you're not sure if you're too good or not good enough, then you should double. <laughs> Maybe you'll get a take. Or a pass or something wrong. Now he doubles. This could have been too good. He didn't do the <clears throat> four checkers on the three point. Maybe at the score, you just want to cash and get the two away. I thought that could have been too good to double there. I mean, I know I'm passing. And he did that pretty quickly. These guys are playing very quickly. Oh, yeah, well, Z already has used up quite a bit of time on his clock. So maybe he's right to do it that quickly. But I thought that might have been too good. Anybody else think so? I'm looking at the chat. Anybody else think they uh he might have been too good there? Amir Shragi's on the chat. Boy, we miss you here, Amir. I miss you anyway as a friend. But you got some good players here from Iran. You're, so you're still well represented. Okay. Uh you hit or make the five point. That was a good question. You usually hit on the outside. You don't hit with a three-one, you don't hit off the bar. If it strips your mid, your your eight point, but uh, further out you do hit usually. <clears throat> come in on the, come in and come out. Okay. Hit two. Hitting two is fun. Dean Munch, my old buddy Dean Munch. Hitting is fun. Another guy that I miss. A lot of fun guy from Chicago, and a double. And a double by Tim. I can see that. You're down six away, two away. And like we said earlier, like I said earlier, you can double a little faster when your opponent's two away and you're way down because you don't have that much to lose if you're wrong and you have a lot to gain and you're giving them a dead cube. You never have to worry about being recubed. So you should have a faster trigger finger. Actually, with help from John O'Hagan, we worked out a formula uh, that we used quite often uh, in a race, uh, for example, it works beautifully. If there's no gammons involved and your opponent's two away and you're further than two away, you double when your opponent is within 8% of his take point. So usually his take point's around 22%, which means you would double when he has around 30% winning chances. Now, in a money game, you usually double when he has about 26% winning chances in a race. If you use the Keith count, it's over by four. So you would do it when you're over by eight. So you double faster is what I'm saying. Your advanced players know what I'm talking about. I'm not sure I know what I'm talking about, but I hope that's helpful to you. John O'Hagan is my go-to guru when it comes to cube action. And he's, a again, one of our teachers at the Back Evan Learning Center, and he's taught me a lot. And he's put together some incredible material and lessons that we all use. All right. It's a blitz, baby. And he hits. And it's a blitz, baby. You, you hit. Oh, you can't. You Got to come in with the five. I would have hit anyway. See, no illegal moves on the computer. That's the nice thing. Four, two, he doesn't hit. 
turned out to be quite a nice double, didn't it? <clears throat> He's going to win some gammons here, and the match is going to be tied. Didn't cover. Z is still alive, but it looks like we're going to have a time match here at two away, two away. I love that. He lifts. He lifts. Huh. I'm hesitant to lift when my opponent only has a two point board, but I didn't. I didn't. He didn't. He, he's playing very quickly now. I guess he's because he's used up so much time in this clock before. <clears throat> You go to the five point because you don't want to leave a shot with double sixes. That's what he did. That's always your concern. How do double sixes play and then how do double fives and double fours play when you're bearing in in these situations? He cleared from the rear here because he pretty much has the gamut anyway. If he doesn't leave a shot and get hit. Although now... Now I might peel, not two, I would peel one. And he did, good. There are the five. Okay, now it's just a matter of luck about whether he saves the gammon or not. Tara, when I'm wearing the headphone, if I have somebody sitting next to me, I need to take it off so we use that, that correct? All right, I'll we'll have to think about it. I have, yeah, I'm so happy to have Tara and Bill helping out. They, they do, they help in so many ways when they come to these tournaments. All right, we have ourselves a match. Two away, two away. Now, what all experts know and most beginners know is you double on the first roll. <clears throat> Look at that. Your opponent made the ace, made the bar point, clearly has a lead, and it's still correct for uh, Tim to double. <clears throat> and um, I don't want to get into all the details why, because the good players know it well. But you'd rather play for the match than play one point. You don't have to worry about gammons anymore. And why would you double when you're losing by a little bit? Because maybe you'll roll a great roll. And if you don't, the other player's going to double anyway, and you're still going to take. So the cube's going to be a two next roll anyway. That's why it's not wrong to double, even though your opponent started out with a 6-1. Although I actually wouldn't have. <laughs> After saying all that, I'd rather have a little suspense. All right, you're making the five point. Aren't you? <clears throat> That's a lot of return shots, so I can see going playing quietly here what's the race oh he's way up in the race <clears throat> you always should be conscious of the race that's always a factor so because of the race you might play safe you, you might just go to the 13 it's not my style i make the five point and he did too okay and it paid off he doesn't you don't get hit back that that's a payoff that's a big payoff i wonder what was right there Ah, Ryan Rabello, it didn't matter. They're borderline. Thank you, Ryan. It's a matter of style. <clears throat> okay. You got to like Z's chances here. He's clearly winning. But this is not an easy game to bring home. Like right now, you're going to leave a shot probably somewhere. The perfectly safe play is just too ugly to, to, play, to, the, to play to the six point and stack that point. I think he played... 13 to 8. Oh, or that play too. That's fine. You just don't play perfectly safe. Sometimes safe is more dangerous because of, of what happens later. <clears throat> this is a good roll. Clears the point. <clears throat> He's going to slot his two point. And you're going to do what here? You can't productively do anything that great. You don't break your bar to make the to make the four, do you? Maybe you do. Maybe you play three from the seven to the four. 
make the two point. You can't make the two point because you don't have a last one. I guess unless you leave a blot on the 14. I'm not sure about this play. Maybe you just play. Maybe you just play 11. Yeah, play it in. Wow, made the two point. Huh. I'm not sure I would have found that play. That's what I want to look at. <clears throat> Five, four. No other hope there. It's just a matter of, is Tim going to get a shot and hit it or not? And he's running out of time. His board's starting to crash. Not a great position for Tim. Four, three is a great roll. You make your four point. Now we're crashing. You come up with the two or not? That's the question. And at this score, I don't think you do. And now you get pointed on. Makes the ace point. He didn't make the ace point. He brought them all in. I guess he had enough builders. I would have taken a little more time on that one. I thought making, oh, because gammas don't matter. Maybe you, you want him to run or you want him to crash and you don't hit him. Maybe I missed that. I may have missed that. I would have made the ace point. Make the ace Why leave a 6-2 shot? Okay, that's a good point. I didn't have enough time to think about it. I think if I thought for a few hours, I might get it right. Yeah. Give me that. Give me that. Well, you're making the three point now. Come on. You pick and pass and get them off the ace point as opposed to making the three point? No. Okay. That was a possibility, though. The, the pick and pass by getting him off the ace. But he's on the bar. He gets shots from there. This is awfully solid. Uh, the only question is, who's where's the PR? I'm betting on Tim on this game. Normally, I don't, I don't know who I would pick. Normally, Z, I guess, historically, has a better PR overall than Tim. But in this particular match, there's something that tells me I like Tim's play better. I'm always happy to make a prediction, go out on a limb, and, and I'm happy to be wrong. I'm not embarrassed about being wrong. Good thing. Boy, most of these matches have really gone fast. I like that. I love that part of the game. It's exciting and fun. Get off the back, Ammon, just for ego. Okay. We're about to see the result. Congratulations, Zed. He wins the match. And, oh, hey, look at that. They both played incredibly well. It's really, really close. But an entire point goes to Z for playing just slightly better. He played at 2.59 versus 2.65. You can't get much closer than that. And this is incredible play by both of them. So all of the plays that I questioned and all of the plays I wasn't sure of and all the things I think they did wrong, guess who was wrong? <laughs> Oh, wow, we're seeing some incredible backgammon. Do you know what it would have been like five years ago or 10 years ago to see two players like this playing at 2.6 and 2.5? Oh, my God. We've got a lot of people now who can do that. That's just amazing what's happened to this game in the last 10 years. Unbelievable. Thank you, Xavier, for bringing us Extreme Gammon, for making it so accessible. You know, I had an argument with him, but I, I really pushed him to make Extreme Gammon. Uh, we weren't satisfied with Snowy. He wasn't satisfied with Snowy. And I, he wasn't sure it would sell. And I guaranteed him I would mar help him market it and sell it. Uh, we beta tested it myself and Mochi and Neil Kazaros did the beta testing. And I'm proud to say that I had a lot of input on the on, on the program and how it looks today. Uh, but he Snowy was $400. And he said, I'm going to sell mine for 50 bucks. So they're nuts. People will gladly pay two hundred dollars for yours it's, if it's going to be better than Snowy. He said, "No, at fifty bucks, we'll have more of the world will have it, and more people will get better, and more people will play, and and will improve the game more." And he was very smart. He did it for the game, but he did it for another reason too. I mean, Snowy was four hundred dollars as a result of being that expensive. Somebody came in and 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 made a better program for less. And at fifty bucks, nobody's challenged in the last 10 15 years that we've had extreme gammon nobody's tried to make a better program for less because you can't can't sell it for much less and still make money 
and you'd have to all the work to try to make a better program. And I'm not sure, I'm sure somebody eventually could make a better program. It can be done, obviously, if you wanted to put in the resources. But that the idea of making it accessible to more people uh, was really fantastic. And by the way, it was funny when we came out with the program at 50 bucks, all of the top players say, oh, you're nuts. There's no way this could be as good as Extreme Gammon. I paid $400 for Extreme Gammon. I mean, for Snowy, there's no way they were going to switch to Extreme Gammon. And people laughed at me and laughed at Xavier and said it was terrible. There's no way it could be as good as Snowy, especially because it was only 50 bucks. People have what they call perceived value. But then a guy named Deprelli ran a, um, a test with major positions of comparing good news and extreme gammon and snowy and extreme gammon was better by far. And then Mike Corbett wrote a great book, took I think 32 positions and he compared uh, he, uh, compared the positions that uh, with extreme gammon and actually there were some positions that extreme gammon got wrong in his opinion. It wrote a good analysis of that, but the, but again, the other programs are far worse. Uh, so you got to get extreme gamut. And I don't make a lot of money. When I tell you this, I think I make five bucks every time somebody buys a program. But if you buy extreme gamut, you, it's going to take you, unless you're really a computer nerd, it's going to take you a few months to figure out how to use it really well and get into all the details. Well, I can save you some time. Send me 25 bucks and I'll send you a one hour tutorial. I've sent out hundreds and hundreds of these. And by the way, the 25 bucks, I use it for the kids boards for kids program. And we buy and ship boards to kids all over the country. Can you hear me? <laughs> Ideally, this is where the break is around five or seven or four. Uh -huh. You might confirm that with the answer. Yeah, okay. Because I'm going to find out when our next match is going to be and if we have a break. Uh, we may have a break here. I'm going to find out. Thank you, Bill Riles, for pointing that out. I was just doing a big ad for my video. So for 25 bucks, I have a one-hour video that tells you how to do all the settings, exactly uh, how to uh, use the program, and uh, you'll learn things that you would maybe not even figure out yourself, like how to use dice distribution, how to use a heat map, and all kinds of things that are, the programs are just unbelievable with all the tools that it has, if you know how to use them. Okay, so if Wilson doesn't know our answer, we got to get somebody that tells us, I Mate. think, uh, I'm gonna, Mate. I think we're going to have a break here for a couple of hours for lunch. <clears throat> and give my voice a little bit of a break. These are exciting matches. Uh, I'm excited, not just in the checker play and the joker roles that we've had, but look at these PRs. That's really exciting. Read the latest uh, by Amir. Amir Ashregi says, Ali Haydar would be the surprise of the tourney. 2.7 first round and 1.46 round two versus Mochi. Uh, yeah, that is a surprise. but. The, it's because we don't know the Iranian players that much. You guys don't get to as many international tournaments as a lot of other people. And I'm sorry to see that because not only are you a bunch of great players, I haven't met an Iranian I don't like. They're such nice people and such good sports over the board. Uh, we'd sure like to see you more. I hope political things work out that way. I mean, uh, you know, politically, the situation between Iran and the United States is not the best right now. And between Iran and Israel, I happen to be a Jewish American, and I love Iranians. <laughs> so, and I get along with them well. So, we got to, I think the people, and by the way, back in brings us all together. Uh, and I think that's one of the wonderful things about it, too. I don't care about your.
matches and the PRs. And you can see they're really good PRs. Okay, thank you, everybody. I hope you're enjoying it. And uh, those of you who know me personally, I do see my texts and I am on WhatsApp. If you have any constructive criticism or you just want to tell me how lousy I am, that's fine. But I, I really love to hear what you want me to do more or less on these streams. I want to be as good a streamer as I can be and make it enjoyable for you. Am I talking too much? Am I explaining things too much? Would you like a little more? Is everything just fine? Let me know how you think. Thank you very much. See you soon. I'm going to mute this computer.
Okay, I've unmuted. I've unmuted. I've unmuted. I got this back up and ready to go. <clears throat> I think. Oh yeah. Is this ready? <clears throat> Lori's like, no, we already wrapped up. How's about the results turn up? You know, you want to run this shit yourself, Brian? You know, <laughs> piece of work. Says you're on round five. How come the results turn up? Uh huh. Um, probably on the back computer and back end. Oh, I'm seeing computer. the results right now. They're posted, are they? Yeah, they posted after the round three. All round two is done. Uh huh. Good. Pretty good PRs. So they are streaming that, but they're not streaming us or me. Okay. But my sound is on, so I don't know. You should wear the headphones or what? <clears throat> Is that the sound of your computer running? Yeah. Fan. It's just running so oh. much. Uh, so many calculations and all. I have to run the fan to cool, keep it cool. Okay. Good. You know, and this is only two rounds through 16, so they're like a lot of room, a lot of rounds to go. Oh, know? yeah. But, but you kind of begin to get a feel. So we played four rounds. We're playing four more today? Or? Four more today. Four more. And then we're done. But you know, really, they're really going fast. Oh, yeah. I mean, once we got started, you know, we started, what, an hour late? And we caught up. We caught up, yeah. So it took about three hours to play the four rounds. Uh, um, you know, um, it's funny, after two rounds, you know, Giorgio Castellano, the Italian, you know, he's, he's the odd man out right now. He's, 
even though he's playing 298 after two rounds. But <laughs> It'd be a bitch to play under three and not make the playoff. Wouldn't it? You do make them. Yeah. Six of the six of the players are based on points, but two of the players make it strictly on yeah, PR. He, he's third and strictly PR. Yeah, but if let's say the two above him win on points anyway. But they're as of now, they're not. Oh, really? Oh, he could. He's third among those. Not the six. After you take the six out, yeah, but that this is too there. soon. This it's is too, too soon. Hard. If he's going to have that, if he continues to have that PR, he'll make it. He, he's good. He'll make it. Like this, close, like this. Okay. We'll be streaming this next match. We switched the stream. Oh, they switched? Yeah, we switched it at lunch. Who's, uh, who's the next one then? Next one is going to be Arash and Ali, the guy you just talked about, Bayar. I thought that was round eight. We no, we switched them to now, yeah. and we'll do something else round eight. Okay, because we had the other guys. We didn't want, we we just made that switch at lunch. So who's that sitting down? I don't know one from the other. Somebody had said that that guy was wearing a red shirt. I don't know who's that. I'm not looking at the screen, but let's see. Yeah, he's wearing a red shirt. One wearing a yellow shirt. I don't know which is which though. Ali Haydar Bayar versus Arash. Am I streaming? I think I'm streaming. Yeah, I think you're on. I'm on streaming. Okay, good. Yeah, you're live. So we switched the matches because <clears throat> this fellow, uh, Ali Hadar Bayar, is surprising the hell out of everybody and playing great and doing well. And Arash was a former uh, uh, champion, Iranian uh, UBC champion a couple of years ago. Uh, and Ali is a Turkish player that nobody knows except uh, Dimitri and a couple of other people say, hey, this might be, uh, this guy might be really something. Amir yeah, Amir Ishragi said that. I thought it was uh, Dimitri, maybe it was Amir. Yeah, it was Amir. And anyhow, we, uh, it should be a very interesting match between two relatively internationally unknown players, but the people in the know know these guys are really good and their PRs so far and their play has been excellent. So we should have a very good match here. Um, is that Ali in red? No. Uh, that's I think Arash is in red, and in yellow is Ali Bayar. I met Arash last night. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so we are waiting for the. red is Ali. Let me see. I think I have the streaming number. Let me get going here. No, I don't. Message was deleted. Here it is. Five nine four nine oh nine. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Huh, I'm getting uh, the last, that's the last match. I'm not getting the new numbers yet to be able to see the new match. I guess, oh, they're waiting to, they start to play and then I can see the match. So take a minute. Anyhow, it's Phil Simborg sitting here in beautiful Istanbul on the 14th floor of the WOW Hotel, the WOW non-airport hotel. It was the WOW Airport Hotel, but they moved the airport. And boy, if you haven't been to Istanbul, it's the world's second largest airport. It is beautiful. It is huge. I'm told the largest airport somewhere in China. Uh, but Thank we you. used to fly into the airport and walk over to the Wow Hotel. Now we, now we have a quite a ways to go. Istanbul is not a small town. 18 million people. All right. So.
We should be seeing this match shortly. Um, yeah, but I don't have my, I'm not able to see it. Let me try again. I see it now. Okay. Ali is uh, at the top, Arash at the bottom. And uh, you can see that uh, uh, Arash is off to a really good start with a great priming game, but he got hit. So uh, he's going to come in and make the bar. Oh, he hit. He hit. He didn't make the bar. He, well, you got him out boarded. You don't want him to anchor. I, gee, I would have made the bar there, I think. I have to... I acclimate myself. Is it possible that I could be wrong? Come on, there's no way. You do hit there, huh? Ah, well, okay, I'm wrong. Matt Cohn Geyer says he would hit, and Matt outplayed me once, so I'm going to go with Matt. You're blitzing here, even with a single chair. Well, there's a saying you, you uh, prime a pair and hit a blot, so he's going with that. Cube action, double and a take. <clears throat> I agree with that. 6-3. Matt, you were on the list to be here. You went to Washington, D.C. instead. And I really, really wish you were here, Matt. I miss you a lot. You owe me a hundred bucks. Uh, don't forget it. That's why I wish you were here. But I miss you anyway. Okay. Somebody asked me how I got involved in commentary. It started in Monte Carlo when I did commentary in the World Championship Finals with Matt and Falafel. The three of us had a ball. And from then on, I was addicted to doing this. It's a lot of fun. But there's nothing like doing it with Matt and Falafel. I wish those days were back. Instead, I had to do it with Bill Riles. Sorry, Bill. I'm sorry, but I know Falafel. You're not Falafel. Or Matt Kongeyer. But you were great. You did a good job, Bill. Thank you. Okay. 6-1. Um, Some people make the ace point here. I have a guest for you, Jeff. Oh, Hello. Zinnick. Hello. Nice Hello. to see you. I guess I'm going to take this off and we're going to try it without the headphones. Yeah, unplug. Unplug it. Good. Yeah. What happened to your match? You went all right? I, I went, yeah. I went that off. fast? I went. Of course. I, I played pocket. Oh, my <laughs> God. I mean, all right. Everybody disagrees on how you say your name. Is it Zinnick? It's Zinnick. 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 But that's why it's Z, because it's difficult yeah, it's to pronounce. Zinnick. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, okay, sure. Great, great. <laughs> Let's get you in a picture here. All right, hello. All right, you can see the match. What's going? On. Here's what. Here's what we're looking at. This is what. Oh, ignore that. This is oh, where for comments. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We're we're gonna we're gonna watch the match from here because that's the delayed feed. Sounds good. Okay, so nice to have you back. So nice, nice to have, have you here as well. Yeah, I'll have to listen to you in person and not just through this. Oh no, no, okay, I'm gonna shut up and listen to you. <laughs> All right, so what's happening here? Uh, he has a 2-1 to play for the bar. Uh, you hit. It, 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 you it. hit. But you realize you're leaving two blocks. It's a double tiger. You realize nothing else is fun, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> so you mean you play this game for fun? No, no, no. Okay, maybe, okay. Let, let's talk about it. Okay, maybe if we enter on the ace and play 4-2-2, that's definitely a, definitely a good option as well. Yeah. Probably, probably good, but okay. I thought we can. That's what he fun, did. Eh? That's yeah. what he did. See, I wasn't hitting there Serious either. Serious players, yeah. But where are the? Okay, oh, it's here. So we can't see the players how they have emotions, yeah. Oh, they have no emotions. Oh, no emotions. Okay. There's no emotions. Not, <laughs> that's not, this is a non-emotional tournament. Right. Oh wow. All right. So you can see the cube has already been turned, and Ali is holding the cube, and he is. Thinking about a recube here. Thinking about there's just so many bad things what can happen. I guess I mean there are a few good things like six three six five, but then still a long way to go. So I don't think we are losing that many market. Losses. Really, I'm doubling. I would probably queue from the middle. Recube is a little bit different, I think. But well, let's see what happens. This is an exciting game. I just came on time. Like okay, so you're sure you would take if you were doubled? Yeah. Okay. Now see? I would look how they look, but we can't see. It's not live, right? Mm -hmm. You really do look at that? Do you, when you're playing, do you watch your opponent? 
Well, just for fun. <laughs> See, when I'm playing online, I never watch my opponent. Oh, you don't? You can't. Yeah, you don't play online. You don't play, you don't play online. <laughs> I don't play online using my real name. Uh, I don't want people to know how bad I am. <laughs> it's one of my tricks. Are you enjoying playing this? Are you enjoying the experience? Of course, fun? I am. Well, I am. Oh, I am. good. I really well, like this. Uh, I know that there's been some uh, discussion online that some people don't like it, that it's just on online boards. But I mean, from player perspective, I really prefer this because it just feels way better to just not. I mean, last year it was like three days, what we had to play like 15, 15 matches, right? On a real board. And then basically everything went to knockout again anyway. Oh, they cute, huh? It so, was a recube, yes. Okay. I said I would have recube. It's gonna be more exciting now. Yeah, but uh, and he took it, like yeah, you said. I, I, I think there's proper cube action. I like it. But so you like okay. this program and you like playing online? Yeah, yeah. Well, because I mean, you just it's just warming up, right? I mean, it's not. I mean, instead you would play what three days, fifteen matches all day round, and then you would just get knocked out in the quarterfinals or semifinals when it actually gets important. So I really enjoy that this is like, I mean, online. Um, just fighting for the top eight. I mean, maximizing basically the uh, amount of matches, yeah. and then it's just gonna be a real fight on the real board. So don't worry, you're not gonna miss anything. Well, I heard Medi say earlier, if the first, if we'd always started out by playing this way, nobody would complain. But that's what, it's the fact that we changed it. People don't like change. I see. Oh, I see. it's a big part. I, I, I was saying nobody likes change, but a wet baby. So, uh, <laughs> well, I mean, I can get that because I was. I mean, I wasn't sure at all before. I mean, I honestly, I would also prefer to play on live boards one year ago, two years ago, but now I actually supported the idea as well. So uh, it certainly is a lot easier for transcription and getting that we get the data much faster this way too. And especially, I mean, this, I mean, this thing, I mean, I mean, of course it got, it. you can talk about negative sides, like what it's got, but some positive sides, like, I mean, now more players can play, even players who play, let's say 4.5 can join this competition because I mean, now there is basically space, right? And for me, I find I got you. And and you will go to boards when you get to the final eight, right? Yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Use yeah. The board. I mean, that's what's most important. Anyway. Yeah. If everybody's on boards, the amount of cameras and the amount of technology that we need to set it up is is just beyond belief. This way we could have more players. We were hoping to get 30, 30 to 40 players, and we actually did have more signed up, but a bunch of the uh, Turks in particular dropped out. I don't know why. I think they were afraid of you. That's the problem. <laughs> you and maybe one other guy. There, yeah. You know. <laughs> How are you doing so far? You just won your match. Did you uh, win BR too? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm winning. So you're doing good. You're gonna I'm be. Okay. You're gonna make the final late if you do okay. I'm doing okay. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> so you were one of my picks. I mean, I picked four people uh, that four. I that I think were shoe ins, and uh, you know, Mochi, you, Michi, and uh, uh, Dirk, yeah, yeah, yeah. and and Mark Olson. Five. Okay. Those are my my dream five. Okay, so you just added me just now, yeah. So <laughs> well, you're here. You've got four picks. Now, you're sitting right now here. there's five. You're Who sitting. Yeah, well, you're sitting right here. You're bigger than me. You know, I I gotta add you. All right, this game is. Um, I I like the recube. I, I you you weren't sure. What well, do you do now with four two? I mean, do you just go out to the eighteen? Like, I mean, it's four cube in a place. So I mean, DMP. It definitely makes so much sense to just make DMP plays. I mean, 24-18, it definitely just shifts the game around, right? If we just play from the not, from the nine, well, I like that. And he made the right like play. That. He did now, it. Now, what do you, you, know, you have to hit and come down. The road of the day. Two, yes. two down. You don't just make the two point here. You got uh, to think about it. I mean, it's a four cube in play. You yeah. have to think about it. I mean, it's a bunch of numbers, right? It's two, four, six, like eight, what, ten, ten right? shots. Yeah. Ten shots. So are you really doing that? I mean, if you just make the two, Let's say he rolls a six. You're still okay. If he doesn't roll six, you win the game almost anyway, right? So there is actually the two point and a huge consideration, and I think it may be the right play. Really? Well, I was reflecting. You know, I play too much for money, and for money in cash games, you bring two down because you win a lot more gamins too. Well, I mean, you lose a lot of gamins as well. So <laughs> I, I've never lost a game. You get back gamins. I don't get gamins. <laughs> So it really is a question of whether you hit or bring two down. Like what you can take take a look at the check because oh, you're yeah. sitting right there. Can make the two Matt Cohn Geyer makes MCG the two point. Be here. MCG should be here, but he went to Washington DC oh. just to smell the cherry blossoms. Oh. Okay, he made the two, which is uh, Matt agreed and you agreed. 
I don't like that. Double twos, you make the bar. Yeah, you just win. And you just win. Now you just win. Nothing else to do but win. Yeah. There's nothing. You just make the bar and come yeah. down. Or do you stay back for a third checker? Is what he's thinking. No, second no, checker. No, I'm that's it. Sure what oh, you step up here. You yeah. got to come up. Let's go. Got to come up. You got to have a play to this game. Hitting loose is not going to be real comfortable for Ali if he comes up. And there aren't that many points. Oh, there I said go. there aren't that many point. oh, <laughs> pointing. Oh, pointing number. Oh, open mouth and insert foot. That's what my mom used to say. So. So now there's actually a big question, right? Because, I mean, if we play, let's say, the normal play 11-6 twice after making the three-point, now we've got some bad sixes, but I guess it's just the best play anyway. Well, but, there's a bad six. But you were talking but, about I it. I mean, it was the best anyway. So do you bring them both in, or do you? No, we just play 6-5. You play 6-5? You hope he doesn't roll a 1-6? You just... If he was one six, you lose anyway, right? <laughs> well, it's about gammons too, though. Uh, about one checker back never versus two. Gammon, you're afraid of gammons. But even if it just rolls any one, do you want that extra blot out there? If, well, let's say he doesn't roll one six, he just rolls a one. You don't want the blot on the on yeah, the seven. In all other thirty five cases, you just love that. But he made your play. Let's see, big play. Oops. Okay, this is easy. You peel a checker off the four. What did we say about gammons now? There's no gammons. No gammons. No gammons. <laughs> David Rockwell gave me a formula for this, and it's kind of a reference position. So, but I forgot, so I can't help you. Clear from the rear. Whoops. Hmm. Yeah, there's no oh, there's nah. they, that saved the gammon double five. It was not starting even, to get, get gammonish, not even sweat. Yeah, it was starting to get gammonish. So, you would not have given that cube the re cube, uh, or you weren't sure, probably not, probably not. And I would have, so, so that's you would have won four points. Yeah, I would have won just two. Well, I don't know. No play, I don't know. Does anybody know if it was a re cube, Matt Congar? Would you have re cubed there or not? I mean, we don't have XG, but we got Matt Cohn Geyer. It's the next best thing. I guess we've got like one minute delay or something. So we have to just. Oh, well, yeah, there is a <laughs> delay. That's right. There is a delay. Okay. When it's four nothing, again, I play Gammon Go and Gammon Save. I learned that from Sly. From who? Joe Sylvester. Oh. Yeah, you're too young. He, he, was, he was one of the best in the world way before you were born. Okay. He's still great, but he doesn't play much. His theory was you play game and go and game and save when you're way ahead or behind. And the computer did not agree with him when he was saying that back when we had Snowy. Then extreme gamma starts to agree. Mm. But at this score, you would play game and go and game and save according to him and XG. <clears throat> Borderline cube here already. What do you say here about game and go? Yeah, you it. wouldn't hit. Uh, yeah, that's such a good point. Well, that saved him. That was a cube saver to make the five point. He's going to hit here and split. Yep. Uh oh, that's a good roll. The worm has turned. All of a sudden, Ali's back in this game. He was in trouble. <clears throat> you have to make the high anchor. You make the four, four, four point. What else is there? Is it four point and two point or yeah, what else? Well, at least the four point, the two point, yeah, that's it. it, it. <clears throat> Slot the three. What a nice position, huh? Oh, oh. excuse me. Ah. Huh. Doubles is not always good. This hurts his timing. Gives up the midpoint for sure. You can't crash your board. Uh, here's a fun roll. Here's a blot lever. Only one play is to put the blot on the nine point. And the five, I would still come down. I wouldn't go behind or slot. That's it. Okay. Needs a five or a seven. 3-1, he just rolled, right play.
Double fours is a, not fours. It's forced. Yeah, three down and one in. No, no shots. Plays. <clears throat> now, even in spite of the score, I think this could be a cube. You're up in the race. You got race position and threats. Position, race, and threats. Brett. Brett makes this a cube, but the score is the only question here. What do you think, Z? Well, I mean, I don't know about the score. I mean, about the Brett thing, but it's definitely this is a definitely tricky question. I mean, definitely the score. So first, what I usually do is figure it out what would it be at zero zero, right? So okay. what would what do you think this would be? After the six five play, we're assuming he doesn't run with six five, right? Yeah, not that is also okay. a big question. <laughs> yeah. um, he might run. Well, the thing is, so what are the bad numbers first for white? Well, first we have blue has to play. Well, but that's the thing. I mean, you have to first know if there are any bad numbers. I mean, if there is just nothing, then, well, why would you stay there when you have to run next turn, right? So that's definitely part of the consideration. Uh -huh. uh, but I don't, I don't see any bad numbers if he stays. Yeah. But if you go, I see lots of good numbers. So that's that, why yeah. I kind of think this probably was a good play, but uh -huh. I'm probably... Wow. <laughs> I don't want to guess. Well, I will probably pass, but... You would pass. Yeah. So for sure you would double. Wilsey's law. If you're gonna pass, I would you know you're doubling. Well it could be could be too good as well, but <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it's a double pass, I think. Yeah, 23, 12, I think it's a double pass. Again, what's bad, right? So I mean can be small pass, I would say, but there's no way it could be too good. No, because of the high anchor. Okay. Well, all, all I know is I'm doubling because I don't like to take. I would not like to, I would not like to get this cube. That's Simborg's law. Ask yourself what you would like, how you feel about it. If I were Rush, I would not like to see a cube here. So that's why I give the cube because I want to be mean. Your whole goal is to, you know, the guy's a masochist for playing backgammon. So help him. Oh, double take. Make the bar. He took it. All right. I was going to say small pass, but MCG says take, probably. Ryan also says it takes, so interested in this one. Well, if Ryan and MCG said take, I'm willing to bet them as much as they want, as long as, <laughs> as, long as it's not money. Uh, they're wrong. Won't bet a money. I thought it was a pass. But either way, if you're not sure, you, you double. If you know it's going to hurt Hurt, hurt bad to get the QB double. He's got a point on him now, doesn't he? No, he, he, he can't go behind, so he got a point on him. That's what you do. The only there's no no question here. Well, I mean, there could be a play like two from the eight, just some kind of chance to consider. I mean, now it's six winning shots anyway, right? And actually, maybe a cube. Well. The cue from the distance. Oh, That's wow. The... He didn't even stop to think about it. You did. Oh, wow. You I probably will draw anyway, just as yeah. well. I think it was a good draw, just normal. But yeah, considering two from the gate there, just not making a point, because if you make a point, it was it was six draws, which would win immediately. If you just play from both from the gate, you keep the prime. Well, probably it was a deuce, but worth considering. Uh huh. Uh, we've got, by the way, a board cut off. I don't know what can we do about it. Okay. It's somehow moving. Oh, Tara, can you help us here? That's on the screen itself. Oh, really? Oh, so that's got to be got to be Wilson's got to take care of that. The board got smaller. Well, oh, good. Enough. Okay, we got it. All right. In the meantime, I don't think there's much of a chance of a game here. Maybe ten percent. You just went up. You've never witnessed a game, have you? It, no, never, never. You just went way up there. There's a lot, lot more odds of leaving a shot now. Any high number plus a one or a two. And almost the definition. Almost the shot. When I'm rolling the two, always comes down first. Uh oh, uh, no he, well again. he can't stay. He cannot stay. It's a bad roll to roll level six there. He might have won the game by staying. Wow. You just. Not always good to roll doubles. You should work on you should work on that. Okay, we got a six nothing score. Six zero. Time to drop the PR. Okay. One away, seven away. Again, do gammons matter? 
And the answer is no. The only thing that happens if if Arash wins a gammon is Ali loses his free drop. So that's very small. You play this like DMP. Make a five, no? Well, I make the five and the 11. I don't like to split into those stacks. I mean, the five is automatic. I think I make the 11 as well. No. Well, the question is, what do you do this? Or you the three point? I guess that's what he was considering. But yeah, this, this should be the play. <clears throat> Double fours. Always look at the race. He's now up in the race. So that's why he comes out. If he wasn't up in the race, you might stay back with that. Make another play. Or two. Play is safe. Now he's not so much up in the race anymore. I think he has to make the uh, three point from the 18. Would you make the one point from the 11? Which, which one would you do? Well, so if we make from the 11, what do we do then? Gotta be able to split scale. Well, my opinion, this would be probably close. I think I would probably just make the three as the 11 controls the seven anyway. And I guess if we ask the question who would benefit from the contact, I guess it can be our opponent, but. Well, he yeah. didn't agree with you. He made the other play. He made the ace point. I wasn't sure. You said um, it's probably close. I think it's close, but now it seems like we might get into bigger problems sooner than yeah. I play, I play. I make the four point and leave a blot on the five point here. Oh, no. You made the three point and made the... Huh. What am I missing? Oh, he would have buried him one more checker with my play. Something weird happened with his thing. Yeah, well, we have no control over that. <laughs> oh, maybe it's on purpose. Oh, yeah, it's on purpose. Show the, yeah, he <laughs> wants to purpose. show the players. Yeah. <laughs> he wants to show the players in the room. No more us anymore, yeah? <laughs> they got us home. Uh, five, four. Oh wow! Yeah, I think, you managed to hold him. Yeah, I think I think he's got to play off the seven, uh, off the eight and the six. He did double um, six, just to the four and the Zeus. Yep, that's it. By the way, what do you think about the time? About like general settings in time because it's basically I, faster. What do you think? I like love it. it. I love it. Okay. I don't like it. I love oh, it. Awesome. I think it's so much better for viewers. It is. Uh, and I think the normal setting should be one point per minute, not two. For not, players as well. I mean, you put them on the pressure a little bit. Yeah. Well, maybe because of a live board and you have to count the pips, maybe you go one and a half sure. minutes. But I like going faster. I, I also like shorter matches. I, I hate to watch a 21 point match. I like these seven point matches. Got more DMP, you got more gam and go, more interesting cubes. I love it. Okay, six three. Uh, uh -oh. cover and in. What else can you do? You probably go to the eight, to the nine, huh? Oh, if really? It's time to, I mean, well, how can you win this if you don't go now? If you just break the eight, it's like he, well, he well, made, this, he, this he is made, one one. He made my play. All right. That's what I that's the play I was making. That's why you win. No, that's why I'm commentating. <laughs> that's why you're playing and I'm not. I would have I would have made his play. Any any opinions from the crowd there? Oh wow, nice play. What happened? I think a six. Wow, I missed the second. What was the point? So what should we just hit? Ten, five, four. How many shots is that? Five, two, three, four, five, one. Oh, it's eight shots. <laughs> oh, this is fun. One, two. Uh oh, safe enough. <laughs> safe enough. Yeah, not safe. Almost not safe enough. All right, match over. Do do not hit. Right? He didn't hit. I agreed with that. Why well, give him another chance to come in? And because uh, you have to leave a shot, so you can't couldn't hit there. Okay. Well, barring a miracle, it's going to be Ali in two or three games. And uh, he's 
fast developing a huge reputation for this game. Let's find out how we played PR. He certainly had some good dice. And I don't think Arash played badly at all. I don't know Arash's game as much as we've heard about Ali's game, but we'll see very shortly. Our next match is going to be a Lulu. It's Mochi and Dirk, I think, coming up next. Oh, we're wow. streaming. Too bad you have to go play. I'd love to have you here. I need somebody intelligent sitting here in, this, in a seat. Oh, look at those. Oh, oh my God. 1.6 and 1.9. Congratulations to both of you. That is just terrific. Of course, it was a fast match. There was a, the big gammon involved. That's going to help your PRs, but this is really impressive anyway. I have to say, in uh, I played Carter in the finals of Charlotte one year, and I, I played at 0.06. It was a one point. Was it BMP or no? BMP there number. It was a. No. It was nine point match. It was a one game match though. And we, but he played very well too. I don't remember his PR. But I just, he just a four cube and a gammon. No, it was a four cube and a, it was an eight cube and a gammon. <laughs> oh, it was, yeah, it was an eight cube and a gammon. So I beat him sixteen to nothing. And it was Carter. I love doing that to my good <laughs> friend Carter. Look at this PR. That is really impressive. That we're seeing a bunch of. Amazing play. Uh, one four against Mochi. Yeah. Uh, Ali and Ali won a one point match against Mochi, I think, and he played one four. Two game match. Yeah. So this guy Ali is somebody to watch, and the Rash. Congratulations. You know something? I wouldn't mind losing and being streamed worldwide and playing at one point nine. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I'd rather lose and play at one point nine than win and play at my normal fourteen. Okay, well, this is exciting. Oh, well, let me make sure. I think our next match is going to be Mochi and uh, let's see where it is. Our next stream match. You're gonna get, you got to get ready for it. Oh yeah, it. Mochi and Dirk wow. Demon. That's going to be exciting. Those are two of the better players here. Two great players. Um, I don't think Mochi needs an introduction. I think we know who he is. He's been the number one giant for many years. Dirk, a lot of people don't know. Dirk was number two giant in 1993, I believe. Uh, he and uh, Leverman were the two German guys who were killing everybody. And then Dirk, it's a funny story. Dirk got married and his wife got pregnant. And he felt he needed a steady job with steady work. So he became a professional poker player. <laughs> that was that. That's and I said, really, that's what you consider steady. Since he was back then, and then in uh, 2016, he came back to backgammon. Uh, we talked. We became good friends. We came to Istanbul together for a tournament. We became good friends. We were together in the Bahamas, and he's now one of our backgammon teachers at the Backgammon Learning Center. And he recently wrote, I think, the definitive backgammon book ever. I mean, you Zednik, by the way. Your book is wonderful. You're a great writer. What you're doing with your back with your learning center, I told everybody about that mm -hmm. as an introduction. Oh yeah, uh, the, all the things you're doing to promote the game and to and to, and to teach the game is great. Uh, Dirk's book, though, if you I, I don't recommend it at all if you're an intermediate player, <laughs> you better be an open player. It is definitive. It's the theory of backgammon, and it really gets into it. It's much of it is was over my head, and I really had to get help, and I'm still working at it. It's just a great, great book. Uh, he's a hell of a great player. Uh, he spends a part of his time in Costa Rica. He lives in Germany. Uh, and, of course, Mochi is from Tokyo. And um, I've taught Mochi a lot over the years. I think he's doing very well uh, as a result. Actually, I did teach him one thing. And, and if we, he and I did a bunch of boot camps. And in one of the boot camps, he had a reference position for when you double it two-way, four-way. And it, when you, if you make the four point and he splits, he said, this is a reference. I said, look, try making the three point and split. It's still a double, a two way, four way. Uh, and it was. So I think I taught him one thing. Okay. You can, you better Thank go play you your very match. much, Bill. Thanks for coming. Pleasure. Hey, come back anytime you have time. Thank you. See you. Yeah. Hopefully I'll see your mother's you. here too? Uh, she's in the city, yeah. In the city? And you're going to play, uh, you're going to play in the big tournament too, right? Uh, well, probably not. Oh, that's right. You're going to be in the final four. The final. That's right. <laughs> that's right. I, I'm rooting for you not to play. Yeah. What a great guy. I just love that kid. He's one of the real gentlemen in backgammon. Really great kid. All right. Stay tuned for Mochi and Dirk. And I learned it's Dirk. Hmm? Oh, matches are fast, yeah.
Yeah. Yeah. Wow, I had no idea those PRs were that good. They had some close, close tough decisions. There are two decisions at least that, that Z wasn't sure of, and and they must have gotten them right or very, or they must have been trivial, or those PRs wouldn't have been what they were. So even when you're a loser, that's the nice thing about it. If you're a loser and you walk away with a under two PR, in my mind, you're a winner. Poor guy loses the match and loses PR and plays an under two. That never happens to me. <laughs> I never play under two and lose a match. I never play under two and win a match. Wow, that's really something. So, again, I recommend if you're an open player, you get Dirk's book. It is just amazing. And Z's book is very, very good. But not a not the same kind of book, not the same detail level and the, the theory. He really gets into the theory like nobody in the history of the game has done, in my opinion. And my humble, never wrong opinion, by the way. Okay. That was something to say. You know, we found it, but Ali has only 25 At least 25? Ali's 24, Ali's 25. Well, I've been playing 70 years. I need another 70 to maybe catch up with these guys. Yeah, I'll probably live that long. My, my father died at age 51. My mother died at 103. And if you figure out the average, I got about a week left. So I don't think I'm going to make it long enough to catch these guys, these young kids that play so well. <clears throat> wow, is that something to see? Great PRs. I really want to look at that cube too. I didn't didn't agree with it. Must have been right. Okay, after Mochi and Dirk, we've got uh, Thomas Mir and uh, Kuman. And Mir is am I saying it right, Mir? Mm -hmm. He I I saw him at lunch. He's doing very very well. He's got a lot of points. I don't I don't know exactly what they are. It's being shown, but he's highly in the running to make the final eight. That's what all this is about. Because once you make the final eight, uh, everything you did before that doesn't count, except for your how you're seated in the final eight spots. For those of you who did, weren't there for my introduction earlier, six players will be uh, go to the final eight based on their points. Uh, and the remaining two spots will be strictly on PR. Uh, the two players who were not in that top six that had the best PR will get into the final eight. Then they'll seed all eight by PR, uh, first playing eight, seven plays two, and so on. And uh, they play four matches with each other. And as soon as you get to five points, uh, you have gotten, you've won. So you don't necessarily play all four matches if you beat the guy bad enough early enough. So that'll be very exciting when we get to the playoffs. And that's not going to be until Tuesday? Wednesday. Wednesday. Okay. Today's Monday again, right? Monday. Still Monday? Wow. Remember there's a movie that was called If It's Thursday, This Must Be Belgium? That's how I feel. Uh, aside from jet lag, and I got here a couple days ago, uh, staying up all night, playing shoeettes, practicing. I haven't played any shoeettes since I've been here, but I've played some bazooki, which is my favorite um, new um, variation that I highly recommend. It's really fun. You just play a normal three-point match, and each either player, both players get to call their role one time. That's all there is. And if you play for money, let's say you play for 100 bucks, if you don't use your bazooki and you win, you get 150 bucks. So I love this game. And uh, in fact, I just recently played Matt Kogayer online, and I beat him. Ha-ha, take that, everybody. And Matt's never beaten me at anything. And... Uh, that goes along with one of my favorite sayings by Albert Schweitzer. Good health is, uh, happiness is good health and a bad memory. So I don't remember Matt ever beating me. You know, Matt lost to Ray in the Super Jackpot final. Matt lost to Ray in the Super Jackpot and Ch Cherry Blossom? Yeah, the final. In the final. Oh, I bet, I bet Matt didn't even care. <laughs> right, Matt? <laughs>
Well, congratulations to Ray for beating Matt and probably some other very good players along the way. Who won the cherry blossom? Do we know? John Hagen won the championship. Oh, wonderful. My good friend, my co teacher. Matt. And back, Victor, you yeah, terrific. Ray beat Uh huh. That's a lot of really good. That's all giants you just named. Four, four giants all deserve to be there. And I just, there's something about this game. I love it when an underdog wins once in a while. That should happen. That makes the game great. But it also, I feel feel gratified that the players who play better, that worked harder, that are more skillful, when they win, it just proves this is a game of skill. I don't like people going around saying back game is all luck. And that I, it, it, you certainly prove it by looking at the records of the better players. They win more. Victor always finds a way to win something. He's like, he, I think he emulates Ed O'Loughlin. He finds a way to win. And uh, he, and he's always in, in the hunt. Oh, Hagen's always close, but he hasn't been winning as much lately. But now he's knocking it out of the ballpark. Yeah, he lost in the final with the Super Jackpot in San Antonio. Uh huh. Oh, Hagen lost in the finals of the Super Jackpot. No, was that? Victor oh, Victor did. Okay. Yeah. But I think did he take fourth in the in the tournament? He was a semifinalist at the same time. There's he was telling me about it. I had dinner with Victor last week. He told me that he went to this tournament. And he won the. He, in, in he didn't win and he still felt good because he took fourth and one and he won the super jackpot. Must have been San Antonio. Yeah. Well, He's got know, someone like the year before last, the Hagen won the UBC tournament and the championship. Where was that? In Texas in 2022. Uh, oh, Texas 2022. Hagen won oh, Hagen? Yeah. The championship and the UBC. Yeah. Well, Hagen's a great player. He should be here, uh, but he can't be everywhere. And Washington, D.C. is a great tournament, especially during Cherry Blossom. It's, I've been there a few times. It's really a lovely place, but I'm stuck here in Istanbul. i got to just make the best of it, in spite of the great food and all the fun people. There's no tournament like this. The way they run it with using that FTGB system, the main tournament here, you get an app on your phone. You get a text that says, go to table 16. Here's who you play. Here's the time it starts. If you don't show up on time, the clock starts anyway. You start getting penalty points automatically. When you're done with the match, you hit a button and it tells it reports who wins. And everybody in the world online automatically gets updated, not only on who wins and loses, but the score of every match. It's an unbelievable system. Everybody in the world should be using this system. And I've actually talked to the developer trying to find a way to make it go worldwide. It should be used everywhere. It's fabulous. And how else are you going to have a tournament where you can, you're in the tournament until you've lost three times and you've got 800 people and keep it going on time. I mean, only Fawat and the FDG system could do this. He's an, he's an amazing tournament director also. A nice, gorgeous wooden board, FM board at every table. Uh, it's just amazing. I love that tournament. Last time I was here, right before COVID, I was here with Dirk. I was here with Dirk and and Dennis Culpepper and Blake Fleetwood. We just love the event. Okay, next match. Mochi and Dirk. They have to finish their previous match. Camera's going around the room. Michi, I can tell Michi from the back of his head. There's Justin Noel. Ha! Huh. At lunch with Justin, he's very unhappy with his game. He's playing much worse than he normally plays. His PRs are terrible compared to where he had where he has been. He played five practice matches with Mochi the other day, and he was playing at threes and fours, and he's playing much worse today, and he doesn't know why. And I told him he's just probably nervous from being around me. <laughs> too close. Yeah, it's too close to me. He's, we spent too much time together. So, oh, who's our official photographer? Oh, uh, they hired a professional photographer to go around and take videos and pictures and do interviews. Yeah. Forgot his name. That's production. Uh, That's the guy. He was in uh, Monte Carlo. He was in Monte Carlo. Was he the one following Sander around? No, he wasn't part of the part of the video. There's Dirk. Dirk's looking at his previous games.
Dirk's just a great guy. I really enjoy being with him. Over here in this match, in round three, almost uh, uh -huh. near play 170 against Justin Miller. Oh, not over yet. Oh, no. Not over yet? Oh, yeah. So, 167 no. against Justin Miller. Oh, wow. Mirror, we knew Mirror was great. great. Mirror's got to be up there. Then I got to add him. I got to make Adam as the sixth player that I think is highly ranked and, yeah, and highly favored here. Um, Who did you have? Did you have Snarhan in there? No. Snarhan. Really? See, I don't know Snarhan. Snarhan's unbelievable. He's from where? Norway. Snarhan from Norway? Okay, I'm sure. I, I know, didn't know all these. I mean, I just used the big names. He's a very well known player. Uh huh. All right, there's Dirk setting up. We'll have Mochi soon. I mentioned earlier that I'm very happy to see Mochi, the number one giant, not just because of his skill, but his, his ethics and his presence. He's just a great, uh, I'll tell you a story that most people don't know. Uh, Mochi and I were together uh, maybe a month or a little more than a month or so ago in New York. And I had a game with a guy uh, where you can't, couldn't lose money. And I said, Mochi, I can get you in the game and you'll make some good money. And then he said, who's the guy? And I told him, he said, he's a well-known crook. The guy is not honest. I don't want his money. I don't want to take dirty money. Other people's money. I don't want to take dirty people, other people's money. He has too much of it. And to me, I wanted even more. <laughs> I mean, the guy stole the money. I want to steal it from him. Uh, so th that's the kind of ethics he has. I mean, just, uh, it's not about the money. It's about the game. It's about honesty and being pure. And we also talked about... Um, somebody who was found to be cheating and he, he would give him no quarter uh, he wanted he thinks it hurts the game terribly it should be suspended or there's some for a long time people with tremendous effort petco was in that fight oh petco was high oh yeah yeah you see i can name two or three more maybe out of out of the ten thousand players i know with high ethics yeah <laughs> well I, there's a bunch i would put i mean my my partner perry gartner i've never known a more ethical person than that john o'hagan is way up there I mean, there's a there's a bunch of them uh, that that that's what I like about the game. I you know, I I would put Dirk in that category. Dirk would never do anything in in any way, even the remotely shady. I'm sure Michi's the same the same way. Um, David Wells, my good friend David Wells, who I think has become easily could be in the category of many of the top players here. One of the most honest people I know. There's, I can't name too many of the really top ones that I would not rank in that category. Sure. It, it didn't used to be the case. 15, 20 years ago, we had some shady people around. Or Okay, we are waiting to get the... I think this has got to be one of the best best matchups. Certainly, Mochi and Dirk, uh, if you look at their PRs, I think Dirk is in the top well, five. It was kind of a, a rematch from two years ago. They played in the finals. Yeah, they played in the finals two years ago. Mochi beat Dirk to go on and play. No. Well, that was in the finals. The, oh, the contenders. Okay, yeah. in the finals, yeah. And Mochi crushed Dirk in the finals, I, as I recall. But Dirk still played very well. Uh, Dirk has said, there's two things that Dirk told me that I think are great. Uh, one of them is, I said, do you have any tips? He said, yeah, when in doubt, double. I love that one. And again, you, you, your opponent can't make a mistake unless you double. And then he came up with what I call Dirk's Law. Maybe he called it Dirk's Law, but we call it Dirk's Law. Dirk's Law is you're, you're thinking between two plays or two cube decisions that you might make, one either double or no double or whatever, but you've got a, a decision to make. Ask yourself, which one is most likely to be a blunder? Would it be a blunder not to double, you think? Or a blunder to double? Or if I hit or make a point, which one is most likely to be a double, a, a, a blunder? And that helps them find the right play. And it's possible that neither one of them is a blunder because it's close, but just anyway, even if one's going to be a 0.05 and the other one's going to be a 0.08 error, the 0.08 is more likely to be a blunder. Well, 0.08 is a blunder, but 0.04 and 0.06, still you... Think which one is most likely to, to be a blunder. That's one of his ways to decide how to rule out a play. I think very good advice. They went in doubt double. It's just fun.
All right, we're getting ready to set up. We've got nothing interesting to show, so they're showing me. <laughs> so you may hear a little talking in the background that's Bill Riles and Tara, who are doing a lot to help this tournament by doing the more deep analysis and also helped technologically in many ways get this whole thing set up for me. So I really appreciate their presence. Bill will also help me with commentary from time to time. So with the additional people that Bill mentioned that he thinks are really great, it really is a big fight to make that final eight. It's, I just thought it was a shoe in for five people, but when you start adding Ali, in fact, we just saw, and a couple of others, it, it, it's really gonna be a dog fight to make that final eight. Got some really, really tough comp competition out there. And people I haven't been aware of, because I actually haven't followed the BMAB and the uh, UBC as much, mainly because I'm so jealous of those people. It, it bothers me. I just... Yeah, there's a question about my hat. I have a... Very nice I Beat Mochi hat. I think I earned it, but if you look closely, it says I Beat Mochi at Ping Pong. I had it at Ping Pong because I beat him in Cyprus a few years ago in Ping Pong. I'm out of I Beat Carter hats. I only had six dozen made or eight dozen made, and they're all they're all gone. <clears throat> So, people watching the chat, tell me, do I need to put the headphones back on, or is the sound okay this way? Little, little feedback, please. So I see we're going to wait about five or ten minutes for Mochi and Derek. Uh, thank you, Lucy. You can hear me clearly. I appreciate that because I'd rather not wear the headphones. I think we need a little air in here. Is that okay with you guys? Yeah. And they're all stuffy. Beautiful outside. Perfect day for back in. <laughs> I love playing back in and outside. That's one of the reasons I'm going to. Jamaica on June 2nd to play outside at the beautiful 
beautiful Jamaican Inn. Uh, we have a nice little tournament there, two-day tournament, June 2nd. Contact me for information, phil at sim.org. But the big one in Jamaica is going to be uh, September 28th. We got uh, Michi and Akiko are coming. Mochi plans to come with his family. We get a big turnout. You said a gorgeous uh, resort, the Ryu, uh, all-inclusive resort. You walk out your door onto the beach, walk about a hundred yards down the beach to Joey Issa's estate where he's built a tournament room that's air conditioned and beautiful. And uh, it's just a really amazing event with incredible food and hospitality. And uh, But the main attraction there is the same thing as the main attraction here in Istanbul, in my opinion, the people, the Jamaican people have such a passion for having fun and for playing and chouettes and uh, action. In fact, I go there often. Uh, I almost commute to Jamaica uh, and we, we have an afternoon on Wednesdays. We play backgammon all afternoon. We have dinner. We have a big poker game for about three, four hours, and then we play backgammon all night long. It's just really fun, a bunch of fun, really great guys. So um, I do have, I'm helping host the tournament, and I'm one of the organizers and sponsors for the tournament. Uh, so I do have Mark's permission to plug that tournament. I appreciate it. Thank you, Mark Olson. Um, there's a lot of tournaments, that, great tournaments coming up in great places, but you want to have fun, come to Jamaica. Uh, people have some concerns about Jamaica. It has a bad reputation for maybe being a little dangerous or whatever. This tournament's in Ocho Rios. It's in a gated community. It's perfectly safe. It's lovely uh, in every way. Uh, I fly into Kingston because I got a lot of friends there and I like the Chouettes in Kingston. And it's about 40 minutes closer than flying into Montego Bay. And of course, I live in Florida, so a round trip airfare to and from uh, Jamaica is peanuts. Now, if you come in September, then uh, you want to stop in Florida for a few days, and I'll promise you a good time there as well before we go down to Jamaica. And uh, I'm very proud to say, mostly because of a lot of work with Karen Davis, that the Florida group, um, the backgammon club in Florida, is the biggest in the United States. She's really grown the game. We have great tournaments and there's a lot of good chouette action and money action in Florida, if you like that, too. Uh, I live right near Palm Beach, and there's a whole club scene there that's uh, apart and separate. But thanks to Jason Briggs and a tremendous amount of work that he's done to grow the game at the clubs, a lot of these players, and I'm coaching a lot of them uh, with uh, private lessons and with uh, lectures, they're getting better. And we're starting to see many of them come to ABT events, too. So it's another way our game is really growing that people really don't know about. Uh, and don't see because we don't post what's going on at those clubs. They want to be a little bit more private than that of what they're doing. Uh, and the members feel that way a lot. In fact, many of these clubs, when you walk in the door, you you leave your cell phone in the car. You don't even bring the cell phone and you can't take pictures or, or talk on the phone at all. There's no Wi-Fi, of course. Uh, but that's an underground that's happening where the game's growing there as well. I think the game's growing in every area. Uh, I will be giving a lecture in New York uh may 3rd to 32 children at, at a member of a private club i mean that's the way these clubs are growing and they're also bringing their children into the game so it's uh, very exciting uh there's several people that you can thank for helping grow the game i think the main reason is because people are discovering how great a game it is that's the main reason backgammon grows but you got guys like jason briggs who's doing a lot for both the us bgf and the club circuit to really grow the game. They have competitions between clubs to, to, to make it be more exciting. And and uh, um, I want to acknowledge him also for his support for me, for getting me involved in lecturing at all these clubs and all the students that I've gotten as a result. So I'm reaching out to you, Jason. Thank you. Thank you for all you do for backgammon. Uh, I've already acknowledged Mark Olson and Mochi this several people that are really working hard to grow this game. Uh, and the federations I, are high on my list and the and the members of the, the leaders of the local clubs like Karen Davis, Carol Cole, Patrick Gibson, people like that. They're just doing an amazing thing for the game. And down in San Antonio, Michael Pines is just really, and with Frank Frigo, they're really growing a club there in San Diego and getting a heck of a lot more people there. This is how the game grows. We have individual people who are dedicated, 
not only to playing, but to bringing more people into the game and making it fun for them. So thank you all for your efforts. Okay, I see the players are getting ready. Hopefully we'll get started shortly. Two very good friends of mine. Mochi and Dirk. I can't root for one or the other. I work with both of them all the time. They're both back Ammon Learning Center teachers. Tremendous amount of respect for both of them as, as individuals and as players. So I have to wait till they start the match before I can see the actually see the stream. So I'm always just a little late at the beginning of each match, the way it works, and they haven't figured out a way to stop that from happening. So you'll see a few moves before I before I even know that they're playing. But it is time. All right. If I was a betting man, I would bet that Mochi will beat Dirk by. 0.3 PR. I think that's the over under. That's how close they are. I think that would be the over under on the difference in their PR. You never know what's going to happen as far as winning and losing the match, but the PR is something more predictable. And uh, I would take Dirk plus four, and I would take Mochi minus two. Minus 0.2, we're talking about, of course. So Mochi, if Mochi plays at 2.3, I would predict that Dirk would play at 2.6. That's my prediction. Let's see how good that is. I've stuck my neck out here. Of course, one wrong move from Mochi or could easily change that PR tremendously. So a seven-point match is not that long a match. You make one big blunder, it's going to kill your PR. That's what happened to Justin in his first match. <clears throat> I think it's cool they're sitting side by side they can look at each other this is a legal moves dice on checkers uh, tournament and by the way I think I think they will be playing legal moves dice on checker in the Istvar event I believe they will be doing that in when we get to the final eight and you're playing on a live board uh, in this in this event they will be playing dice on checkers and legal move and I like the dice side checkers. Why re-roll when you know exactly what the rimmer was? <clears throat> Play crap sometimes. Even if the dice is leaning, they they count it because they don't want to waste the time to roll over uh, because time is money in Vegas. But <laughs> it's time is valuable for everybody. Is that Mochi taking oxygen? Look at that. That's something I haven't seen before. It's like Mochi just took oxygen. We hope it's oxygen. If it's laughing gas, he's in trouble. Oh, that's a way. I'll substitute laughing gas for oxygen next time I play with Mochi. Wouldn't that be something? In fact, that's we, we should have a laughing gas tournament where they're all required to take laughing gas before they play. <clears throat> I did play once where, I forget what it was, whenever you go on a gamut or something, you had to take a shot, or whenever you roll doubles, you had to take a shot. And of course, in Japan, they always play the sushi tournament where you you have to eat pieces of sushi. I forget exactly why, but the champion who won ate 63 pieces of sushi in one match, you wouldn't believe skinny little Akiko was the one that ate the 63 pieces of sushi. You want me to mute it? Mm -hmm. yeah. There, I did it. Okay. So, 
I didn't know we had that number. The match details could not be retrieved. Try again later. They haven't actually started, so they're trying to get me into the match before it starts. All this technology just blows my mind. Being an old guy like me and seeing all the things we're doing now, if you'd have told me about this 30 years ago, I'd go nuts. With the game. Yeah, but the amazing thing is where I'm getting help from Tara Mendocino and Bill Riles. I, I used to, I thought you had to have a 10 year old. Refresh. Nope. Did I get the right number? Yeah, I got the right number. I'm not, not getting it. Oh, I got details up there. That's the yeah, problem. Match yeah, I got the wrong one. Well, I'm still getting a blank. Oh, it's just us as analysis. Okay, I got it. No, I need to learn how to do this. Yeah, get rid of analysis. Back up. Yeah, keep going. Right. Now, now what? Match. Flash. Okay, now the number. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. So Sh Dirk is going to be on top. He set up the match. We're waiting for Mochi to join him. You can see they're both sitting down now. And see Hussein behind them is helping out. And it looks like we're getting ready to go. Yes. All right, Mochi has an opening 3-2. He splits. I know he likes to come down with 4-3 with both. And I also know usually he likes to slot with a 4-1. I don't know if he would do that uh, in, when you're playing in with PR counts because he knows it's the wrong PR by 0.015. But he likes that play. He does it against almost everybody. But I don't know if he does that in BMAB. In the 3-2, he might come down with two also sometimes. But for sure, 4-3, he comes down. And I think for money, that is the right play. All right. Mochi and Dirk, a dream match. Double six, very good roll for Dirk. Do you hit off the ace or do you go to both boys? He does hit off the ace, which I wasn't sure about you know, coming down or hitting off the ace, but now I'm sure of it because that's what he did. Double two, do you hit? that blot in the inner board, I think I'm hitting. It's a little impotent to make the four point and not do anything. So even though he's up in the race, that's the other consideration because you're up in the race, you might bring two down and play safe. I like the hit here with the blot. He, he played it not completely safe, but he didn't hit. And um, I would have been hit back with double five, but you're not supposed to play results. So we got a very close race here, but it's not a full race yet because there's still contact. Now it's going to be, this is pretty close to a full race after a double threes. Um, six, five is a high enough roll to stop Mochi from doubling. If you roll very small there, it would have been a double, but with two pips, you don't double. Do you bring two in here or do you save? You do save. Okay, I learned something there. I might have brought two in, but he's worried about rolling ones. He's up five pips. He's on roll. He's getting very close to a double for Mochi. Clear from the rear because you're winning. Winning the race. Why wouldn't you clear the 10 point? He's thinking about He does clear the 10 point. 6-4, you run with both. I think you do that instead of waste. You start wasting checkers too much. So he's right. He did it. Boy, they must be able to hear me. Or actually, they're pretty simple plays, I have to be honest. 
Okay, Mochi may be doubling next row. Oh, 2 1 for sure. He's doubling next row. It's not even a take anymore. 11 pips, just way too much. Double pass. Double pass. There you go. Pretty simple game. Not, not too much complicated there. There was that one play where he made the ace point where I wasn't sure of. But I'm not going to bet against either of these two guys. I'm not going to try and outguess them either. I'm going to watch it and enjoy and learn like I hope most of you will. Anchor. Do you anchor on the five or the four is the question. On the five, the golden point. Six, two. Ugh. Now it gets messy. This is a messy play. You don't like hitting here because you're outboarded, but you're leaving shots all over the place. Huh. I might just run and not hit. Although, unstacking, hitting might be an option because one of the goals in the early game is to unstack. You've got too many checkers on your six point. That makes it tempting to hit with the two, even though you're outboarded. But you're up so much in the race you're supposed to try and avoid contact. And that's what he did. And you're not up so much in the race anymore, double six. But there is no perfectly safe play here that I can see. Ah, well, 24 pips off. It's uh, got a slight lead in this race, but he can't play safe. <laughs> All right. Ah, this race is swinging back and forth with big double rolls, two double sixes in a row. And now Mochi might be thinking about the double. He's up enough in the race. He's got a landing spot. The rule of four, which is four or fewer checkers on the midpoint which Grant Hoffman came up with, says you're supposed to double here. It's almost always a take. The take's right. This is probably just simply a double and a take. The rule of four says you have four or fewer checkers in the midpoint, a landing spot, and up 15% in the race, and you have a double at normal match scores or money. So that's qualified. And it's almost always a take because from the golden point, you don't get gammon very much, and you will get a shot and hit it somewhere in that 25% range. So you almost always have a take. This is assuming no major score considerations that change it. So good double, good take. Double twos, you're trying to bring it home. Now here's the problem. If you make the 11 point, you're six away from the five point. It's harder to clear. Um, that would have given me pause, but again, your alternatives are wasting and dumping, and I guess you just do it. Comes off the 11, so that with you have two checkers left, you're more likely to be able to clear it. See, I never like making that 11 point against the five point anchor. Dick's going to make the two and come in, I guess. What else? Didn't make the two. All right. You make the three, and then you come in, or do you go to the four? You're at the point now where he's thinking that white, that uh, Dirk may have to crash. So maybe he's not in such a hurry to bring the checkers in. I would make two points here. Do you have problems playing threes? Yeah, that's he's not even caring about making points. He's caring about being able to play every number without leaving shots. Huh. Are you playing off the eight or all of them off the six? Or there's another play. But, uh, he does play it off the eight. Okay. I might have been wanting to wait so that I'm not forced here with a high number. <clears throat> Some sixes are bad here. And six four is not one of them. So it's, you see what happens when you make that 11 point? I'm not saying he was wrong because the alternative... See, the no play is good or bad at backgammon. It's only better or worse than the alternative. So as much as you hate making the 11 point, the, 
the alternatives that he had were even worse. Okay, you wait him out. You're the one that's going to get the shot first if you wait him out. Do you lift the blot? I think I do. Yeah, he did too. In case you get the shot, which is very likely, you don't want that blot. Now you can pick and pass, which you couldn't have done if you'd left the blot on the three-point. So I love that play. He's forced to come in on the five and stay there because he's more he's higher equity trying to get a shot. I don't think you leave a shot here. You don't volunteer, although it's a lot of wastage. But when the race got closer, maybe you do leave the shot here. Maybe you do. Maybe you volunteer 14 numbers instead of, uh, oh, double ones don't hit. Uh, otherwise, you clear the six point. Oh, he went for the six point. Now you got a close race because there's a lot of wastage here. He thought about it. If Mochi did it, what he did was probably right. I'm not going to fight him. I, I pick my fights carefully. I don't fight with Mochi. Matt Kongayer typed in something he did in our lecture online a couple of weeks ago. He says, never leave a shot. And of course, he's being facetious. But it's almost like always make your five point. You don't always make your five point, but it's pretty good to do it. And never leave a shot. I wish he'd have told me that before I made a huge blunder and left him a shot and it cost me a hundred bucks against him after we looked at it. He said, Phil, don't leave a shot. Don't ever leave a shot. So Mo Mochi was probably right there. Okay. What are we waiting for here? He doesn't have a recube. Oh, this is a very bad roll, but at least he puts a checker on the three point with the ace. You don't move play six to five because that could cause some wastage. All right, Dirk redoubles. Notice the pip count. Dirk is losing by three pips, but the checker off is worth something and all the wastage that Mochi has is worth something. And maybe it's a little bit because of the score. Maybe because you're, you're losing one to nothing, you'd be a little bit more aggressive. But I think for money, this would be a double two. So you could use the Keith count here. EPC would work also here. Ward, if it was Dan O'Hagan, he would use Ward, Ward, Thorpe, Matusak, EPC, Trice, and and Keith Count, and then he'd tell you whether he's taking or not. I don't know how he can do all do that and all without eating up the clock too much, but he can do it. So if you'd use the Keith count and Trice's for wastage, it's a two-pip penalty for every checker more than one on the ace, a one-pip che checker penalty for every one more than one on the two, and a one-pip penalty for any open four, five, or six point, or a one-pip penalty for any, one, any checkers more than three on the three. So if you look at blue, he's got two, four, six, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 pips of penalties. Uh, and that checker outside crossover, if you use eyesight, that would give you a some help for the for the crossover, which Trice and, and Keith don't. So that's 12 pips of penalty. However, uh, Dirk has one, two, three, four, five pips of penalty. So there's the, the pip count, in other words, according to the to that is seven points, seven pips worse. Plus the checker off again in eyesight gives you value for that, and the Keith count doesn't. So that makes it like eight pips worse than it appears. So instead of losing by three pips, he may be winning by three pips. And uh, that's fairly close. That's fairly close. The score is somewhat of a consideration here. This has got to be a little different. And Mochi passed. Okay. Me too. I, I, safe to say I would do it. I'll do what Mochi does. Uh, Mochi and I play in Chouettes from time to time. We play together, and I just love saying me too whenever Mochi does something. All right. Five away, six away, still pretty much the same values. Gammons can mean a little bit different things here. When you're five away and win a gammon, you get to Crawford. So that makes the gammon worth a lot more when the cube is turned, probably 0.8 or something like that instead of 
Ah, this is a nice six and a lousy five. That's about all you can do. Nothing good here. You don't want to make the two point, I don't think. I would, I would you either run or bring two down. What do you do here? What's right? We're about to find out. Here's my bet. I bet Dirk gets it right, whatever that is. I'm not sure. I don't make the two point is what I do. I don't like. I don't like up and down. You get attacked too much on the four point. You come out with the six. Do you stop on the 18 or do you keep going all the way? I think you keep going all the way because you're out board. He made the two point. The one thing I said I wouldn't do. Wow. Matt Kongair. Huh. Wow. Made the two point. That that's another one I gotta look at. Three six is a very, very bad roll for Mochi. What do you do? Mm. Really tough. He's in the fewest shots by slotting the two. If he'd have slotted the seven point, he might have seen a cube there because sixes and ones would hit. This is pretty easy with the one and the two. I might have been tempted to come in there. There must be a reason that Dirk didn't play seven to five. I got to figure that one out too. I'll have to look at these later. Four, three, in and hit, or do you make the 21 point acre? Hmm. In and hitting is an exciting idea for me. That's what he did. Double fours. Ha. Not a whole lot you can do here other than make the two point, I don't think. Oh, the nine point. I'd rather make the nine point than the two point. That's one I would have missed also. Hit two. Hit two. He doesn't hit you. Game over. Well, no, if he comes in with one, you got to cover. Eh, it may not be game over. What's well, the race? You're up enough in the race to where you don't necessarily have to hit. But if you come out, nope, he took the hit two out. Okay, now it's double pass, isn't it? Again, Woolsey's Law, time. He didn't double. So was it too good or not good enough? I would have doubled. I guess too good. I guess it was too good. Because I would have passed. Wouldn't be the first time I was way off. Okay, you make the eight, hit and make the ace point or do you cover? Do you make the four point? God, there's a lot of close decisions here. At least close for me. Four points, a beautiful point, but I think in this board, I'm hitting and covering, going to the ace. That's my guess. We'll find out if I'm right. He made the four, just like I said. Oh, darn, this is being recorded, so I can't get away with that, that kind of tomfoolery. Wow, he doubled that. That wasn't too good? Wow. Wow. I thought that might be too good there. So he, before he was playing on because he didn't think it was good enough? Wow. This is over my head, guys. Out of my pay scale. I can, I, I'm going to learn a lot by studying this match. They should be posting. This is through round three. They should be posting that real quickly. Okay. I don't have time to look at that. Okay. Yeah, it's all of the match so far. Is... All right. What's Mochi thinking here? 
thinking about whether to take or not. And losing four away, six away, I tend to take this cue. Let's see what Mochi thinks. I would think this is a take. He's going to get hit most of the time again, but still it would only be a two or three point board. Maybe real quickly, Bill, while they're pondering that, after the third round, the six who qualify on points so far, Zdenik, Oliver Squire, Dagfin Snarheim, Thomas Meir, Mark Olson, and Amaral Tabacoli, Amarale Tabacoli. Wow. Then the two PR advancers would be Dirk Sheeran and Mochi. Uh-huh. So the ones that are just out at the moment, Giorgio Castellano, Michi, and Ali Bayar. Huh. So, uh, but that's after three rounds. That's and after three rounds. And we're on the sixth round now, right? Yeah, we're okay. running round four now. Okay. So it was a pass. I, again, took him a while to do it, so I thought it was a take, but... Obviously, he's he's going to be right most of the time. <laughs> Some tough decisions at this match. This is a match I I don't have time to review every match. I, I you know I got to get some sleep. I got to eat. I got to do other things in between. I even play some, but this is a match I'm going to make sure I study because there's so many plays that I either got wrong according to the players and they're probably right, or I didn't understand or at least I wasn't sure of enough. So this is how you learn. I'm going to really learn from this match. So Tara, be sure and send me this one when you're done. Thank you. <laughs> I got a thumbs up from Tara. She'll send me the match. Okay. Five prime is almost as good as a six prime. And Mochi is also losing. Three away, six away. That's a good excuse to double. And Dirk grabbed it because, as Wilcox Snelling says, sometimes the best way to counter a prime is to counter prime. And there really is counter priming potential here. And as Stick taught me a long time ago, all prime versus primes are takes. All normal prime versus primes are takes. So all, all Dirk has to do is hope Mochi breaks. But this roll is not a breaking roll. This is a good roll. Any six to come out here, hitting or not, was good. So what's he thinking about? Where's the five? Okay. Now this is showing why he had a take. It's a good counter prime situation. And I don't know. Michi Mochi still has some timing on it. That six was really helpful for him. Who's going to break first? He makes the three point. Double ones is a fabulous roll for Mochi. I think you make the six prime. I don't think you step up. He does. And now the cube looks really, really good for and uh, Dirk is sorry he took it now. He's not sorry if his PR was right. Now, this is interesting. I'm not sure it's right to hit here at all. You, you might give him more time. I'd rather have him roll and crack. Let I'm not sure play. I hit. Let him play. I think he let him play. Plus the fourth checker back, he can make a second anchor. And he can get, still get stuck in it. I don't think you hit here. I think you play 11-7. Or maybe bring the eight in because your next roll, you you want your sixes well, to come yeah. out. Matt says hit for sure. Matt says hit for sure? What does Matt know? He didn't even have the guts to come here. He had to play a cherry blossom. All right. Well, Matt says hit, it's hit, but I wouldn't have hit there. Fourth checker back equals gammons and backgammons, he says. Uh, we, don't, we never see backgammons. Oh, we did. We, we did earlier. Yeah, we sure did. In that first match. <laughs> they got out. So hit for sure, and I wouldn't have hit. Neither would you. You would, Come on. You were with me. I was with you. Well, I said that that's word. Why, that's why we're here. No, no, no. Let me tell you something. When I say me too, I meant after Mochi does something. Oh, or after Matt Coke. Oh. Not after Phil Simborg says it. You don't say me too. You gotta learn when to when to, when to follow somebody. You followed me on that one. Well, there's the uh, 
Well, that's the eighth position in this match that I really need to study. <laughs> okay. That's why it's great to watch these matches. Now, is, there's no question about the two. The one was this question. He's thinking about getting off the ace. He doesn't have timing to play a one-two game. But something could happen quickly. Nice. Shit. Like right now, six something, six five would be a fun roll. Oh, six, six five, yeah. Six four plays. Uh with a oh, six four is a single shot, either way. Four one. Oh, I think I clear the seven because you don't leave and a double shot. Off of one of them too. No, he cleared the eight. Clearing the seven, you can't leave a double shot on your next one. I have to study that one too. Usually with a with a one, you clear the seven point before the eight point. Huh. He didn't think very long about it, so there must be some logic, some great logic to clear the eight instead of the seven. Now you're pointing on him. And he's now he peels. It's a very appealing play. Clear from the rear, or do you peel? That's a strong board over there. That's the difference. You always there's another thing I teach when bearing off. The opponent's board really matters. So if Dirk's board was crashed, you would peel. But with that strong a board, you care mostly about just winning the game, playing safely. You have to play much more safely when your opponent has good timing and a good board. Now there's only one play here off the four point. Uh oh, Gammon City, population Dirk. You got to run. You don't waste pips here. Run with the six and roll the two. He did. He rolled the two. 10 checkers off, even after a closed board with 10 checkers off, you are about a 70 30 favorite. However, he's got the ace point open, which probably makes him less than a 70, probably closer to 62% chance of winning for, uh, for Mochi, even after a closed board with a perfect bear off. Now, the real question is, at what point does Dirk have a recube? And uh, uh, probably he has to get off four or five checkers, depending on distribution first. Probably has to get off five checkers. But wait a minute. At this score, it's very different, too. His recube is much, much slower winning four to one because just winning two points gets him to Crawford. No, he's not going to recube here until he gets a lot of checkers off. He's going to get off six, seven, seven, eight checkers. And he's, and Mochi's got to still be on the bar. So he's just going to try and bring this home and win two points. And if by some chance... He can get off six or seven checkers or eight checkers and Mochi still dancing. Then you think about the cube, but it has to be almost gin. Well, he's ecstatic. He beat the gammon by getting a hit. So. Yeah. So I was right that you had a hit there. No, I was wrong. It, it was wrong. Matt Cooney was wrong. It didn't turn out real good for him to do that. That was big. Now, Mochi becomes a big favorite again, but I doubt he'll get a game. In fact, I would give you a 10 to 1 odds. You reckon? Uh, yeah, I'll give you 10 to 1 odds that, that Mochi will not win a game. And I'll give you 20 to 1. I'll give you, I want to make it a fairer bet. So you do not hit here. What's he looking at? You just go past him and win. I, yeah. A lot of people do play for the gammon still here. They forget the other guy took checkers off. And I've seen it many times. I've actually done it a couple of times. All right. We've got more of a match now. More exciting match. It is three away, four away. And here's the one really, really interesting thing, I think, about this score. If Dirk gives the cube to Mochi... His recube take point, if Mochi comes back at him, is 40%. So that's much, much harder 
for Dirk to double at this score because it's a huge, huge hammer that he's giving Mochi uh, by holding the cube. It's great, great cube big when your recube take point is 40%. So you have to be much more careful about giving the initial cube when you're winning three away, four away than most other scores. Or then I'll say than a normal score. So here, even Dirk is doing very, very well in this game. He's going to be pretty hesitant to cube. Yeah, some, pe some people might have cubed this, but I don't think too many people know this part of the game as well as Dirk. He spent so much time on his on his book dealing with equities and take points and 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 cube big in situations like this and the theory of it that it, it it's really made him continue to make him really great. Some of the people who were great when he was great in 1993 or 95 or whenever I think oh it's 2001 I think as he was number two, but they haven't stayed up with it. But both. Both he and Wilcox, who, who also gave up the game for a long time, have come back. They've really sharpened their game, and they've really spent the time and effort to keep their game sharp, and they can hold their own with anybody. Okay, Dirk, I don't think you're doubling here. What are you, are you thinking about doubling? I just don't think you, at this score, it's a very scary double to give. Ah, even if you roll the six, you've got a lot of work to do, and Mochi's taking. And again, that recube vig at 40% is huge. Can I be way that far off here? He did there double. I must be that far off. I never would have dreamed it. I would never would have doubled here for all the reasons I said before. I think Mochi's got too much game, and he took. I don't like this cube, but can't wait to see the PR on this. This is, this is no great shakes, this roll. What do you do? I guess you hit loose because you got him outboarded, and he did. Go for the G. And Mochi is going to come in and hit. Four isn't pretty, but it's eight to four. I hate. I really hated that cube. So something wrong with me if Dirk did it. In and safe. Take your checker off your bar point. I don't think you have too many other plays here. He could continue, could come in and go up to the five point. Hope to make that. He's not that worried about getting gamut here, even though it cost him the match. It, it gives him too many points. Okay, in his safe is what he did. That would have been my play. Hey, Dirk, we just we agreed on a play. And that's something he must be learning. Mochi redoubles. Again, you got a 40% take point here. So Dirk has to ask himself, can I win 40%? And he says, yes. And I agree with that. But that's why I wouldn't have given the cube. Can't wait to see the PR on that. Dirk played big and it worked beautifully. I don't fault Mochi's recube at all. I thought that was a good recube. Not going well. Come on, you're going to hit and step up. I don't know. You have more covers by getting closer. Maybe that's what he's thinking. You'd rather have a seven than a nine. I I think I go for that. No, he went the step up play. You're right. Oh, there's a reason not to step up. <laughs> See, I told you you don't step up. He didn't have a chance to tell you about double ones. Wow. Two, one. Pas Pasco would hit here. Pasco would hit in place six to five. <laughs> try, and <get> in, <laughs> try and get into a big bat game. So with David Todd. That's probably his play too. So he slots the bar. I figure if he rolls a six, I'm not happy anyway. Five, three, it's a simple clearing the 11. That's it, six, one. I 
Do you hit? <coughs> you hit with no covers, and the one's no, got to be. You got it. No. One. Hmm. Throw box their threes next time. But if you don't hit your, if you don't hit, you're gonna get hit. You're gonna be attacked. That's the problem. If you don't hit, Mochi's gonna attack that lone checker, and that might give him time to do some damage by hitting. And if he dances a couple times, you bring some checkers around. So even if you get hit later, I'm not sure the hit's wrong here. I I I kind of like the idea. I'm not sure. But I, that's why they pay me the big bucks to be unsure. <laughs> Check those that clock too, Phil. Oh, Dirk is down to 22 seconds. And counting. And counting. I hope he knows it. Oh, he did it. Okay. And Mochi rolls a double hit shot. Not against the not not against the five point board. Oh, you don't double that. hit. What a cruncher that is. Oh <laughs> my god. <laughs> Oh, Dirk makes the big play out and covers. Wow, what a swing game. Now you got to come up with the three. He does. Now you got to come out with the four. And he does. And now I don't know. I'm through. I threw. I spent all my knowledge. Oh, two six from the bar. Oh, my God. Uh, Ray Shades of Steve States. Mellon. See, you say Ray, I say Steve Mellon. Steve Mellon was doing that way before Ray was. Oh my goodness. What swing. We've seen some swing rolls today. Look at another cracker. Look at this. Oh my God. Two I, cracked two, two ones. Two cracked two ones in, in, in the same almost position. Yeah. Didn't you know to get out of that position? Didn't I tell you to get one of those checkers out? You did. But that was yesterday. It was a different game, wasn't it? Wow. Uh, you don't need any gammas now. The, the gammas are dead because the cube's on four. So you just play safe here. What else are you going to do? The question is, how do you play safe? Do you play the seven or the eight? I'm clearing the eight here, but maybe I had it backwards last time when Mochi cleared the eight and I thought you should clear the seven. He wouldn't do something really silly, would he? Well, you got two blocks on the other side. I mean, yeah, there's, what I'm thinking. there's an argument for... Yeah, you know, go to the ace. Yeah, if Gammons were in play, I would do that, but Gammons are not in play. But he's thinking about how easy it is to bring home. Let's say he plays safe. He plays safe and he makes a second anchor. It's a little tricky. It's more than a little tricky. That's my play. That was I said that that's my play. It must be right. Oh, here we go. Six three. You kill a checker? No. Good players don't kill checker. Uh oh, force shot and a hit. Wow, the swings in this game. <laughs> a double match point against two of the greatest players in the world. How how exciting is that? I can't count how many swings we've had in the last 10 rolls, maybe five. The cracking numbers and the hitting numbers and the two six. After you roll two six from the bar and hit, you deserve to win for Mochi. How does he Look feel? Here. feel? Look at here. Well, yeah. is he hit? Yeah, yeah he does. Gotcha. Sure. Got a hit. Oh, Ooh, out, out and cover. cover. Oh, my Another goodness. Swing, huh? Mochi's getting his, getting his mocho back. Is it mocho or mojo? mojo. I call it mocho now. He's getting his mochi back. What is he thinking here? He's not going to clear the six, is he? He's going to volunteer or clear the six? Clock, so. Matt Congar says, don't leave a shot. What do you think now, Matt? Let's see what Matt has to say. <laughs> he says, don't leave a shot. Tick, tick, tick. I'm leaving a shot. He did leave the shot. See how wrong that is? Matt Congar was right again. <laughs> I would have left the shot, too. You just waste so much, it's going to be hard to bring it home later. Three, four, in and out, in and out and pray. Yeah. Ones, fives, and sevens. I can think of one or two numbers that don't hit. Yeah, I think you get Like double six doesn't hit. Double six doesn't hit. Yeah, I think it's pretty close now. Just... Yeah, but how does he play double six? There's going to be a shot. There's going to be a shot. And he missed. Okay. Just a dice rolling contest. Yeah, but Mochi's favorite, I think. 
I think Mochi's favorite here. Five in, three off. Yep, Mochi just got even more favored. Two, one, three, one, pretty bad rolls. What an exciting game. I don't think we were looking at a game where they both played under two. I, I really don't. There's just too many really tough plays. Look at that, 11 and 12 seconds are left on the clock. These guys know how to use their time. And they're not about to use up too much time in the bear off. 4-1, he's still in the game. Two off. 6-3. It's going to be very, very tough for Mochi. And he loses. There it is. All right, congratulations, Dirk. I can't wait to see the PRs. There were so many questionable plays and cube actions here. And oh, Mochi, Mochi played at 206 and Dirk at 453. So I'm sure Dirk's not happy, but they split points because Dirk won a point and Mochi won a point. So they're both well in the hunt uh, to continue and to make the final eight. I know D Dirk is doing very well. Mochi was, was doing pretty good too, wasn't he? Yeah, Mochi was the second PR qualifier after round three. Yeah, so we're probably going to see both of these guys in the finals. That was a great match. Uh, not only exciting, but I really, I can't wait to review that match. In fact, that's one of the matches where I, if I have time, I would do it on YouTube and have Matt Gungeyer or somebody with me going through those decisions where I either disagreed or wasn't sure. There was a hell of a lot of them I wasn't sure of. That's a, this is a, that was a tough match. But you know, we've got some tremendous play going on here. Oh, today. Yeah, yeah. After three rounds, ZZ had an average PR of 199. Oh, after yeah. three rounds. My God. I mean, Mochi was the second at, no, Dirk was the second lowest average PR at 223. Yeah, this, this one hurt him a little bit. He's probably gone up a little more now. By the way, he said Bill is out of the picture. Yeah, Thank well, you. yeah, might be a good thing. Yeah, that's intentional, by the way, <laughs> keeping Bill out of it. <laughs> um, okay, our next streamed match is going to be uh, Thomas Muir and Kuman. And Thomas Muir's been playing lights out after uh, three rounds. He was tied for second in the number of points, and he had a 3.16 average PR. Yeah, he's well, he's a hell of a player. He's no surprise. No, <laughs> not at all. He's a, he's a tremendous player. So let's see what I have. Um, Thomas Muir and who? And who is he playing? Uh, what did you say? I don't know. Here. All right. Kuman. Okay, let me do a little research here. Ernst Kuman, he didn't reply. Yes, yeah, from Switzerland, and I don't have anything on him. I really don't know anything about Ernst. How's he doing? Um, not that great. First three rounds, and I say not that great. He only played four seventy nine on average. But, oh, okay. But, uh, All right, let me give you a little background on Thomas Muir coming up because he did, he did answer my questionnaire. He is 51 years old from Copenhagen. He has a degree in French and history, and his full-time job is a wine merchant. So you can drink wine and play good backgammon. I guess that's possible. Uh, he's won many tournaments and super jackpots, including the Nordic Open. He's been a member of the Danish national team for many years. He's been playing for 20 years. He's married, and his wife uh, also plays in tournaments as well as on Heroes. Uh, as his hero and mentor he mentioned is Bill Roberti. Uh, he never met Bill, but he years ago he picked up 501 uh, problems from Bill Roberti, and it was a revelation to me, unquote. Uh, until I read the book around 2002, I thought backgammon is a game of a little skill and a lot of luck. The book basically uh, taught me everything about the game. It taught me how to think and analyze backgammon. Um, and by the way, I did copy this and send it to Bill Roberti and told Bill, congratulations, you've got a lot of uh, kudos for that. And uh, Bill and I are friends. And he got back to me and said, 501 is by far his best-selling book. Uh, so um, I here's something I like. Thomas Muir 
uh, I asked him, what, what's your best tip? He says, always have the race in mind when you make a checker play. And when, we've seen that come up many, many times. And this basically goes back to one of the basic premises of Paul McGrill and, and our backgammon learning center teaching theory. Always consider the game plan. That's, well, that's what the race is about. Should you be racing or blocking or hitting? Those are the three major game plans or an anchor game. We also consider as a game plan, four game plans. So Thomas really believes in that. And um, if you saw my video with Matt Congeyer the other day, we talked about how Matt keeps a running count from the very beginning of the game. I know John O'Hagan does that too. And uh, Matt tells me it sharpens his game and his thinking. Uh, if I kept a running count, I wouldn't be able to know where the rest of the checkers are. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know what the score is. It would confuse me. But I'm not. I, I don't have his mind for doing that. But the pip count is really critical, and Thomas is one of those people. I bet he counts fast too. Um, so being able to count fast is great. Uh, I like playing online where they give you the pip count. I think having to play in a shoeet or play live and you have to stop and do the pip count really turns a lot of people off. I think it hurts the game from the growth of the standpoint of the game. And that's why I believe that the pip count should be something that we can all see. And we hopefully someday we'll have a backgammon board where you push a button and get the pip count. I'm actually working on that. I don't think it's going to happen right away, but wouldn't that be great? Well, you know what we've seen today with this online play with the pip count showing these matches have taken no time whatsoever. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's been, they're, uh, they're, yeah. And there's no, yeah. well, these match. last, these last two guys used up all their time and it's still how, look how fast the match was. Yeah. They didn't play what, 30, 45 minutes. Yeah. Maybe? Yeah. It, and that's the way back end it should be. It should be fast and fun and interesting and lots of interesting cubes decisions. Well, at three-way, four-way, the cube decisions were really interesting to me. That's what I want to study. And I'm not sure, uh, well, Dirk gave that cube. He was leading three-way, four-way. And I wasn't sure about that. I wasn't sure about it either. Yeah, because the recube big was so big and Mochi threw it back in his face. That may be why he played at 4.5, which is not a good PR for Dirk. Dirk is consistently much better than that. And I I wouldn't be surprised if that, oh, wait a minute. I think we can take a look and see that. We can take a look at that cube right here. I'm gonna go into Backgammon Galaxy. It's not a, it's not the- uh, Last game. It's not the highest level of uh, analysis. And that, ah, here we go. It was a blunder to double at three-way, four-way. I was right. For once, I was right. It says it's a 0.092 error for Dirk to give that cube winning three away, four away. And I explained the reasons why before if that 40% that recube bit him. Well, and when Mochi is, redoubled, Mochi was right to redouble and he was right to take. What was uh, Dirk's error with the 4 1 just below that? Uh, the 4 1, yeah, he's supposed to come up to the five point, mm -hmm. come up uh, to the 20. And, and leave the leave the blot on the bar point, take a chance on getting hit. Um, but see, having given the cube, if he did that, he might have been afraid of getting redoubled right there. That would push the Mochi to redouble, but Mochi redoubled anyway. So either way, Mochi was redoubling, and it was a redouble for Mochi, uh, and it was uh, certainly a take for Dirk. Uh, let's see if there are any major, this, we're looking at the last game. There were no major checker errors by either player the last game at all. Uh, there were a couple of small errors uh, that are not really worth talking about. Okay, so uh, that three-way, four-way score. Now, I'm certain I didn't say something that Dirk doesn't know. We, the fact that I know there's a 40% recube and you got to be careful about giving the cube, Dirk knows too. So the difference is Dirk overestimated his uh, equity in that position. Uh, I don't think it's just a matter of bad luck because obviously the computer agrees that it was not a double. And that's that's really what hurt Dirk's PR a lot, that that blunder. I bet he doesn't have too many other blunders that we can find and, and still play it under five. Um, let me just look at, I'm looking through the match file right now. Ah, there is, there's a series of blunders in, in game three towards the end. Um, you know, without being able to show the screen, I don't want to get into a, a lengthy discussion about that. But Dirk did make three uh, 
three errors in a row at the end of game three, including being too good to double when he doubled. And we suspected that. We suspected that he should not have doubled. In fact, as soon as he did it, I said, couldn't he be too good? So even it occurred to me, but uh, he was too good by 0.085 uh, when he redoubled and won the game when he was winning two to one. Okay, let's see what we got coming up. Oh, we have uh, Mir and uh, oh, that's right, Kuman. Mir and Kuman, and Kuman from Switzerland. I don't know his game, and we know Mir is really force. He's been a force for quite a while. Uh, you know, and I think she generally plays intermediate, but his his wife's uh, quite a force. She's cashed several times in Monte Carlo and Cyprus. Who's wife? Thomas. Thomas. Yeah, played. yeah. I met her. The, I met her the other day. So who do we know in backgammon where the wife is stronger than the husband? I know one couple I can think of. Uh, Akiko. Huh? Akiko. No, think not Akiko. Akiko will tell you that her husband, Hero, is better than she is, and he's her coach. The, the day that she won the Vegas Open a few years ago, he won the Osaka Open. So I would not count Akiko. I don't think she's necessarily better than Hero. Uh, I'm thinking of Mika Ladoff, but she hasn't played very much lately. Um, but Mika, I think, would would qualify in that. She's a she's a doctor, so she doesn't play much backhand. She's concentrated on her career. She still plays for money from from time to time. Oh, Mary Hickey certainly stronger than her husband. Yeah. Um, hmm. It's happening more and more. This women in backgammon movement, we're seeing a lot, especially in the United States. They're doing a lot of things and they're really successful. They're bringing a, they're bringing a lot more women into the game and the women are getting better. Uh, they're getting a lot of coaching uh, along the way from men and women. I was honored to be asked to, to do a lecture for the women on backgammon, I think it's called, from the USBGF women. But it's a great movement. We need more kids in backgammon too. The problem with kids in backgammon, I think they should be playing, but you know, kids have to go to school. They have to set their career. They have to raise their families as they get to be young men and stuff. And uh, that's why I think our ideal target target for backgammon tournaments, at least, is around 40 or 45 years old after people have been established and their kids start going away to school. That's certainly when I was able to start playing more and, and became much more involved in organized backgammon. Before that, I was just strictly playing some shoeettes and some money games in my office. But as soon as the kids went to college, man, did I start playing back in. Okay. We got, uh, what, two more rounds today? Yeah. And then uh, we start again tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock? Yes. And we're streaming again. And many people will not be watching our stream live, but you can go to this channel anytime and catch up. And uh, again, we do appreciate constructive criticism. And even if you want to say you're full of baloney and don't do ever do that again, I want to hear that too. So give us feedback on how we can make it better. Not just my stream. I'm not just self-conscious about that. I want to know anything about the tournament other than that we've already heard of plenty of bitching about playing on computers and that, uh, you know, I don't want to get, get into that debate. I happen to like it. We can get more people playing cost a fortune to set up the technology for a whole lot of people to be playing on boards and record it and transcribe it and so on. So there's a whole lot of reasons to do these preliminary rounds on the computer. And it's a reality. It's just it's the it's the way of backgammon. I know a lot of people don't like technology. They I know people who won't use my baffle boxes because they like to roll the dice. They're just used to it that way. There's no way in the world that anyone's going to convince me that the game is better without a baffle box. But People just aren't used to it and like to shake the dice and roll. They're used to it. It's the same thing with playing on a computer or playing on a board. But if you take a new player or anybody new to the game and you show them how to play with a baffle box and you show them how to play with the cups, some people say, oh, the baffle boxes are noisy. They're nothing compared to the noise of a cup. But that's a different debate. And I do have a selfish personal reason for baffle boxes. Yes, I make them and sell them. But that's not, I make them and sell them because I love them. I don't love them because I make them and sell them. 
Um, and I love playing on the computer. I was playing on fibs back in the day, in the old days. Back when I, I told you I took lessons from Kit Woolsey, we played on fibs and we typed in to each other because long distance phone calls were too expensive. And there was no such thing as Zoom or anything. So that's how we did lessons. We played each other on fibs. I'd make a move and he'd type in, Phil, why did you do that? And I'd tell him my reason and he'd tell me why I was wrong. And and actually my very first lesson, he taught me something called Woolsey's Law, probably the single best tool in backgammon, in my opinion. If you don't know Woolsey's Law, you don't know the game. You're not going to be good with the cube. Okay. Tim Sullivan, well, met her husband, but um, Tim Sullivan, his wife was actually pretty good. I'm sure there's a few out there. I'm sure there's plenty. So Mika was uh, married to Rick Barabino. Rick's a very, very fine player, but Mika was just a little sharper, just a little better. Mika could have been the best woman player in the world at the time. And I think if she played again, she could be close. She should be way up there. And I want to congratulate Karen Davis. She's worked hard on her game. She's taken lessons for years. She's been to all my lectures. She's read every book. She's really worked on her game. And she made the giant 64 list this time. And I'm very proud of her. She's, put a, she's given a lot to the backgammon community, to the USBGF as chairman and financial support and uh, running the Florida event, the major tournament in the club. It was really great to see her make that list. I might mention that I made the list too this time. It's the second time I've ever made it, but I'm almost embarrassed because I'm, no, that I'm just not good enough compared to so many people that didn't make the list as a player. They, I made the list. It's an honor. I think I was honored because of my, because of my contribution to the game or the lessons and the lectures and streaming and other stuff, not so much just because of my play. I'm not a bad player, but I certainly, I'm certainly not uh, as good as many, many people that didn't make that list. Uh, but again, I want to thank you for your votes, my friends. It's a real, real honor, and I don't take it lightly to uh, quote my one of my heroes, Yogi Berra, I am filled with humidity. Uh, and that's what he said when he was inducted into the Hall of Fame. Uh, I'm filled with humidity. But uh, Again, I didn't bring this up to toot my own horn as much as to thank Karen Davis for all, all she's done and to acknowledge her. A few other people that made the Giants list, and you can go to flintbg.com to see the list in full. Uh, my good friend Chris Trencher made the list, and he really deserved it because of how he's been playing. His PRs are amazing. Uh, I think he's clearly the second best player in New York after Victor Ashkenazi, which is unquestionably the best player there. We don't know how good Abe is because Abe doesn't play matches. Um, uh, I don't know who else would fight that, but to be the second best player in a city like New York is a pretty darn good thing. I used to say to be the second best player in Chicago was a pretty darn good thing too because you had Neil Kazaros there. And, and uh, uh, well, yeah, Neil Kazaros had, uh, had to, was not always necessarily the first best player when Howard Ring was alive. Uh, it would be close between those two. And then David Wells moved to town, and he was, he certainly was a contender. So we had some good players there. Who's the best player in San Francisco area? We got Kit Woolsey, Nack Ballard. That's going to be a little tough. The next playing, he was pretty unquestionably the, the star of the game. L.A. is a really tough one. You got Bob Wachtel, Steve Sachs, and Joe Russell. I don't know who's best there. It's really, really tough. <laughs> I don't know who I'd hate to play worse. They're all so tough. I think PR-wise, I think Bob Wachtel has got may may win the prize. Um, he hasn't been playing tournaments that much lately. And when he plays, sometimes he only plays in the Masters. Steve Sachs has been doing very well. He's not winning as much as he should. He should be winning more with his great PRs. But that's just bad luck. And Joe Russell. Hard to knock a player that's a world champion and almost the second time world champion, too. He made the finals, lost to Jurgen Grandstead. I was doing the commentary on that match, and, and Joe was not feeling well the first match and lost it the second match. Uh, even though he lost, he played it like under 3 PR. I think he played 2.7 or something like that. So he's, he, 
constantly proves what a great player he is. Okay, we're waiting for that next match to start. Got to keep my eyes open for the match file. I have to say, without question, that this is a highly successful, well-run event. Yes, we were hoping for more players, but we did have the cherry blossom and other things. There are still people worried about COVID. There are people who are worried about coming to Istanbul. Uh, the economy is not great here, but it's beautiful. It's safe. The people are lovely. The hotel is a gated hotel. Uh, we walked around the streets uh, freely without ever any worries. Uh, I think if you go to the wrong neighborhood at night in any city in the world, you, you're an idiot. So uh, there should be no concern to coming here. But the main reason the tournament isn't bigger is there's not too many people that have a chance. I mean, if they let me play in this tournament, I wouldn't waste my time. I, I, I play my very best and I have no chance against these guys. They're just too good. So I don't think 24 is a bad, it's a bad turnout at all. I think I know Mark Olson was hoping for a little more and he had a few more signed up that didn't come. Very sorry that Matt Congeyer didn't come. David Wells was going to come, but he had some back problems and had to cancel. And Matt, I guess, just changed his mind and likes Washington, D.C. better or whatever. Uh, he's certainly not afraid of competition. He's number one on the Backgammon Galaxy site right now. So he, he, he's not afraid. Of it. I've never seen Matt afraid of anything. Uh, but, uh, and there's a few other notable players missing. We'd like, we wish we'd seen Thomas Tenlin. Seb, uh, Seb Wilkinson was ho hopefully on the list, but he is not here. Uh, we're missing some real great stars, but we still have many of the best in the world. And you're seeing by the PRs, they're proving it. So I think it's a very exciting event. Okay, our players are getting ready for the next round. Who's who here? I don't know the, oh, Thomas is on the Thomas. is in the blue. I know Thomas. Uh, he's in the blue. He's gonna play without a computer. I don't see a computer. Oh, it's off this, out, out of the picture. Okay, now I'm waiting to get the uh, match file. Here it is. Okay. See if I can do it right one time without you, Tara. Well, I got it. We got VYE36 on top. Now, who the hell is that? Ah, that's Ernst Kuhnman on top and Thomas Meyer on the bottom. And they're getting ready to start. That's a funny name. VYE36 is what we see on the actually Galaxy game. And they have started. Got a split in a slot. And a 6-4 for Thomas. Ernst is going to come in and hit, except he didn't. You always hit here, except you, except when you can't. So you come in and is there any, there's no reason to slot. I think you just continue. What's he looking at here? Why aren't you just going to the 21? And he did. Okay. 5-4. Do you make the ace? It's ugly, but you've already made the deuce, so making the ace isn't as bad as you would think after you've made the deuce. But now you're playing a hitting game. And uh, when you play a hitting game, I think it's important to hit. But he didn't. Hmm, this is interesting. You split those back checkers to put pressure, which is a good play. 
you cover the five and look for the six. And you're not duping anything if you come out. You're not duping anything if you come down. I think you come out. Coming down. I don't know. I really don't know what you do with the six. You come out. Okay, that's what I would have done. Ooh. You're certainly hitting with the three. Hitting two. Okay. Nice reply by Ernst. Thomas comes in, anchors and hits, or does the anchor come up? I would hit. After you make your one and your two point, I think you want to play a hitting game. I would think you're not thinking about anything but a hitting game. Oh, well, you always look at the race, though, and you're down a little in the race. So I, I'm hitting. He doesn't have much cover, though. That's the problem. Ah, well, he hit. Okay. One of these guys agreed with me one time. This play is forced. Hmm. I guess you cover and play a7. I don't see anything else. Double ones is nothing in particular. Do you switch? Because there's a blot out there. That's the question. If you don't switch, you're leaving a direct shot in the outfield. I think you're switching. You have to play two to one with two. And you do. This is in and I don't know. Four and I guess you come out with the five. You don't want to throw a checker away. Seven to two. I'm coming out with the five. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not going to leave a double shot and leave a checker on the eight and the seven. So it's either that or throw a checker away, which I'm not thrilled to do. Huh. Okay. Tame way. In and out. No, he came down. He left the double shake. Got tired of coming out. That surprised me. Could be right. Thomas did it. He's more likely to be right than I was. I would have come out. One reason you do this is if you get hit, you're forcing your opponent off of his anchor. So there's an advantage to getting hit there as opposed to the other. Now you make a couple of points. Got a bit of a priming game. This is pretty simple. You just come in quietly. I do everything quietly, don't I? You have to break the eight point here. It's not fun, but you got to do it. Ah, that's a nice roll. Make both checkers off the six. This is a, what we call a crashing number. It's all forced to the five point. Is there a cube here? No. The race wasn't good enough, but it just got good enough. Double sixes. Ha. Five, four. I think if you play both of these, do you take the cube? Uh, nine off. You might be close enough to take the cube. Oh, that's why you come out. I think I'm doubling, though, because you get the hit and the race of 10 pips in the race. Maybe you come out to stop from doubling, hoping he won't double because you scare him a little bit. I guess it's double pa It's double pass no matter what play he made, so it's probably didn't matter. Okay. This is a duplication play. Three up and four down duplicates twos. That simple. And a dance. Hmm. How about a quick double here? Oh, and he did. I was I was thinking about it while he doubled. Um, is it a take? Yeah. Looks like a take. You're losing one to nothing. That might be a little bit of a bearing on it. But even if you get hit here, you're likely to anchor. It's not a pretty position, but I think it's still a take. What do you guys think? Let me look at the chat. Ah, Matt Kogaris has passed. 
Oh, we're talking about the previous one where nothing was to take. I'm talking about now. Is it past now too? Okay. I think I would have taken that cube. Four or three, this is interesting. Whether you split with a four or split with a three. And one reason you split with a four is you give him fewer shots on the other side. And if he doesn't hit you, you are more likely to make a higher anchor. This is the bar point. This is a run from the front. Pretty simple. You're not going to hit two here, are you? You know, double tiger here against the, uh, yeah, you just run. Ooh, interesting. Two inner board points and hit. Or do you just run? I think you make, I think you hit for sure. Question is, do you make the two point or come out? So he did hit, it came out. I'm not sure I would, wouldn't have made the two point, but I I had no, I wasn't clear. He, he did it before I could finish thinking through it. So he must have been pretty confident. Sometimes I'm really thinking carefully about a play that wasn't even on the list, of what they were thinking about. Okay. <coughs> Thomas doubles. And he's up seven pips and he's got a shot. Wow, this did not look like a double to me. That did not look like a double to me, and I would have grabbed it too. You got the, the run direct shot and the indirects. Comes in and hits. What was I missing there? I didn't see a double there. Can't wait to look at that one. And he did it pretty fast. Double twos. I like to switch six to four. I know it's wrong. I wouldn't do it for PR. I like to do it because most of my opponents aren't used to playing with an open six point. So if I've got an advantage. They've never seen it. And people who play me see it all the time. <laughs> he did it. He made my, my play six to four. He's as bad as I am. In and cover. What else? In and hit? No, you're outboarded like crazy. In and cover, that's it. I'm a hitter. I'm a hitter here. You can't move the back checker. You're going to leave a shot. So hit. And he did. In and hit. Good roll. In and hit. A little repetitive, I know, but that's the way the game is played. In and hit. And where's the one? I guess it's eight seven. I guess it's eight seven. The hits forced. What other one is there? Okay, in and hit. Hit off the eighteen. Don't be afraid to give up your anchor here. That's right. Hit off the eighteen. Double six. See, I said he wasn't used to playing against the open six point. Looks like Ernst knows what he's doing against the open six point. <laughs> All right, one comes in, two hits off the 18, and two makes the two point. Oh, I'm sorry, makes the four point, makes the four point, and he did. Clearly, you make the four point before you make the two point. Took me a second to see it. I was reading something, somebody was texting me. And by the way, they were texting me a compliment. They said they liked my commentary. I'm very happy to hear that. What's going on here? Ernst is thinking about doubling. He's got a shot. He's got a chance to make the bar. His opponent has three checkers back and has lost his six point. And he doesn't double. He rolls a double one. Now he's very sorry he didn't double. And now he's too good to double. Two, even at six away, six away. He's too good to double. Winning a, winning a gammon here isn't big, but it's helpful. And there's no question you get a pass. I don't see market gainers. I don't see too many roles where on the next roll his opponent would take. So if there's not that many market gainers, that's one of your major reasons to play on. I learned this from John O'Hagan and from Perry. Uh, it's not just comparing total wins to total gamins. It's about 
what happens on the next roll and if can white roll a bad roll here where he's in trouble not too many and there's a lot of roles where he does really well and if thomas's game improves some he could still double them out later probably now he just rolled one of his worst and he's still okay i think you just play 13 in i think he played 13 six he's thinking about hitting or hitting two i can see maybe clearing the bar and hitting that was my play just to make that play now it's a different story now that he anchors on the three point you might not be too good anymore but you can still double him out probably so he i don't know that he gained his market um he's he's up enough in the race he could double in cash anyway right now so then the question is yeah see and i think it's a cash so he didn't cost him anything even though the, it was a bad sequence but if it had been a good sequence he would have won a lot of gamins there so that's what that's what we mean by too good i thought that was a really good example of it and i would have I would have shared the same cube action with Ernst myself. Okay, double five, you make two points. Almost always that's the play with double five in the early game. As much as you hit making the ace point, still good. Have I been saying in and hit too much? That's what it is here. And it's in and hit again, but he hit on the outside, not in the inside. Because you don't want to give a direct shot, you'd rather give an indirect shot. And you come in and hit twice. That's better than in and hit. I think you make the three point and hit off the 17, off the eight point. It's worth some thought. There's made the two point. If you're hitting two and you're making the two to unstack and play more of a blitz and have more ammunition for the other points, it makes sense, but I wouldn't have done it. I didn't see it. I hate the two point compared to the. Huh. Okay. And he doubles. And a pass. So I guess it's okay to make the two point if it's going to be double pass anyway, unless he performs. All right. We have three away, six away. I think Rory ran a tournament in Chicago once where everybody started at three away, six away. Then they turned it around. The other play, player started at three away, six away. And I said, why three away, six away? What's so different and special about that score? It doesn't seem that interesting to me. But when you get to recubes, it gets very interesting. So it wasn't as uh, as as uh, wasn't as silly as as I thought at first. And after I gave it more thought and studied it a little bit and started playing it some, it's hard to be the double as the leader and and uh, the trailer could double too soon and the gammon values get all goofy so it's it's an interesting score well here's a here's a goofy number i would slot before i would crack i would slot the four point come up with a back, back two i don't think you crack your prime here but he is stopping and looking at it and thinking about it more i don't know why i don't see i don't see that much complexity in this play they say good players see many plays, great players only see one, and really great players see many plays. So <laughs> I just see one play. Oh, that switch I did not see. I did, that that got me. That I giving up the five point. I would have left. I would have left the shot. That's a really interesting play. Huh. No chats about that. I was wondering what you guys think. I would have kept the five point and slotted the four point. Probably not a big blunder either way. I see comments by Keen there, and he was on the list to play here. I was looking forward to see Keen in Istanbul. Keen, I love you. I'm sorry you're not here. You're one of the great spirits in backgammon. I love the way you always ran tournaments so beautifully in Wisconsin and uh I miss you, babe. I'm sorry you're not not here in uh, in Istanbul with us. And you certainly were um, a strong player and could maybe do some damage here. But thanks for watching the stream and thanks for your comments. Okay. 
what's happening here? We have Thomas on roll. And uh, he could he possibly be thinking of doubling here? What am I missing here? Besides brains, I know. I know when I say that, I say, what am I missing? Oh, you're missing brains. That's obvious. But I, how could this be a double? Well, your opponent is stuck on the two point and he is winning four to one. Shut up, Phil, and think. I got to try that sometime. He does double. And if you get a pass, I'm certainly going to be an idiot. Look stupid. So please take it. He did take it. Thank you. I would feel really stupid if he didn't take the cube after I wasn't sure about the cube, the double. Because I wasn't sure about this double. I see that he's winning. I guess at this score, you're going to be much, much more aggressive, though. You're not going to see a recube back in your face very often. You got a huge take point, uh, four, eight. So at, uh, uh, at one away, six away, Crawford, what have you got? About 12, 14%. So that's your, that's your recube take point. So I guess that's another reason to get the cube. You can take the recube pretty deep. I wouldn't have cubed there. I would have missed that cube. Ah, two down is about all I see. I guess you could clear the eight point and play safe. Matt Cohn Geyer never leave a shot theory. And when Matt says never, he means sometimes. All right. You don't burn checkers here. I just think you come in with two. Come into the four and the six. What else is he thinking? Going to the two point? Yeah, he does. That wasn't on my, it was on my list, but it was down low on the list. Now do you stack or slot? You slot, play big. You're losing four to one. You play big and you're a, severely punished for it hit and cover it's about the worst thing that can happen to you but now you're going to come in and hit and just get, start gambling come in with the five and hit with the three and pray hit pray love or it's eat eat pray something or something like that Ah, how do you not gamble at the score? You're not going to get the cue back. Come in with a three and go to the ace. Why? Come in with a five and go to the three point. Yuck. Okay, he took my play. He hit. Calculated risk. This is a lovely roll. Out and cover. Cover first and then you just Decide whether you come out or hit, but I think you got to come out. He hit. I would have missed that play. I was coming out. Wow. On the chat, anybody was was the hit clear? I must have really missed that one. Wow. Anybody else sitting there where they made my play and come out? XG says it was a borderline take pass. Okay. Good double then. Very good double. This is a beautiful roll out and hit. Oh. Talk about beautiful rolls. Are you making the two point or are you continuing? What's right here? I'm not 100% sure. I think I continue. And he did. Yep. That would be my play. This is another very fine roll for Ernst. 
because he, he can make the 23 point, which is big, very, very big compared to being, even though you leave a six shot, I think you have to do this. Although you could play two to one. And at this score, you might be a little more careful about gammas, but this is my play. And you get hit, but it duped the sixes. He needed the sixes to come out. I think that play was clear. That's a big, big, big roll for Thomas. Getting out with the six is huge. And that's a very nice, decent roll. He doesn't crack more. He'd rather hit double threes, does, doesn't do it. One, two. Huh. I guess he just keeps the nine point, comes in. Yeah, he does. I don't think you can come out here. Where's the two? Oh, you, you dupe ones if you go out all the way. That might be right. Come off the 23 and go all the way and dupe ones. Your alternative is you might get stuck back there anyway and crack. I think that's the play. It's very risky, but sometimes not taking risk is even riskier in the long run. It's an interesting play. I, I would I think strongly about playing off the 23 all the way. He didn't do it. Got hit. That could be the swing play of the match. But again, I can't wait to see it. Stepping up there is very right. Some players might pay back waiting for the shot, but you got to be able to get out with a six and still keep your anchor. And when you're winning four to one, you do think about gammon and save. You think about what, not just winning the game, but how do I keep from getting gammon? Losing four points would be a lot bigger than losing two points for your match equity. Bring them in. Can't take them off until you bring them in. Nice roll to bring them in safely. And now you run. And you bring the checker in. Don't waste any pips. Probably just going to be a two-point game. You don't get gammon that much for the two-point because you can run pretty early. Uh oh, shot city and a hit. Wow, that's a swing. Wow, eight checkers off in the open one and two point. Uh, that makes, uh, with a, well, of course, Ernst has a checker on his two that hurts his play a little bit, but he's favored. He, he's a favorite now. Ah, do you take one off of the three, three one? That leaves it pretty awkward. I don't think you do. I really don't think you take one off here. And he didn't. Okay. Ah, two off is big. You almost never have a recube at this score until it's gin. And it's not gin yet. You certainly clear here. They clear the five point. Now, if you don't play for gammons and if you didn't have so many checkers off, you would clear the six. Because with the spare on the three, you're not likely to leave a shot. You're not as likely to leave a shot. The spare on the three makes clearing the six safer, but you want that checker off. That's the logic of that play. Do you play three to two here? I don't think so. And he didn't. Two off. It's getting close here. Yeah. Getting close. That hit was big and getting in right away was big. That, that miss, not necessarily fatal, unless he misses again. And that miss doesn't really matter here too much at all. Oh, oh, what is this, 14% chance for, for uh, Mir here? I think he's got about 14% chance, but his take point is much less than that. So he would take this and recube on the next roll. Yep, 
I think he takes this at this score. Yep, he does. Oh, game. All right, let's see how they played. I didn't like several plays. That means they must have played great. <laughs> okay, they played pretty good. They both are capable of better. 4.77. Thomas wins. So Thomas gets picks up a couple of points here. That was a very exciting ending and a very exciting last game. And not bad play at all, but there were a lot of tough plays. There were plays, many plays that I wasn't sure of. I guess that's not the way to judge how tough it is. But uh, Gaz Owen, another great player that I wish was here, just made a statement. He doesn't think it was a recue before that, and I agree, because the take point is so low. Mac agrees. And we all agree with the end take point, I think. It was a redouble and a take. Um, but a very nice match again. Okay, let me give you a little information on our upcoming, is it our last match the other day? Good, I can use the rest. Uh, our last match of the day has to be changed. I have to talk to Mate because I had somebody on here that's already been, been um, streamed. So let me find out who our last match is real quick. I don't know. I have no idea who our last match is because we changed things around. So who's the next one to be streamed? Yeah, they finished, but I don't I don't know who the next streaming match is gonna be. You gotta give me give me a couple of names when you get a chance. Okay, then text me and I'll announce it, okay? Oh, okay. If you okay. Well, what about the standings? I think in round eight we should get somebody that's on the on, that's playing really well. At, yeah. Oh, we only have the standings through round four. Okay. Well, let's see. We've only streamed Mochi once, haven't we? Let's let's look at Mochi and, and Mochi and Z and uh, and Dirk and uh, our our superstars. Let's let's get one of them on the last stream today. Huh? Oh, Oliver Squires and, and ZZ? That would be a great one. Okay, Oliver Squires and ZZ will be our last stream match. That's exciting. They're both doing well, too, I know. Okay, thanks. We'll do that. If you overheard me, Matty and I just decided on Oliver Squires and ZZ for the last stream of the day. We don't know exactly all the standings because we only have it uh, done through four rounds and we've already played seven. So we'll get them on the stream shortly. It's Squire, by the way. Yes, Squire. Oliver Squire, he's not, he's only a Squire, he's not a Squires? Exactly. Oh, okay. We also, we also want you to make sure to uh, please check your real time chat. Uh, yeah, well, what's on the stream that we put up earlier was wrong, though, Wilson. Uh, Wilson was helping me with this because uh, we had a rash playing in the last match and he had already played. So that's why we have to check it and change it. So ZZ and Squire would be a really good match. Uh, two great young players. I wonder how ZZ feels playing somebody younger. That's something he's not used to. He's not used to that. All right, this is a good time for me to go to a bathroom break. I'm sure I can make it back in time. If I don't, take over, Bill. I, uh, you're in charge. I'll be right back. Got a 20 minutes idea. Well, we'll see. It might take me 20 minutes. <laughs> oh, you didn't want to know that? <laughs>
I found something very interesting. It doesn't take that long to go to the bathroom when you eat Turkish food. Okay. <laughs> I got a good urologist joke, but we're streaming right now, so I don't think I should necessarily do that. So I'm going to... Uh,
Okay there. Hi there again. Phil Simbark from Istanbul. We're getting ready for our eighth and final round of the day. Then you can come back tomorrow at 10 a.m. Istanbul time for more action. We're looking at Oliver Squire on the left of your screen uh, and Zednik, Zednik Ziska on the right. I think this is the first time in a long time that Zednik's played somebody younger than he is <laughs> in a big match. So that's Hussein getting them to log in so he can give me the login number so I can watch the match. I'm on the 14th floor. They're down on the lobby floor. Uh, we had to separate it because the room next door, which was separated by a curtain, wasn't enough to stop my voice from carrying into the playing room. And they were very much afraid that the players would hear me say what the right play is and do it. Now, I have the opposite theory, and that is if they hear me say what I think I would do, they would do the opposite. So either way, I would be helping them. But there just wasn't enough sound buffer between the two rooms. So here I am on the 14th floor with uh, Bill and Tara. And um, actually, we're enjoying the scenery here. We've got windows, and they're down they're down in a windowless room. And it's beautiful out. Beautiful here. Got a gorgeous view of an airport that's been closed. <laughs> no planes landing. Kind of strange. All right. Waiting for the number. And I got it. Let me see what we can do here. Okay, Oliver would be on top, and he's waiting for Z to join. ZZ has joined, and we were off and running on our last match. These are two very fine players that are clearly in contention, and we got a good roll right off the bat for ZZ, who hits with the eight. A lot of people miss the five, three. They make the point they don't even see it hits. I teach all of my students, before the roll, you say, I want an eight. That way you don't miss it, or whatever the number is that hit. It's double six. Ah, do you make the ace point? Do you bring four down? You bring four down, okay. <clears throat> Five two is a little goosey. Ah, come in on the 20 and slot. Yep, I like that play. Dupes the ones, diversifies your checkers. <clears throat> Every day, everything else is really ugly. Uh, I'm hitting. Down and hit. You're leaving shots anyway. <clears throat> May as well put your opponent up and take away half his roll. In and out. No, no other choice here. Pretty simple. <clears throat> wow. Making the ace point just so ugly. But what else isn't ugly? What isn't ugly? Oh my God. It's so ugly. Do you make the three point? I believe my six of that blot on the other side of the board might make me do something bigger. I don't know. Just run. Okay. <clears throat> First you hit, and then you, <clears throat> this might be a double tiger move with that blot on the five point. I never heard the word double tiger before. Michi's book, it's a good one. I think you double hit here. I don't like anything else. <clears throat> Reminds me of a, a speech that was made by Woody Allen at the Harvard commencement. He said, "Today I'm going to I'm going to talk about the universe because I can't think of anything else." So I can't think of anything else. I don't like any play here, but but hitting twice. Hmm. Oh. Cover with the four and bring the six around? Okay, he did the hit twice play. All right. Ha. Even a blind acorn finds a mouse sometime. I'm good with expressions, by the way. I do, I know them all. <clears throat> do you make the two point? I think you do. Putting a second checker up with that blot on the five point. I'm making the two point here, I think. <clears throat> this Oliver kid, boy, what a future he's got in back of him. I told him to drop out of school too. He's in between semesters. All right, he took my play. It must be wrong, making the two point. 
is there a cube action here? Are you too good? Not good enough? What would you do if you were doubled here and you were ZZ? Would you take or pass? All right, I think I pass. So that means it's a double. I agree with the double and I think I pass. Couldn't be too good, I don't think, this, especially at this score. Winning a gammon, an undoubled gammon at the score. He took, I would have passed. Comes in and hits. Such an ugly game. <clears throat> oh, sorry, that was wrong side and wrong. I'm used to a baffle box where both sides roll on the left. So I got to get used to this computer stuff. I would have passed that cube. I would have, can't wait to see it. I'm sure I'm wrong. I would not bet against CZ. Oh, I'm sorry. It was Oliver that took. No, it was easy. They took the cube, right? Yeah. Five, three. Well, you're hitting on the 20 and you're coming to the bar for another builder. What's so hard about this one? Why aren't you hitting off the 20 and going to the seven point? What else is there? Oh, oh, you can cover without the hit. Didn't see it. Didn't see it. I got to look around more. <clears throat> you make the bar or do you hit loose? I'm hitting loose from the 14. You don't want him to anchor. He's got a one point board making the seven point. Isn't that pretty? And he didn't need either. When in doubt, make the third play, huh? I would have hit loose and he, oh, I was thinking about the two. Now he hits loose. I guess he was afraid of crunching. Five is easy. You cover. I think you cover from the eight point so that you have three builders for the five point. And he did. And now you're stuck. I don't think you leave a shot. You don't slot the five, I don't believe. Could be right. You don't, you don't have to worry that much about getting hit. It could be right, but you're duplicating your twos and threes to come up. You want to get that back checker out. So sliding the five, for that reason, I wouldn't do it. You're duplicating. If you had high numbers that are covered and low numbers to come up, that's different. All right. You almost have to come up with the one so you can get out with the six. Makes the four ugly, but it's, I still think it's 14 to 18. Well, no, it could be could be six to uh, came up. Okay. Again, you got to come up with the ace so you can get out with fives or, or sixes. And now you just crash and lose. I would not have taken this cube. I can't wait to see what the... Uh, anybody agree with me on the cube? Would you take it or pass it? And I'm not doing hindsight. I said it at the time. Hatcomb Geyer says probably a take. Okay, so I'm wrong. And if he took it, if Z took it, it probably was a take. Ah, yeah, you play safe. You got a gammon for sure if you don't leave a shot. So you play safe in these bear offs. Three of the four. Like I said, it's a gammon for sure. Nothing could possibly go wrong here for Oliver. There he goes. All right. It's going to be a four nothing game. I can't wait to look at that cube action. I here I am disagreeing with Z and Matt Kongeyer. What are my odds? Who's gonna give me ten? Who's gonna give me a hundred to one odds that I'm right? That's probably the right odds if I'm disagreeing with those two. Well, at least I got the doubling double part right. Okay, four nothing, three away, seven away. Again, I'm Oliver. I'm playing game and save. If I am C, I'm playing game and go. But game and save, you don't play a slot with a four one. You play the split, and he slotted. Did I miss something? Maybe he couldn't split. Is the two point already made? It's very hard for me to talk and watch. Maybe I should stop talking so much. 
Or I could stop watching. That would be interesting commentary. If I did it without watching, that might be a whole new, whole new uh, definition of commentary. I have no clue what you do here. Three one. What did you do? Oh, he duped fours. And the guys never get a roll double fours, so you might as well dupe fours. And of course, this never happens over a live board. It's only because the dice are fixed on backgammon galaxy to roll a double four. And anybody who believes that, I have a bridge to a bridge to sell you. Only losers think the dice are fixed, in my opinion. I think people are members of the Flat Earth Society believe that. <clears throat> okay. Cube action. He's winning three away, seven away. So there's pretty big recube big. So you want to be a little slow to double here. What can happen on the next roll? Big market loses if he makes the bar or the three point. Maybe even if he makes the 20 point. But at the score, you got to be a little bit more careful. And he was. A dance there, and we, we certainly were looking at a cube, or it might be too good. This five is not pretty. Not pretty. I don't like leaving double shots here. You probably hit off the ace, or you slot the three. In one of my matches with Mochi day before yesterday, I had a play where afterwards I had no clue whether I would take or drop the cube, and I knew I was going to be doubled, and I came up with an idea that never make a play where you don't know what the cube action is. So I could have made a different play where I knew I was dropping. I probably should have done that, but that would have been smart, right? Instead of making a play where I don't know, make a play where I know I'm going to drop. I'll show him. Well, this is a in and safe. He's now on gammon save mode. You get gammoned and uh, you got very slim chances in this match at one away, seven away. What is that, 8%, something like that? <clears throat> but you don't get gammoned. It's two away, seven away, considerably more than 8%. 17%, 20%. Anyway, you don't want to get gammoned and you don't, it's not worth taking too many risks when you don't have much chance to win after you take the risk. So you, you only are willing to risk increasing your gammons if you're gaining some enough wins by it. And he doesn't have a play that does that. Ha. Huh. Do you hit? You don't hit and come out. You can't give up the anchor. Do you hit and go to the eight? I would. Why not? Hit and go to the eight. Where's the return shots? There are very few on this side of the board. A five on the other side of the board is a return shot, which he's got anyway. Why is he thinking about it? Was he thinking about going out to the bar? I mean, what's the alternative to my hit and go to the eight? What's the, what's the other play? I'm having trouble with this one. Like they say, bad players only see one play. And that's the play that I see. I'm going to have to see the analysis on this. There must be some reasonable plays or Oliver would not be taking this kind of, I'm sorry, uh, Z would not be taking this kind of time unless there were some reasonable alternatives to both off the 13. <clears throat> I'm having trouble finding the alternatives that I like. <coughs> Okay, for the first time today, Matt Cone guy agrees with me. That's the first. Makes my play, and so did Z. I wouldn't have wasted too much time on the clock with that one. But we could both be wrong. It happened once in 19... No, it wasn't. It was in the year 2000-something, where we were both wrong. <clears throat> He finally doubles. Whew. 
Interesting double at the score. This is not a very well-timed holding game. It's not even a back game yet. If you had the ace two game with some timing, you wouldn't double it. So <clears throat> since I'm not sure whether I take or pass, I'm sure it's a good double. And he passed. That's another thing that makes it a good double. All right. Two away, seven away. Very similar to two away, five away, where the leader's take point is actually pretty low because if he takes, he wins the match. And if he takes and loses, it doesn't matter that much if he loses one or two points. The only thing that would make him afraid is if there's a lot of gammons. So counterintuitive. Most people who haven't studied the game will think that when you're trailing two away, seven away, you spin that cube real quick and gamble. But you really don't cube that quick at this particular kind of score. I know I preached earlier about doubling faster when your opponent's two away, but not at two away, seven away, and two away, five away. Two away, six away, and two away, four away would certainly be a totally different story. <clears throat> All right, you're making the four point, or are you making which four point is the question? I think offense, offense, defense, defense. That's one of the things I love about sayings where they usually are right you're in a defensive position you should make your opponents for a point <clears throat> especially at a score where you're winning by this much and he did okay he agreed with me you'd like to unstack you like to make the other point but the score were reversed i make the other play another example of why match play is so much more interesting how it changes not just your cube action but a lot of your checker plays change as a result of the score Okay, are you making the three point? You're running out. Okay, I understand. I see that play. Looks like two down. In with the two and make the nine. Pretty clear. Four, three makes the bar. Pretty clear. Three, six, you run, but with which one? I think you run with the front one because you have more ways to come up off the 24. So I think you run from the 23. But I would certainly love to hear the logic of which one is better. It just, my gut tells me to run with the 23 and Z didn't, so I'm probably wrong. Now, why? I don't know why. Ah, there's double fives. Didn't matter. I don't know why. I hope somebody can tell me. Ah, Matt Cohn-Geyer agreed with me again. He would come off the 23. <clears throat> so again, I want to find out why Z came off the 24. This might be the second time in 10 minutes that Matt and I were both wrong because we agreed. Now, this proves how much guts. I've always said Matt Cohn-Geyer has lots of guts. Twice he says, I agreed with Phil. That takes guts. <clears throat> well, I, why aren't you making the two and three points? You could make the three, the two and five. That's my play, two and three points. That's what I thought. Why would you just do that? <clears throat> All right, you can come in and make the ace. You can come in and just play quietly, come down. You have to leave the checker on the 15 because, it, well, you could move it 15, 11, but then where's the other two? Two down? You know you're going to get attacked on the next roll by White, by Oliver. So you don't want to have two interboard blots. So I don't play six to two. That's not in my list because of I don't want to be so easily attacked uh, with two blots in my inner board. So any play that doesn't leave another direct shot, and doesn't leave two blots in my inner board, I'm going to make. So Matt makes the ace. That was one of my first thoughts. I had lunch with Justin. Uh, I 
today when you're talking about gut feelings and how he was doing so much better. Well, he left those two blots in the inner board, so it's out and hit. I didn't like those two blots. That's why I like making the ace point. You have no blots in the inner board. It's not going to be as bad when you get attacked here. So you really invited him to hit loose with two blots. And is the six out, or do you play it safety? I hate throwing the checker away to the two point. Coming out. You're not going to be worried about getting hit twice too much because of the two blots. <clears throat> he made my play. Oh, ho, ho. Double four, one, two, three, four. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. See, he's sorry he left the double blot there now. Without those double blots, this would be a, a curtain. Curtains, Myrtle, is what we say. All right. Uh, you are losing five to nothing. Why not get frisky with the cube now? Because there are gammons in play. However, you're probably too good to double. He's going to pass. Do you go for the gammas? What about market gainers? I don't, I don't see many market. I think you play on. I think he, I think he overshot his market, and he agreed. Now the anchor is there. It's getting a little different, but you're still playing on. <clears throat> I think you play nine to eight to block the two point and seventeen. Yep. <clears throat> Now, here's why we played nine to eight. We didn't want him to come out with the six. Are we hitting or are we just playing quietly? I think it's out and in. I don't think he hit. He agreed. Let him crash some. <clears throat> I think he can double him out just about any time he wants. Make the bar. Or do you make the two? Huh. Do you make the bar and want to let him crash, or do you make the two and put him up? Make the two, okay. I wasn't that sure. Looks like Matt would have played the two point. <clears throat> Amir agrees with me that it's a pass every time, so he's playing on, which I agreed with the play on. I think it's too good. Hey, I may have gotten one or two right this game. That's a record for me. <clears throat> now, why do you play to the seven point? Because it kills sixes. After you bring this checker in from the eight, oh, he didn't because there's not that much more to kill. And he's got three checkers back, <clears throat> three checkers back and a strong bear off. Again, that's 35% gammons generally. This should be about, oh, not with an immediate six like this. The gammons just went way down, probably closer to 25 or 22, something like that. But again, he has no shot leaving number. Now he does have shot leaving numbers. He's got six five and double six. But then you still have to get hit. So you still roll on. Oh, oh double five is good. It's okay. Now do you cash? Now it's getting tricky. How do you play the four one? Do you clear your five point or do you split? I think you split. I don't think you waste the pips. This is tricky. Yep, he split. I like the split. Uh, there's a shot. I didn't mind the play on there. I thought it was okay, especially with the blot and the open board. Turn the corner, crossovers. Go to the go to the 12 point so you can bring it bring it in with a six. Is right. Again, same play. Go to the 12 point. Don't waste any pips. Is it right to come out three? Yeah, I go to the 12. Uh-oh, it's getting close here. Okay, he needs a, a no double and a six. Six are in doubles. And a six or higher, and he doesn't save it. Doesn't save it. So playing on turned out to be right. 
but see winning two points instead of one point at this score again i still keep, i keep thinking it's seven percent additional equity there's nothing wrong with getting seven percent equity but how much risk was there along the way and i don't think there was that much risk when he did leave the shot even if he had been hit there he still has reasonable winning chances so i like i like the thinking i love i give i, I give a lesson on of course i give a lesson on every aspect of the game but i love my lesson on are you too good to double and i had a lot of help in developing that lesson from john o'hagan and there's some incredible theories about how to measure uh your losses versus market gainers versus gammon wins it's uh really i'm very proud of that lesson and i don't take credit for it i give john o'hagan full credit for helping us with that I've got a lot of really good lessons that I've learned from John and Stick and Perry and uh, Mochi and uh, David Rockwell's given me some really good stuff. David Presser has really helped. Uh, he helped me understand Pratt and how to use that much more than I had in the past. So being involved with all these incredible teachers and players has really helped my teaching. I don't think it's helped my game that much. Maybe it's helped my commentary a little bit. Do you come out? Yes, you do. It's your best chance to escape. <clears throat> this is that two away, five away score where he's got a low take point. <clears throat> so Z shouldn't be doubling that quickly unless there's gammon, unless it's gammonish. Wow. Hit and cover. Pray. Wow, good prayer. That was a good prayer. He must have joined my Pastafarian group. I know we're not supposed to talk about sex and religion and race and things like that, but as a Pastafarian, I I give I think it's helped my back game and luck tremendously. All right. That was very gammonish with those oh open points it's a great double and he has to pass it picking up a point is big here because look at the score everybody's favorite score to be losing at is two way this is a cube this is a reference position that mochi showed me years ago and i corrected him and said look even if you made the three point this would be a cube but this is even more of a cube making the four point at two way four way you smell the slightest chance of gammas and gammons here were about 17% in his favor. And those 17% gammons are now worth one. And the 12% uh, gammons that he would have lost in that position uh, are now worth zero. So it's a, a real good, strong reference position for me. As you can see, I know the win percentages and the gammons. The win was 57%. So that makes it a big double and a, and a take. Okay, 3-2. Are you not uh, making the five? Okay, you did it. Two, four. So for those of you who aren't real experts in this game, he turned the cube because if he wins the game and he wins the match, and now if he loses the game and it doesn't matter. So he can play a lot more aggressively. At the same time, Oliver has to be careful about not getting gammoned and that could cost him some games he'd be because he has to play more carefully and not get gammoned he might not make some of the plays that we could win the game more and that means that zz's odds of winning the game went up as well as winning the match by winning a gammon now this double six move is tricky you can make your five point in the bar you can make the five point and come out you can just keep coming up but i don't see any scenario where you don't make the five point it's usually right and uh He's loving his double now, but there's no question that Oliver's take was automatic. Okay, hit and cover. It's a little risky, gammon wise. See, that's what I'm talking about. You, he didn't hit and cover because the gammons, uh, compared to the wins, were just not strong enough when your gammon value or gammon cost is 1.0. A lot of people get gammon cost and gammon value backwards, and I do it sometimes myself real quickly. The value is what you gain by winning a gammon. Your cost is what it costs you to lose a gammon. When XG beta program first came out, Mochi and Neil Kazaros and I were playing with the beta program for a while, and one day I noticed, oh my God, Xavier had value and cost backwards. So 
it happens even with an expert like Xavier, and he really is an expert. He's also a, a fine player as well as uh, an expert in understanding the nuances of the game as a result of his development of extreme gammon. Okay, 2-1, do you split? Yeah, makes it a little harder. That makes some rolls more complicated, like this one. You don't hit loose because you get hit back, you lose. So you just got to play quietly to the ace. What else is there? He hits. He hits. He hits. Come on, guys. Did you guys hit? Come on. I want to see, I want to see the comments. I would not have hit there. Holy cow. I that he got away with it, but I would not have hit there. Wow. I can't wait to look at that one. Whew. Get hit back, and that's the match. I think you take two off the five point here instead of peeling. You like to be aggressive to go for the gammons, but it's pretty awkward to leave four checkers on the five. You really don't have a two to play if you do that. Well, you don't have a two going to the four. You don't have a three to play. Anyway, you pick up a three, but you lose taking an extra checker off. So this is a little tricky. He made that play. I would have put a checker on the four point. Got to study that one too. I got, I got a lot of study. I'm not going to sleep for a few days looking at these matches. Okay, Amir Shragi thought the hit was correct. Huh. So that's one I didn't, that's one that shocked me and it was correct. And that's not the first time this has ever happened to me. You missed a big shot there. This game is going to go to double match point. This match is going to go to double match point. Be two away, two away. And with good players, you're going to see a cube very, very quickly. Rarely do you see good players not double very maybe fast. It does, maybe it doesn't. Well, no, there's no way there's a gammon here. It can't happen. <laughs> there we go. Okay. That was close. Nah, it, was, it wasn't going to happen. I know how the dice work. See, the dice are fixed online, and I, I help fix them, so I know what I know what's going to happen. Okay. And there are people that really believe that baloney, too, by the way. I want to make sure everybody knows I'm kidding. Okay. All right, double match point. You see the cube has been turned. Am I smart or what? I am the master of the obvious. In, make the five point. How's that? It's split. Wow, I did it right again. That's two plays I got right. Three, one. Okay, double five. You're making the three. Are you hitting twice? I don't know if you have enough ammunition to blitz, so you don't. And he didn't. You're supposed to have at least nine in the zone or hopefully 10 to really go for a good blitz. Otherwise, you play a racing or priming game. And that's exactly what he did. And I learned this from Matt Congeyer when we were working on blitzing plays. We were working on a book and we completed only that section. And then Matt moved away, the jerk, moved out of Chicago, and he decided to move in with Falafel in Vegas and win a weight bet. I'm going to wait bet for a million bucks. I really liked Matt when he was really fat and cuddly. Now he's not as cuddly. <laughs> I would come out. Oh, got the wrong guy on roll. Hit two? He only hit one. He didn't stop to think about hitting two? I, didn't, I wouldn't have liked that second anchor there. I think I would have hit two. And he moved very quickly, so I got to be way off on that for hitting. Thinking I would have hit him off the two-point. Put two up and make sure he didn't make that second anchor. Okay, he's got a reasonably timed 1-4 back game. 1-4 is not your best back game, and it's not terrible. The 1-5 is a horrible game. 1-4 is not that bad. But he switched it to a 2-4. Kit Woolsey says this is his favorite game if your opponent still has checkers on the outside because you get shots sooner. They're often double shots, and you don't have that much trouble running off of gammons. But that's not going to be a factor at this score. Double six is a little speedier than he would like. I hate making the one point, but all your alternatives are not pretty. Just try and walk it home from here. But I'll tell you, if I was a betting man, I'm not, I'm not a betting man. I would, I would have bet 
on Oliver in this game. But now that he got all of his checkers in, you got to bet on Z, who's certainly favored here. All right. Come out and around and slot. You have some fun here. Oh, you, know, you make the bar or you slot. Oh, make the four. That's right. Clear the six. That's it. Uh, nothing leaves a shot. Wow. That's a lovely position to be in. Everything plays or well, double three gets a little awkward. High doubles leave a shot now. You got some shot leaving numbers, but not too many. Hmm. You played two off. Yeah, two off the five. This match is almost over, but I'm not sure which way. Uh oh. I'm I'm much more sure now. I'm much more sure now. He needs a one. Here he goes. This is it. Oh, very close. And I wasn't rooting. I was just getting excited because I like them both. That's the match. I can't wait to see the PRs, and I can't wait to look at some of those plays and cubes decisions I wasn't sure of. I'm going to look at the analysis and see about that hit in that, uh, on the two point, and I'll let you know what it says after we take a look at the PRs. Very nice play. Z played again. An incredible match. Grandmaster, 2.4. Very good match for Oliver as well. 3.4. You know, we're seeing so many great plays here. Now, let me look at that hit on the two-point. Uh, of course, this is only a, a three-ply analysis. Um, Got to get down to it. Let's see if I can find it. <clears throat> Well, I'm having trouble. I can't. I, I'm having a little mouse problem here. But okay, we have a beautiful, wonderful eight rounds today. We got eight rounds tomorrow, starting at ten. Then what? After that, sixteen rounds. Yeah. And that's it. Then we then we find out. All right. Then we'll find out who are eight players uh, who advance, and then they play the next day, or is there a break? The next day. The next day. And they're going to be playing on a live board. For those of you who don't like this. PR being shown. Probably have a good idea, but the final analysis it might be late tomorrow night. Yeah, Bill Riles and, and Tara are doing the analysis. They say they'll probably have the final by tomorrow night, so we won't know for sure. But we'll have a fairly good feel because I don't think it's going to change that tremendously uh, from the three ply as far as the points go. Because what thing that won't change is the points you get from winning matches. That's going to be that's a constant, and the PRs have to change quite a bit. To change that part so we probably have a pretty good idea of who the who the top eight are going to be we have to take a look at it but the later rounds haven't even been analyzed yet so we need some time on that bear with us we will post it uh on the um on the uh uh ubc yeah. ubc site facebook. yeah and, and the facebook page there's a facebook page for ubc at all also yeah and uh if anybody can't find it just uh just text me. Just remember that we're seven hours ahead and I might be asleep. Um, I don't plan to sleep much, though. I've got some suckers here who will play me bazooki, and I'm going to keep playing them. And uh, I'm going to beat them. That's my one chance is to play variations that where I've studied them and worked hard at it, and they don't know the game. <laughs> Take that. Okay, everybody. Thank you for your attention. I love many of the comments. I'm sorry. Most of the time, I didn't have somebody sitting next to me, so I couldn't follow the comments and, and follow the match as well. But uh, as time goes by, and tomorrow, I've got I've even lined up some people to help me and on the stream. Uh, one of my students and good friend, Mete, not Mete, but Mete, M-E-T-E, who is the M in FM Gammons, a friend of mine for years. He'll join me in the morning. So I think my commentary will improve some uh, by having some extra help. And it's been fun. And thank you all for watching. I'm uh, going to call it a night. Have a really, really nice dinner. And uh, see you in the morning at 10 a.m. Istanbul time. UTC was that plus three? 
Yeah. GMT plus. GM, GM. Time. Yeah, but that, I've always seen this UCT or UTC. What the heck does that mean? That's universal uh, time coordinated. Oh, okay. Well, anyway, we're damn late here. We're damn Literally, late as well. Yeah. 10 a.m. Yeah, 10 a.m. Istanbul time. You're, most of you guys in America are going to be in bed. Um, again, it's been fun, and I had a ball, and uh, we'll keep going all week with the finals on Friday. And we'll be moving to a live board after tomorrow and uh, come back. Enjoy having you all. Bye-bye.